between Shane Van Boning and Lee Van Cortezo while they head on over there. I'm going to let you guys watch. Uh, pardon me. Max Lechner and Billy Thorpe for a second. Everybody find your way into the stream and let everyone know that we're live. Nice. Seriously? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, here we go, guys. I think Shane Van Boning is, uh, I believe he's still just getting warmed up. Ooh, that's the wrong... scoreboard let's get that set yo yes yes you know what actually would you mind doing me a favor the no could you just <laughs> yeah, yeah, buddy. Can you throw that on the table out front, actually? Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good uh, man. Good? Good, good. Uh, I... All right, thank you, thank you. Just right right in front of the booth right there. Thank you so much. Little delivery of some food. Sorry about the slow start getting things thrown together, but we just finished a match, a hell of a match, between Josh Filler and Alvin Ocean. Um on the stream table quite closely contested but it looks like maybe we are still just getting loose here so we can check out who goes there yeah. Alvin Ocean himself oh. Oop, watch the step yeah it is yeah you won't need the sleeves in a second How's your trip been to Vegas, man? Aside from uh, the obvious. I can't complain. Of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way, are... the microphone, don't be afraid to put it close to your mouth. All it right. falls off pretty fast if it goes far away. All right. Huh? Oh, you're good to go. Good to go. Yeah, we're live. Um, yeah, you have uh, can't complain? No, not really. It was definitely the best Vegas trip so far for me. Why do you say that? Um, previous years, uh, I mean, it's a tough field, you know, uh, with the Predator events, uh, with races to four, with shootout, lost many shootouts, right. won some, um, but it's super hard to get very deep. And I actually made it last 16 in the first event, made it last eight in the second event, lost okay. five sets against Federer. So you lost five sets against Federer? Yeah, in five sets, and uh, it was a high-quality match, and I uh, made uh, just one, I would say, one bad mistake in the end that cost me the match, but overall, I'm quite sure. happy. Sure, sure. Well, that's good. And I know that Predator, the payouts were fairly decent in that, so at least you yeah. got something to cover travel expenses and hopefully a little bit in the black. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, that's and good. And here, I mean, it was just... The field uh, here. Yeah, of course, it's a tough field. I don't even know what w what place I got, uh, but it doesn't really matter to me. Sure. Um, it was nice to play here. It's uh, some good practice. Uh, losing to Filler, I think. Um, <laughs> hill, I hill, mean, man. That was it, it hurts for a second, but uh, he's just a phenomenal, phenomenal player. And uh, you guys are pretty good friends, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. We also travel now from here to Boston afterwards and then to the PLP in Connecticut, so... So yeah, we're very good friends off right. the table. Looks like Lee Van's still maybe just hitting one rack. They haven't lagged yet, yeah. right? No. Yeah. 
Well, it's a pleasure to meet you for the first time. <laughs> My name's Collins. Uh, I do a lot of streaming out of Oscar's room in, in uh, uh, Sacramento at Hard Times. All oh, right. Um, and generally, the feel, like the vibe of the stream is is very casual and very like interactive. So don't feel like the need to talk about every last shot, actually. We, um, we don't get distracted, but at the same time... You know, a lot of the people that watch this stream know the game quite well, so it doesn't need to be, like, over-explained, you know? All right. So just very chill, and and also I have the chat up right here. Mm-hmm. Right there, so if you want to know what they're talking about or who I'm talking so to... it's only can... on your screen? Yeah, yeah, All so right. sometimes I will go to another screen where they can see it, too, or, like, you can see it on, like, the, the stream going out or whatever, but... Uh, but yeah, the chat here is, it's a lot of fun, actually. I don't know if you've ever noticed a lot of pool chats. Things can get a little bit, like, rowdy and not the most fun, like, sometimes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Social media and YouTube, whatever. It's uh, yeah, some, this, some, some heavy stuff sometimes. This chat is totally different because I do moderate the chat and I make sure that everybody's there yeah. intending to have a good time. So it's very fun and lighthearted. And yeah, it looks like... Uh, Looks like we're probably getting started here. Well, what do you think about the conditions with the new, like the tables just being redone recently? And <laughs> well, uh, the TV table has been redone today. Like today, yeah, which uh, was a little bit rough, honestly, because yeah. I played. The, on new cloth the first match then I played on the other table I think it was 11 or something right. which uh, was totally different than back to TV table um, it's always tough I mean we're pros we get used to it quite quickly I would say but sometimes you just need maybe a few racks to get back in stroke uh, but it was nice it was yeah. nice to play uh, when uh, you played John Mora man I saw the struggle between both of you in the beginning but you got your cue ball dialed so quickly it was really impressive yeah of course I, uh, if I can choose to play on new cloth or a little bit used of course I would choose a new one yeah. um, more options no of course the, yeah. I think the game is a little bit easier and uh, moving the cue ball is easier of yeah. course pocketing the balls is a little bit easier but yeah, played uh, quite good. He was a little bit unlucky in the beginning, but uh, yeah, that's part of the game. That's how it goes. We were just talking about that at the end of the last match with with the break, where Filler was looking like really strong and controlling the table really well, and then he goes to break not his last break where he yeah, broke Hill Hill, the one, the one before, before that, yeah. where the five ball last ball rolling just marries yeah. to the cue ball. It's like luck is gonna happen. Un you know, bad luck is gonna happen. He hit the break pretty good too. Yeah, I lost twice. Hill Hill one, one time against Carlo, one time against Josh. Oh, both yeah. both on the TV table and that's both right. both broken ran on Hill Hill. Oh, that's right, <laughs> that's right. Day one. So I had a little bit of a deja vu there. Yeah, you think? Wow. And you were against Carlo. You fought back too, right? Was Carlo in the um, lead that match? Yeah, yeah. I but think you you and Filler were pretty much back and forth for yeah, most of the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee Van. I don't know if you've spent any time watching him, but he is post break moving really well, like making good decisions and yeah, and his his game is incredible. I mean, it's it's what an achievement it is. I mean, I don't want to no, like, I, I talk, no, uh, I don't, don't want to talk about bad about him, saying. but Everybody. his technique, you know, everything and yeah. the the way he plays the game and what kind of shots he he pulls out at certain stage of the matches is just right, absolutely incredible. It's unbelievable. It really is. We actually got a shot yesterday right down the barrel of his stroking action, and it's like, because someone thought, ooh, close on the 10 ball. Playing a two-way shot doesn't get behind the 6 ball. And opened up the 9 ball. It's a little bit easier there now. But Shane, on the other hand, I was, I'm just kind of speculating at this point. It seems to me like Lee Van's been winning a lot of his matches still undefeated, obviously mm -hmm. this being the hot seat match. A lot of his matches have been, and not to say that he hasn't had his fair amount or like you know his hand in, mm. in breaking runs, but he's been doing a lot of things after the break to manufacture wins, you know. Mm. Where Shane has essentially just been steamrolling people and has like all of his breaks are mm. almost all his breaks are converting to breaking runs and, and or controlling the table really well off his break, and so 
Yeah, of um, course. His his break is incredible. Uh, I would uh, actually say it's a little bit too hard um, because you see others, like if you compare it with Fedor, mm -hmm. um, he breaks probably with half the speed mm -hmm. and controls the one ball a little bit more or like Josh. Yeah. Here we um, go, Lee Van experiencing the, the brand new cloth of the day. Yeah. Yeah, he hasn't shot. he hasn't played there, right? He played on the other table against uh uh Vitaly. Yeah. So yeah, so it's a little bit different. It's only about a week's difference, maybe only four days difference, but just All the right. fact that the cloth has been sitting on the table long enough, had some play on it, a little bit of chalk dust with the the night crowd that comes in over the evening, you know what I mean? And it's gotten hot and cold a couple times, yeah. warmed up and cooled off a couple times. It's just totally different. This is the original stretch that we're playing on right now. What do you think of that town max rack? <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> it, um, it it does what it should do. So uh, it's, it, it racks properly. I um, think it's, it's great. I yeah. like it much better than the and the paper racks from sure. from Equisets, I believe. Yeah, yeah, those kind of thicker paper racks. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of them. So no, it's it's good and it looks good. It's also got kind of in I I would imagine what Turtle Rack had originally intended with the circle in the middle, intending it to be easier to remove when balls are clustered near the yeah. rack or whatever. I think the shape kind of it seems like it would lend to make that a little bit easier as well. They found an interesting shape. So, you then got a funny angle here. Yeah, just roll it in. Only focus on the shot. Kind of blind. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah, I was thinking about if there's any other pool player on tour place like he does you know with technique like a very very short stroke mm -hmm. and gets so much out of it also with the cue tucked underneath his body yeah. so his hand like comes yeah. around his body as he's going through the ball yeah yeah it's interesting so first game goes to the the van of the lee persuasion two tournaments and still undefeated I think he got he won the f the uh, Alpha Las Vegas Open. Oh, that's right. Undefeated. And he didn't he didn't get invited to the World yeah. Pinball. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard when it's like two days before you know all the players are already there. I mean there has been no no walkover or something in, at the World Championships, so it's hard to to just give him a spot then. <laughs> Talk about interesting technique with the way he moves his wrist. That's so proven, such a proven track record. Like the proven track record. <laughs> no, I mean, he's probably a player who put the most time in practicing the break. I think he told me once uh, if he does only like practicing the break it's like six hours or something yeah yeah straight oh i got i got people in the chat asking now i actually i could give you one of these i just realized i could pop yeah. one out for you but uh let me do that first uh, right here should be small enough where it's not in the way is that readable or do you want a little bigger a little bigger yeah that's fine okay uh, people in the chat asking who I'm talking with. Uh, we got Albin Ocean in the booth, guys. If you want to wave at that camera right there. Oh, we're here. Right Hi, guys. Yeah, there he is. Hanging out with you guys at home. So Shane went after the one, it looked like. and Yeah, I missed it, but got away with it. I think you can see the edge of the one ball. Probably... I don't know if he c But you're not really heading towards cover by thinning it. Yeah, he might thin it with inside and go maybe behind the six and five. Try to achieve the five and yeah. six, yeah. Watch out for hey, the cue hey, ball. Hey, hey, hey. Dude, look how fast Shane gets up. 
just sprints to the table when he sees he gets ball in hand. He starts just just drooling, foaming at the mouth, man. I love that passion and the the hunger, you know, that you guys have. It's exciting to watch. Shane getting a little touch, little taste of the the new clock yeah. there in that stroke, huh? Obviously, good line, but still maybe surprising him just how just how fresh the cloth is. Mm -hmm. And, and then there was another taste of the new cloth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got what? that. You got yeah. that taste yeah. a number of times in that yeah. same pocket. There was the one that you and Filler were laughing at each yeah. other about. You couldn't believe it fell in, and, and uh, the number of a couple times you came up short on position, but still, still was able to figure figure a way through the rack because of hitting the ball thick and it's still going. Oh, yeah, what do you think of that matchroom tournament coming up, the World world uh, Nine uh, Ball this year? Yeah, I mean, it's super exciting. Um, I mean, that's where the money is, right? Yeah. I mean, if you look at the, what they do in soccer and whatever, golf, it's, it's incredible. It's unbelievable, and, uh, yeah. I think it's a big step in the right direction for pool. Um, I mean, they go there with snooker as well. I think also boxing. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, One million prize fund. It's incredible. If you were to speculate, obviously we don't have any insider information, right? Or if you were to give an opinion of what you think with a $1 million prize fund while keeping in mind that they've said that all qualifiers will get some type of mm. pay for showing, you know, for playing. Mm. Uh, what in your mind is reasonable with that prize fund uh, for the first for the first prize? What do you think should be a good goal in your opinion? Um, I mean, if you look at uh, the purse in the previous events, let's say if it's like 300k or I think US Open is like 300, 350 or something. So first gets 60. Um, so if you ran the numbers similarly, you're thinking somewhere around 200. Mm, I would, yeah, maybe I would say 150, 125, 150, I would say. Okay. Um, I think the field is 128. They probably pay the last 64, I would say. Um, yeah, I would think maybe 150. Okay. But yeah, it could be maybe 200. Yeah, that's actually, th you're the first person that I heard say something under 200. Yeah. 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 Well, the people are hoping, obviously, for the big payday. That's what it is. It's like everyone thinks, oh, yeah, it'd be great if the first prize could win this much money or whatever. But, yeah. Interesting topic of discussion. SVB doing his work. Yeah. The game. Normally, it's like, I would say, approximately six times uh, from the total purse. So, yeah, I would, I would think of 150. Yeah. You guys have any fun in Vegas outside of pool? Um, Go party with anyone? Have some fun? Well, I finally business. have a day off tomorrow. Um, That's right, because you guys came straight from... Yeah, I played uh, pretty much every tournament till almost the last day. So, um, I don't know. I don't even know what day it is. I mean, it's, there's uh, party 24-7 in Vegas. But, uh -huh. um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably get a few drinks finally and, yeah. and recover. Who do you hang out with in this group? Um, well, Max, mostly. I share a room with him. Yeah. Uh, Max and Mario. Mario Sanchez is, is together with Mario in the room. Um, Josh might be playing tomorrow, but he's also not really a drinker. Sure. Um, no, probably Sanchez, Mario, and, and Max. Okay. Gonna do something tonight. Nice. Well, we'll want to hear about all the shenanigans at <laughs> some point. At some point, if things get wild. You, you guys deserve it, man. You work so freaking hard. Yeah. Well, I just saw a question about uh, if it's easier to go from new cloth to, to used one or vice versa. Um, I would say... Hmm. I would say it's easier i think going from used to new cloth i think i'm actually gonna put 
put this up here for you. So oh, that yeah. way, if you want to read the chat, you can see it up there. Yeah. And then this way, you have a full screen to see what what they are saying. <laughs> yeah. Alvin's choice of drink. Well, in <laughs> in the U.S., my favorite drink is Bud Light. I don't oh, know. Really? It's so easy to drink. Yeah. And um, oh man, Alvin, we I'm don't show you some good beer, man. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm a craft beer snob. I treat beer like wine. Like yeah, I like yeah. I, I'm actually a, a red wine drinker. Uh huh. Um, but also, I don't know if it were a cocktail, or probably a Moscow Mule. Yeah. Um, really that's something good. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a West Coast IPA, West Coast style. Sorry, East Coast style IPA. The juicy ones, you know, the hazy ones. Mm -hmm. And then I, I like a Manhattan. A Bullet Manhattan is the go-to for me. Yeah. Yeah. No real complications in this rack, huh? It wasn't, uh... And it's Lee Van's break, right? Lee Van broke on this one. It, it's looking like another break and run. No wonder these guys are in the hot seat match. There's been a fair amount of, uh... Uh, in this whole tournament, right? Alternate break, right? There's been a fair amount of fighting post break, hmm. um, especially on the TV table. Up till today, I think there, we've seen the most uh, break and runs today. Actually, probably because of the, th the slicker cloth. But yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a question. Where is he now? Who was interested in pool first? Well, obviously my sister is five years older. Um, she won already a few tournaments when I started playing pool. Um, I started with around six, so she was 11. She won some junior tournaments already in our state. Yeah, wow. I think, I don't know if she already won European championships by then, but yeah, she started definitely first. And now in your opinion, there's always the discussion outside of the game, right? Like, there's always the, the, the people outside of your world and your bubble mm. that will look from the outside and see, oh, there must be some talent, there must be some something in the bloodline or whatever it is, you know, uh, in their opinions. But, like, in your opinion, what do you think it is that has kind of most helped, like, cultivate both of you mm -hmm. to that level of excellence, right? And you're starting to see the same thing with, with the Kachi brothers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to happen a lot when you have somebody in the same family yeah. that that plays at that high level. Another example, out of Texas, there's a couple juniors out of Texas, the Lazaro brothers, or not Lazaro, the Martinez brothers. Lazaro and Gabriel Martinez are a couple of juniors that both play jam up pool, like 700 plus, maybe mm -hmm. 750 plus. Yeah, Fargo I pool. actually saw that Martinez guy. I think he won the... Uh, the junior U.S. Open or something, yep. or or any j junior open at any yeah, tournament yeah, of Matchroom. The, the, the SVB Open, I think. Oh yeah, SVB Might Open. Been, yeah, yeah, he won. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, in your opinion, what is that? Do you think it's just because you're around each other and you see the other person working so hard that you go work in, real hard? In in my case, it was that actually between us, we never had a had a fight or or who's better or whatever. But the of course the other ones outside want to see a fight always ask who's better yeah. blah 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 you know all that stuff yeah. so basically what uh, gave me i would say a huge boost was that i was never i never had a name i was always jasmine's brother aha uh -huh. so until i think i reached the final of the world nine ball in 2014 where people recognized me sure. and uh, because obviously i was never really deep in the tournaments maybe quarterfinal whatever but then i finally i felt like i had a name yeah so that um actually gave me i would say boost and also the passion to practice more and dedication so um that helped me a lot and that could be also the case for for many others yeah and i think also something that maybe you didn't like consciously address but you kind of glazed over it's that you both have that competitive, like, like uh, fire, right? Mm. But then you had somebody to compete with at that level. Yeah, of course, right? of course. 
yeah, that's that's interesting. No, it was also nice. I mean, she showed me pretty much everything about traveling and and so on. What I need, what I should think of, take care of. Right. And uh, so she helped me a lot, and and now we're practicing with each other. She knows that uh, probably one of my uh, biggest skills is the defensive game. So she tries to learn from me uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, we keep on practicing a few times we played now the, the doubles match together and uh so yeah oh, that's we right you played there was a doubles event yeah we played against chung and chu first round we lost in the third got set got it okay but uh it could have gone either way yeah i think a lot of that event could have gone either way there were a couple of there were a couple of fairly stacked teams but <laughs> but everybody f I just you know, reasonably even I just saw uh, <laughs> if I have a nickname. Well, I had already a bunch of nicknames. Um, the one I chose for myself was actually it was because of a movie. Uh, I don't even, I don't know what the name is in English, but it's it was called a Mean Machine. Okay. Uh, because it's a movie with Adam Sandler where he is in prison. Mean machine. Or mean. Like, mean. Like you're angry. Yeah. Mean. Yeah. And. Uh, where Adam Sandler, he has to go to prison, and then he he's there and becomes a coach in football. Okay, yeah, it's called the Longest Yard. The longest Yard, yeah. yeah. It's uh, actually with Chris a Rock. It was a remake of an older film. Yeah, and and I really liked that movie. It was fun, entertaining to watch, and I don't know, I just picked it up. And then yeah. uh, Alex Laley actually came up to me, and said that doesn't fit me actually and he would you're too nice of a guy man he he's he nice. he called me the smooth operator <laughs> yeah okay i can uh, totally hear alex laley saying yeah too. <laughs> that's funny smooth operator what's your least favorite one that people like tried to take off was there any that you had like <laughs> no not really no, no. not really okay Have you known Mario and Max a long time? Yeah, of course. We played already youth against each other. Did you all... Who who broke out first? It was you, right? Yeah, yeah. So you broke out first. Did you know that they were coming? Of course. I mean, they were always there. Mario, crazy talented player. Um, Max was like the hard worker, yeah. actually. Um, I can tell the way that Max is on the table. Yeah. He has this like intensity yeah and yeah. super hard worker and uh i think he's a great player and he proved it a lot of times uh by getting second us open yeah. or international open but it's like that little edge they still need L same with mario i mean he reached like i don't know how many semi-finals and uh, quarter finals but in the end he always maybe made wrong decisions under pressure whatever right but uh Sooner or later, they will they will be there. Speaking I have of no decisions, worries. Shane's got a decision to make here. Yeah, he lost the cue ball a little bit. I don't know if he tried to actually pop the eight ball. It looks like maybe he's just trying to thin the three. He can yeah. see. Oh, oh no, he thought he could see it. That's a big maybe mistake. Maybe he could, but good. Good lord, that is un unexpected. My favorite player to watch. Um. Yeah, probably Josh. Yeah. I think um, it's just incredible. I mean, it's just pure talent. Obviously, he missed a shot against me, but uh, you feel like he, he cannot miss. I mean, I think there's no other player that has so much confidence like he has. And uh, we always knew if this guy um, really learns how to play the game, because like years, like 10 years ago, it was kind of easy to beat him. You just play a little bit of safeties and whatever, but uh, all that all that one pocket he was game. One of those guys. No, yeah, of course he was going for everything. Yeah, you, you just play a little bit. Because he just yeah. knew he was going to make it. Yeah. If, he, if he had an open shot. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so, but now it's just incredible. Also his knowledge and everything, and I think that uh, one pocket uh, helped him a lot. Yeah to to like really understand the game how to play it and see you certain shots that others don't see you know what i also think about one pocket wow yikes see how thick he hit yeah. that ball and loses the cue ball again yeah so the thing about one pocket for me that 
is a really good, almost like a life lesson, is learning to appreciate the things that you didn't appreciate for. And what I mean by that is everybody starts learning to play pool, first of all, because they just want to figure out how to make the ball. And then they're excited mm -hmm. about just making the ball. And then they learn that they can move the cue ball. And then they get excited about moving the cue ball while yeah. making the ball, right? Yeah. The ultimate level of that is once you're able to do a lot of that, a little jelly roll here off the 10. Yeah. Um, once you're able to do all that and you start playing one pocket, you need to learn how to appreciate the moves where you're not really intending to pocket a ball. You're not mm -hmm. really intending to do something offensive, but it's almost like delayed gratification. You know, I treat, I think about it like guerrilla warfare, right? You're just kind of moving these pieces until you find the moment to strike and kill your opponent. You know? Absolutely. And, uh, and if you can do all that and then take it, bring it full circle and try to implement that type of mentality into all the other games too. It like, it's what all you guys just do because you see the game, you know, you, yeah. you see the game at its, at its rawest level, but, um, someone asked Earl or Efren. I mean, <laughs> that's quite obvious. I would say, um, Efren, of course, uh, the first time I played Earl was actually like, three years ago or something at the straight pool event in uh, Norfolk uh -huh. or Virginia Beach and it was the very first time I played him and uh, he got disqualified after uh -huh. because uh, for some reason um, he started a fight with uh, the players on the next table because he felt like they interrupted his shot or whatever but it was definitely not the case um, I think he's a very sure. nice guy off the table yeah um but just has some some problems as we all know this looks like we got some spam in the chat i gotta go take care of yeah yeah earl earl um i think has done <laughs> You know, it's almost like the whole thing of him going to the Moscone Cup and playing in that, too. The, the, the opinions that people have that it was just like a publicity thing, regardless of whether or not that's the case. Mm. The reality is what what his personality has done for the game is ultimately a good thing. Now, I know that some people that have to maybe deal with it in the moment when it's not like the most tasteful thing to have to deal with. You know what I mean? It's like mm. I understand that that can be, you know a certain side of the discussion but I think that I think the man's a real interesting character <clears throat> yeah as a f as a spectator you know what I mean I'm I totally outside the pro scene so I mean he's one of the all time greats for sure yeah. but I think he could have been even better if he if he wouldn't blame everyone else for sure. missing a shot or or I don't know the chalk the balls the table whatever yeah um, so yeah Sorry, guys. I'm just kind of getting to know Albin right now. I'm <laughs> I've never can met I the guy before, so... Can you tell me about uh, Max match? Do you have a score? The current score? Yeah, yeah. We can take a look. Might be already over. It looks like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nine Billy four. got him. Yeah, Nine Billy four. played some incredible matches. I mean, when he's on fire, it's tough to beat him. Oh, we got a little bit short here. Wanted to go behind the nine. Yeah, both struggling with the new cloth a little bit. Yeah, the slide as well and like trying to judge exactly how long or short. Because here's the interesting thing about this setup though. The rails have been broken in for a week, right? So the mm -hmm. way the ball grips the rail will be different from the way the ball grips the bed, right? So you might get lengthening of a kick due to the overspin. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you won't get the normal lengthening of the, the kick because of the cue ball sliding literally yep. on the rail. You know what I mean? So it's like an interesting thing to try to get the hang of, I'm sure. Like in the heat of the moment, playing a hot seat match. Where's Lee Van going here? Two-way shot. Did he call the one? Or was mm, this all outside? Yeah, he might have called it. Yeah. But it was a good shot. Probably kick it from behind. I don't know if he can hit full ball from behind. It looks like I think he can from the short rail. 
I don't know about the long rail. It looks like the three might be, or the nine might be in the way. Three and nine. If you kick off the short rail, you're playing the speed. You're trying to hit the cue ball, or sorry, the one ball up to get cover with the nine, three, and eight, right? Yeah. Yeah. It depends how fat he can hit it. Yeah, it was a good shot. Real good. And he got the cue ball to drift towards the nine, but he doesn't quite get the there. He's got an easy escape here, or, or escape to yes. the hit. Es but yeah, to hit, yeah. But maybe not. I kind of like here trying to intentionally like thin this side of the one, mm -hmm. like off the kick, you know what I mean? So the yeah. one comes this way, and the cue ball wants to travel back down this way. The only thing that could possibly go wrong is this side, if you catch a funny catch a funny tangent line but yeah and he might always leave a maybe a jump shot if he doesn't go like perfectly behind nine or ten mm -hmm. depends on what he's able able to do here what are you looking at here it's hard to see if you can see like half ball or just the edge or can see the ball. Oh, yeah. I thought he had so a full yeah, hook behind the nine. Easier escape. And he came up short, honestly. Like uh, you would, you would pick Lee Van to be the one to split him on the eight most of the time. But now SVB checking the line where the one ball is going to go as he buries. Oh, yeah, uh, like a two-way shot. Tries to miss it thick. Missed it long. Mm -hmm. And it falls. Wow. There you go. That was strange. Gotta like it. Um, there's a question. Who's the goat of pool? It's also obvious. I obvious, think it's it's yeah. Efren, of course. <laughs> and it's funny because, I mean, you see it everywhere. The goat debate in I don't know how many sports. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's... Uh, uh basketball if right. it's tennis whatever i'm a huge tennis fan and i'm also a huge federer fan um for me federer will always be the goat doesn't matter how Full many punch stroke jesus how shame, many sorry. grand slams Djokovic wins or like jordan will yeah. always be the goat because it's not about how many tournaments you win it's it's how how you like impacted the yes, game yes yes that's exactly the and thing it's that the same about. with with efren yeah because he was a funny character everyone loved him uh, <laughs> actually i just said to josh yesterday for me you're the greatest player but you can never be or the best player but you you will never be the goat because efren right. just played the game differently and he was a character everyone loved yeah and it's the same in tennis. It's it's going to be almost impossible for someone yeah. to revolutionize the game the way that Efren did. Absolutely. And, and, and still and does, actually. I mean, he still plays unbelievable. I couldn't believe when he won against Alex one pocket at Derby, like last year, right. I believe. Right. S and Alex, I would say he's top two um, in, in one pocket. So, right. yeah, definitely Efren. And, uh, yeah, see always the debates on on facebook about lebron or yeah. jordan and whatever you, know, you hear you hear stories also about pool about some of the older names right like yeah. uh, uh i was very very uh embarrassingly exposed to the idea of, of i've never heard of yeah. uh, up until like six months ago or whenever the stream was yeah. uh, a guy named luther lassiter who uh is was at the time the kind of guy almost like the josh filler of the time where he would literally go full weekends without missing mm. or full tournament weekends without missing a single ball yeah. and uh, just completely crushing fields and stuff. And it's like, well, the difference is you, you may have people now or then who might be better at like, you know, pocketing the balls or dealing with cheating the pocket. Maybe back then somebody mm. could do fantastic things with the, the cue ball because the pockets oh, were five wow, inches. Look, at, the cue look ball. at this kiss straight in the corner. How cold is that? But you what get what I'm 
What a cruel game sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying with yeah. the 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 reality is Efren was so well rounded with everything he did mm. and introduced so many new ideas and almost like a new way of thinking that to this day no one can replicate exactly what like hmm. as consistently as he does right and it's like you might see elements of his game like in someone like Carlo Beato right hmm. they'll do something just astonishing with their yeah. cue ball or something yeah. right astonishing shot making but then the fact that Efren was able to just think up all those things on the fly in the moment hmm. and execute them flawlessly so many times <laughs> forget about it yeah He's trying to find a follow path here. What's he what's he looking at here? What's he looking at with the two ball here? I don't know if he Is he maybe just go on the ten or something and play safety? Oh that's Oh boy. Never good when you can't access the whole cue ball. Well he can still like hit a half ball go. With the cue ball behind the 10. He just put his tip, the tip of his cue where he wants the two mm -hmm. ball. Let's see. <laughs> wow, that it's was gonna go a little terrible. short. Hit, yeah. Hit it way too fat. Way too thick. A little short there. Which actually would make sense when you're jacking up over the ball, right? Your arm comes up this way, and as you go through the ball, it's easy for the... that When the tip goes offline, it tends to go towards mm. the chest side of your stroke, you know what I mean? Which would, in that shot, have meant that he hits the ball thick. Well, I was all in. Yeah, all in. Given an opportunity, and he bet on himself. And the opponent flopped quads. Do you play any? Any? Do you gamble at all? You play poker? Anything like that? No. No. no I see too many players lose. Yeah. And I work too hard for my money, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, no, I think in the last, uh, let's say, seven years that I come here, um, I think I played for like fifty dollars <laughs> with with Max just for fun on the slot machine. Yeah. And no. Uh, That's cool, man. What do you do? What do you do outside of pool, though? What do you What do you get a kick out of? This is obviously you get a kick out of this game, obviously. But you, yeah, there's I mean, got to be more. Yeah, I mean, we're traveling like two hundred days per year. Um, I got a daughter, she's eight, so, um, well, there's not much time, obviously, we still have to practice. Uh, I really love to play tennis, I do a lot of sports, like cycling, uh, yeah, running, look, whatever, obviously swimming. Obviously, you look very fit, so you must be quite active. Yeah, so, uh, it takes, everything takes a lot of time, so, yeah. honestly, when I'm back home, I just enjoy peace, finally, you know, just, uh, sit on the terrace whatever mm -hmm. and uh, have a coffee do i don't know sudoku or something you sure, know yeah yeah um cool. quite uh, relaxed you get all your action from this game you get all your like uh, yeah stimulation and excitement and, and you like to kind of unwind yeah, it takes a lot of energy yeah. also with the jet lag always when you come oh, back home yeah. Yeah. svb with a gift from Lee Van. What Rolex is Alvin wearing? <laughs> Salim Adabar, I know Sal, he's from Sacramento. <laughs> Even if it isn't a Rolex, it's nicer than your watch, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> what the questions fly in, so it's oh, hard it for me so to... Fast. It goes so fast. But guys, if someone 
spells my name wrong. I was going to say, you know? about, <laughs> how does it's, Alvin actually earn a living? I don't know who you're talking to, Chris Cap. There's no Alvin in the pool hall. Not that I know of. I'm not a chipmunk. <laughs> who do you hate playing the most? Oh my god, that's such a sick break. The one ball had too much speed on it, though. The one ball actually had so much speed on it that it came up this way mm -hmm. and tickied out of the pocket and still came back out to here. Do you have a least favorite player to play against? Without putting anybody specifically on blast, but, but so honestly, it was Mike Deshane. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's I don't easy think that's, to understand. Yeah, right? I was gonna say I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. <laughs> um, and also, when you lose his like hand twist, have you ever seen it? No. With the handshake, he twists your your wrist, like pulls it down. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I have videos and pictures of it. It was the first time I played him. He also threw my chalk like. 10 feet behind him because I left it on the table. It was in... I uh, just wouldn't shake his... Did you stop shaking his hand? Yeah, well, you you have to. It was at the Moscone Cup. Oh, at the cup. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, he's quite famous for it. Man, Shane went all in as well here. The three ball now tied up, was tied up with the eight. Again, saying that the, the three doesn't go to the top left corner. Used to go to the bottom left, but now the five rolls in and takes away that pocket, so... Even if Lee Van can swerve, make this ball, and have a reasonable shot on the two, the, the run out is uh, he needs to be able to get up to some kind of bank on the three. I don't think there's any safeties on offer here either. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Look at this. Nudging the three out as well. Is the two cuttable in the side pocket without letting the cue ball go? No, it isn't. Interesting spot. I'm sorry, guys. I tried to read the chat, but... Uh comments and questions come in so <laughs> quick i think they all understand yeah <laughs> you want to know how many people are watching right now it's easy to understand that it's tough to read when you got five thousand people on youtube and almost two thousand on facebook so and it's all one one chat it's all one chat all yeah right. so you got <laughs> almost almost seven thousand people watching I actually just see now my favorite uh, game to play or practice um, since I'm probably eight or something. Um, I always start with straight pull. Oh yeah, I, I, I still do. I think it's a it's a great game, yeah. especially to to start the day. You do many shots. You do short strokes, long strokes, uh, three rail position, short position. You yeah. gotta think ahead, like. 10 balls sometimes and being, um, being smart with cluster breakouts and yeah, being very absolutely. intentional with absolutely. everything that you do yeah so that's what i still do for an hour when i start practice yeah and uh look when i was like eight or something every day we played straight pull for six eight ten hours race yeah. to 500 race to thousand whatever shane's jumping here and trying to put the cue ball keep the cue ball on the side of the table where the two is now i think yeah yeah, it was was good. It was a nice full hit. Um, yeah, I see the question here with Josh. Uh, Josh shot, I think it was yesterday, right, with the foul? Yes. Look, in Europe, it would be 100% a foul. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what you do. I mean, I, I've seen worse things mm -hmm. happening, like Vitaly. Uh, I think he moved the eight ball like 20 inches when he was, I think, playing a swerve or something around a ball or jumping i don't mm -hmm. remember anymore so but it was a foul because the nine or the two ball hit Came the around nine. the table and hit the nine yeah so honestly i mean maybe josh didn't think about it i mean i i cannot really tell he was actually quite uh or he was feeling terrible after he read all these comments he said he got i don't know how many messages from people uh, accusing telling him, him yeah. accusing him that he's a cheater and blah 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 i mean he still lost the match and uh i mean it can happen wow. that he didn't think of it what a shot here by svb so i think but yeah obviously uh, people always judge quite hard um 
so for it's me, it's easy to do from behind the keyboard. But I don't know if you uh, heard the or have talked to Josh about it or not. But uh, he did an interview with Mike on Windows Open, and he basically said because the rule set is different from what he mm. deals with in Europe, he actually thought that because he touched the nine with his Q mm. and he didn't foul on the cue ball, yeah, that the definition of cue ball fouls yeah. only means yeah. it's not a foul. Yeah, and so to be uh, honest, I, I, I would have not known what the what the rule is if it's only cue ball foul if, and hit the nine with the cue and but it would be a foul because the two hit the nine sure I, I would have never known that i mean also don't play that many tournaments with that rule in the u.s right but um to be honest i mean u.s is the only country where there are rules like that that only cue ball foul i mean uh -huh, we never uh -huh. played it all year yeah foul we, is a foul Doesn't obviously matter. we we essentially use the rule because uh, in a lot of, well, basically every tournament in America, we don't have any refs. Mm. And so it's on the the opposing player mm. to hold, help hold somebody accountable, like in a moment like that. Now, Lee Van knew it was a foul, mm. but he didn't see it happen. Lee Van was watching the cue ball jump over the ball, trying to make sure that he didn't touch All the right. ball that he was All jumping right. over. And so uh, even though Lee Van knew it was the foul after the fact, uh, it's just a sticky situation where both no, players working in good faith, you know, something yeah. comes out and looks optically bad. Yeah, I but think you cannot really judge yeah. uh, Josh for, for that. Yeah. But... SVB thinking um, through this spot here. Yeah, I mean, he meets... I was, I was going to say it's kind of tough to get enough on the two ball where it can get to the short rail. And then Does get the back out ball, while still keeping the, the three key ball. ball past the five to the corner. I don't believe so. That's a close call. He's trying to get it to the short rail, but he doesn't want to lose the cue ball. I think that's why he's taking so long. He's trying to bank the two ball three rails out, but not lose the cue ball from behind the cluster. He called the pocket. Oh, well, there you go. He wasn't calling the pocket. He was gesturing where he wanted to put the two ball. That's a tough safety. Yeah. You can see the point on the rail that we can access. And it's not much to work with. And I think that kicking straight into the short rail or long rail is out, out of the question too. Because yeah, the eight's sitting. No chance, yeah. The eight's sitting right there. <laughs> I'm actually looking on the okay, five. No, was it a uh, four railer? This way? Like short, no, the other short, long, oh, short, Oh, yeah, long, yeah. Between but then ten, missing the traffic ten, here. Yeah, but yeah, he might. That's that's a tall order. Going for the Mass A. Well, oh, my God. Yeah. And unbelievable yeah. hit. <laughs> and then gets oh, the. That's a good try. Wow. From that spot, that is a sick try. I still got a lot to do here. Got to play the bank. I don't know. Needs a good angle to maybe draw back for the four. Yeah, if you make the bank on the three ball, I got to think that if he makes the bank on the three ball that he's out. Oh, and he took the, the slightly longer or wider angle so it'll shorten up a bit when he draws back to the four. Like so. Well, that's not ideal. SVB just looking for an excuse to get his stroke underneath him. He's been moving the cue ball, you know, two, three, four rails all mm -hmm. the time on his runouts in all the matches before this one. But Levin's kind of slowed him down a little bit here. And, and this rack, especially, obviously, yeah. with the balls tied up. Oh, 
How long are you in town for? Are you staying for anything beyond the 8-Ball, or are you... 8-Ball, then we go to Boston. You're going to Boston, yeah. And then we go to Connecticut for the PLP. That's right, home. that's right. You're in the PLP. That's great. I can't wait to watch that. I probably won't follow Boston as closely because I'll be all pooled out after watching pool for 12 hours <laughs> a day for two weeks straight. But definitely PLP. Yeah, a lot of pool there. Whoa! <whistles> Just staring at the cue ball. Can't believe that it slid so so uh, far along the tangent line after he uh, honestly, came off the eight. Honestly, on the outside tables, that he would have scratched like a hundred percent because they come out way shorter. And he also played it without spin or anything. Yeah. <laughs> just hmm. mean mugging that cue ball, man. <laughs> just let's take a quick look at the uh, whoops, the other matches we got going on here, guys. Yes, sir. I think we got Billy against Vitaly, Josh against uh, Daniel. There we go. See how the players are feeling. Score here with uh, we're gonna miss the break just so you know, with the with Lee Van breaking, but uh, we'll be back to that table shortly. Billy and Lee Van, or Billy and Vitali, sorry, are um, three to one in favor of Billy Thorpe. And then this match here with uh, Daniel Masial and Josh Filler. You can follow on Windows Open on Facebook. That is live streaming right now. That current score is two to one in favor of Josh Filler. Look at the rail, guys. Check out the rail. Just everybody's sweating it. This guy's sweating something else. Is, is mm -hmm. Tony in some action over here? Or was he did he leave? Tony was here earlier. Is that Tommy Medina? Hmm. Right on. Haven't seen JRB. Let's head back to our our van off the van the fight of the vans Lee Van Cortez and Shane Van Boning. Who's the most setting satisfying player to beat? <laughs> um, oh, definitely Josh. Yeah. Because for me, he's the best. Yeah. I think um, I actually <laughs> wanted to see. Um, I would pick. I don't. I don't care who who's Josh playing on a four-inch um, race to 125 or something nine ball. I think there is no one on this planet who can beat Josh. I think uh, because on the tight table match room format. And, and and also the the race because um, I swear to God you can you can pick uh, wake him up at three a.m. and he can still do the same shots without practice like three rails or frozen cue ball on the rail uh, punch in whatever it doesn't right. matter he doesn't need any practice to play a perfect set and I think <laughs> he he just proved it again at the derby when yeah, he was playing for like twenty four hours. That was so ridiculous. And and he can do that all day. I mean, it's really rare to see him missing an easy shot. And you always got to play your, your A game. Everyone knows it. Did you see how long that cue ball went off the rail because it had that yeah. overspin? I want to watch that back. It had like a little bend off the rail after yeah. he hit the one. Let me see if I can pull that up. I might have been seeing things, but... I'm pretty sure that's why he got an extra collision here because his cue ball went off the expected line. <laughs> Have you ever tried yeah. to break the rack like Shane does? Well, yeah. And then I hit the wall. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, I can. I mean, I can. I can break as hard as he can. Um, but it's also about the technique. It's like uh, he's like, how would you say? Like he's going a little bit forward and getting like all the stroke into the the cue ball and and at the perfect elevation upon contact for yeah, the perfect pop. Yeah. And it's also about timing because yeah. if you go up too fast you might lose the cue ball. If you go up too slow you lose it. Yeah. Um but I think I I, I found a way that where where how or how I can uh, break well for a yeah. long time. So you, you don't have to break like Shane. No. There's there's no need to. Uh, Lee Van's at the table right now running balls. I'm going to cut away. I know he's about to pocket the three ball. I don't think there's going to be any surprises here, but I think it's because of what happened right here. Watch the cue ball just have ever so little of an extra overturn off the rail. Do you see that? Mm. With just like a little extra slide. Yeah. That's it's the difference between the this table and the outside tables. Yeah. Where if it didn't have that little, it's literally like a half a turn's worth of slide. If it didn't have that, he wouldn't have hit the six ball. Mm. And changed the match. And to be honest, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't even say anymore that Shane is the greatest breaker. Currently. Beca be because um, I think he just breaks way too hard. Um, he always needs some I would say like more he needs more luck than the others because he's breaking so hard that the cue ball gets kicked more the one yeah. ball has a speed where he cannot really control it mm -hmm. like if you look at Federer's break he, mm -hmm. he like pops it or Carlo mm -hmm. I mean it's incredible it, it, you cannot break any more uh, effortless do than you, Carlo does do you remember the I think it was called the Predator 1 challenge that happened during COVID where everybody played from their own house and they did the scoring thing where you, you played on a webcam. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. When I watched Carlo in that tournament, at that time, I don't think there was a single person on the planet that could break 10 ball and, and do the break and runs the way that he did on his home table with his template rack mm -hmm. and he's racking. You know, take anyone mm -hmm. else doing the same thing. He was, I think he was, his average, I think he was breaking and running like 85% of racks or 80 mm. or 90% of racks or something like that. It's absolutely silly. Yeah. Because he was controlling wow. it like you're talking about. Well, wow, that nine ball. Um, it was no, a 10 it's, ball. It's, no, uh, just, oh, oh, uh, I mean the nine ball. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, it's his break is incredible. It it's, comes all from the wrist, you know. Mm. And uh, it's so effortless. It looks so easy. He jumps the cue ball back like like perfect, and uh, it's just so th that would actually be a break I would like to practice. Yeah, because Shane's break, of course, it's it's good, but it's way too hard, and I think it's also more complicated to learn mm -hmm. with uh, like like I don't know how to say like push all the the body first back and then into the shot and uh, also the timing and carlo is just the wrist it's nothing yeah. else yeah or fedor carlo has just all around a much shorter punchier stroke mm. in general go you see like w he hit it pretty much that perfect right he made the one ball but the cue ball is of obviously the two ball is in a is in a tough spot but if you would look at carlos break mm -hmm. i think the cue ball would be like on the first diamond if it would stop if he would hit it, yeah it would be here yeah. or like fedor and also the majority of the time, especially when, like, Shane is controlling these balls that are going in these pockets yeah. quite well right now. When Federer and Carlo are controlling those balls like that, the one ball, if the one, if the cue ball is here, the one ball is either ending up here mm -hmm. or here, like, all the time. Yeah. And it's the same in nine ball with Shane. He's breaking 
I would say 20% harder than all the others. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. 100% I know who will win this match. It's Mr. Van. <laughs> and nice one. There's one thing I've learned on this planet. Nothing is 100%. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. actually the only thing that is 100%. I think I saw now, I don't know how many times, something with Aranas. Uh, what I think of him, I mean, just crazy talented player. Um, <laughs> sadly, he's probably only number five yeah. in the Philippines. Yeah. Um, probably in Europe or US, he would be top three. What do you uh, think of that guy, M Michael Feliciano, that, that kind of broke out on the scene the last yeah, year and a half? Crazy, or, or what was the other guy called? Burn. Uh, there's also the other guy. What was Feliciano in the semifinal in Vietnam? Or quarterfinal? No, Feliciano semifinal. made it to two finals. In a row, no, you mean you mean Raga? No, no, I'm talking about Feliciano when they did the uh, the Philippines, the thing that happened at Sharks, and then the one right after that, Feliciano made oh, it to yeah, the finals yeah. of both of those events yeah. with absolutely monster fields with all you yeah. guys and yeah, all the Asians. And then there's also the, what's it called, Ronnie Burn something, Bernie? They call it Bernie. I, I forget think. the guy's name. Yeah. Yeah, Bernie something. Regal uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, I don't know who's playing at the PLP. Um, That's right. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the two younger of them, guy, right? I think two of them play in the PLP. I don't know who. Yeah, they made it in on the wild card. Yeah, the, they the wild have card so many upcoming players. I mean, the way Chua played at the World Cup of Pool last year was just absurd. Yeah. Really. Yeah. The shots he played. I mean, I don't want a smaller James <laughs> accomplishment for the tournament, you know? Yeah. But. Um, it was incredible what, what Chua did there. I mean, it's also just pure talent. It's incredible. Uh, yeah, there. Someone, Bernie and Feliciano play in the PLP. Well, there you go. We're going to watch I mean, them in a couple it's, weeks. It's race to five, of course. Um, it's a two-table uh, two setup. Um, but, um, yeah, it's it's absolutely crazy what, what kind of talents they brought into the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to see how the game is still evolving. It's almost like it's similar, honestly, to the way that um, that basketball is evolving. Because basketball is now getting to the point where the game is all about just mm. the ridiculous shot making, right? And now, yeah. now that all the players are aware of all the moves and all the players are, have access to the stuff on the internet, it's just getting to the point where the guys that can do the most ridiculous stuff and the most ridiculous control of the break mm. are the ones that are <laughs> that's that's a good question about the cope brothers because i think coping chung has been i think in the same situation like i've been he didn't really have a name or something mm -hmm. he was little co he was yeah coping East brother you know yeah. he he was actually the the bad co you know the one that sucked yeah <laughs> no just like just to put and it harshly whoa wow and he also lost against him a couple of times. I think the first time at the World Ten Ball in in uh, in the Philippines. And but that I think made him, I don't know, it gave him the extra boost. I would say uh, to practice harder, maybe also learn from Copigny and make the best out of it. And he definitely did. What a player he is now. Yeah. Wow, that was a very, very bad miss. Yeah, that was probably horribly timed. I think it would be time for a timeout, I would say. Oh man, that feeling, man. I mean, I'm just, I'm just an amateur that hangs out in local tournaments, and I know how that feels right there. <laughs> but it's got to be tenfold, because now you're getting to the point in the tournament where you're talking about big pay jumps. Big pay jumps. They're guaranteed third place right here. And oh, the yes. difference between like guaranteeing third and guaranteeing second and a real good shot at first is, you know, you're talking about big pay jumps. You're not just talking about a steak dinner, you know? <laughs> a good break right there. Right on the side, one ball on the short ball, short rail and manageable. And you see he also hit it almost that perfect 
and you see where the cue ball lands. Yep. It's like center of the table, a little bit on the right side. And about 35% soft, shop, pardon me, yeah. softer than softer, shade. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like playing Dennis? I have a funny story. I think okay. I, I didn't play Dennis quite often. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, what a what a player he is. But he was never a big tournament player, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I played him at the US International Final. And we were practicing outside of the TV table. And obviously, I was practicing nine ball. He was practicing 10 ball. Mm -hmm. I said, Dennis, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and uh, he said, yeah, nine ball too easy. <laughs> wow, another miss. And uh, I ended up winning. I think, honestly, that was the easiest final win I've ever had. Really, he played terrible. I think I, lo uh, I won 11-5 or something, 11-4. You don't think he was fishing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd recommend going fishing for <laughs> Alvin Ocean, but you, you know what I'm saying. You just said he's more of a gambler than a tournament player. But yeah. No, it really is. But yeah, I say that mostly in jest. But who knows what goes on in a in a grinder's mind like that? Yeah, I mean it's crazy what he's capable of doing when it's when they he, he's playing a money match for like hundred thousand yeah. and what kind of shots he missed for. A difference of ten thousand or yeah. five thousand, whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's just incredible. I know we got a lot of questions coming in on the chat right now about scores and other matches. Let me uh, give you a quick rundown of how things are going in this tournament. As we get down to the, we're in the final six right now. Uh, Vitali Petsura and Billy Thorpe currently at three to three. Um, I tell you what, Vitali's matches have been fairly, like I'd say, drawn out in general. Like they, they've, he's been kind of slow in every I don't mean like slowing them down playing slow but like slowing down his opponents and a lot of them have been quite tightly cont contested um, Josh Filler Daniel Massial streamed on the Windows Open Facebook page that's at 3-2 to two in favor of Josh Filler um, and then you've got our hot seat match right here uh, questions in the chat uh, about who's on the mic just in case you're just joining us we got Albin Ocean on the side right here and uh, my name's Collins Nui. Post up is my stream. I normally stream out of Sacramento in California. I um, play out of Oscar Dominguez's room, Hard Times Billiards. Uh, and I love watching pool, man. Shout out to Albin Ocean for hanging out for a while. It's fun. It's a pleasure to meet you, yeah. meet you, obviously, and be here. Hiya. Nine ball went high. Both balls went high. One ball finds a hole. Two ball going in the corner. Is it going to fall? Yes. So it takes away the easiest where the escape. cue ball is again. Yeah, cue ball way up on the short rail. And then and just Shane just staring at the table. He's like, why is that one ball going in that hole, man? Why can't the one ball just come to the short rail like I want it to? Yep. Hiding in the back here, looking at the ceiling. The struggle. A couple of misses in this. Yeah, a lot uh, to think about, especially the eight ball hurt quite a lot, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the comments are just so brutal. <laughs> <laughs> How was your final against Omar, and what do you think about him? Um. Well, what I think about him, well, I gotta say thank you for playing that one ball he played. I don't know if you I don't remember. Recall. I don't recall. Um, he played a uh, played a push out. I think on was it race to thirteen? I think on twelve ten or something. I played a push out, and it was like obvious safety, you know, really like really obvious and. The cue ball was frozen on the short rail. The one ball was like center table. Yeah, you're talking about Omar Al Shaheen right now, right? Yeah, the, the final. The final, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
as I said, it was obvious safety, like very, very easy. And uh, he he tried to play it with like 100 miles oh, no. and go four rails to the two ball and missed it by a diamond or something. And yeah. that was the, the last wreck. So thanks, Omar, if you're watching. <laughs> um, no, he's a he's a great player, oh, but I yeah. think um, you know you have sometimes you have players that make have like a little breakthrough, I would yep, say. Yep, yep. But that breakthrough like puts them back for like month or weeks or whatever. Yeah. Because I've never seen him really playing good anymore, or or even playing tournaments. I don't know right. where where he is right now. What he's yeah, he, doing. He came out to hard time shortly after that and played a set against uh, Oscar. Yeah. yeah, I was able to meet I him. I mean, I <laughs> I heard he he got so much money for that second place that um, he was tired of the game for for quite a while. Oh really? Yeah, I couldn't believe when he told me how much he got and how much he would have get if he would have won. He yeah. would be over half a million or something from government and everything. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Because they do not really have many athletes in kuwait right so they pay them pretty well if they do something yeah. good lee van's on two right now and shane's trying to figure out a way to to manufacture a tough hit on this three ball but if you leave the three close to the rail without cover it makes it twice as big well he could actually i don't know why he's not playing the three into the nine i don't know if it's possible and, and, and sticking stick him on the, the seven ball. yeah but actually, from here, it looks like he can play like between maybe five and six. Get cue ball behind the six. Hard to say. Man, he could three ball, three balls likely to get a rail too, so you don't necessarily yeah. have to get the cue ball to the rail, depending on how thin you hit it. Hits it thin yeah. enough. So he wants to get the cue ball there. Oh my! What a shot! Yeah, that's. Oh my good. days. Is the three frozen? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna frame it like this. Don't get in the way, Lee Van. Don't get in the way. I want to see. That's gonna do it. And so we got Shane on the hill for that rack to put Shane on the hill. And is Lee Van breaking? Yeah. Mr. Cortez. Want to give a quick shout out to the uh, event sponsors out here for the U.S. Open events, all four of them. We're only getting started, guys. Ten ball finishes tonight, straight into eight ball tomorrow over the next three days. Then we're going to play some bank pool after that, U.S. Open bank pool, and then into the U.S. Open one pocket event. Shout out to uh, Town of Town Chalk, Town Tips, and now the Town Max Rack template. And... Uh, Diamond Billiard Products, these beautiful tables that we're playing on right now. If you haven't heard of Diamond, I don't know where you've been. Uh, mm -hmm. One PKT, I'm actually sporting the One PKT chess piece shirt right now. There it is. Great brand if you like that game. Fast and Loose Designs for the promotional material for these, these events. Uh, Michelle Griffin. Realtor for being quite generous and helping Mike and I with uh, some of our travel costs and uh, Premier Billiards if you need any billiard supplies of your own check them out and of course the Goliath name of Q-Tech as the title sponsor for the event. Thank you so much for uh, to all the sponsors I probably dogged it on that transition guys yeah, I dogged it. Sorry. I think I haven't seen it now, but I think he missed the one ball to the side. Was he shooting at it to go in the side, or yeah, was he, I think he playing played safe? It with, no, I think he played it with inside. I dogged it, guys. I'm sorry. The the one passes the eight here, I think, just barely. Doesn't look like he's playing it though. Maybe it doesn't pass. How heavy my Q is. Um, honestly, I cannot really tell. I play with the extension, but without it's 17 and a half ounce. 
how much I'm practicing kicking. I think almost daily. What do you um, do to practice kicking? What do you do specifically? Do you work um, with kicking systems or do you just set up shots? Well, I got um, you. You have two balls. You got the cue ball. You got two balls. Uh, you set up uh, one ball on the spot and you have two balls. You place anywhere on the table and you try to play safety behind them. You start with the cue ball behind the line and, and those two balls you place wherever you want and you try to play safety behind them with the with the ball that's on the spot you got me okay so <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so yeah. so imagine imagine you take cue ball in hand in the kitchen yes you have a ball in the spot where the ten is yes. right now and you have two balls you place you any place two balls anywhere on the table you're yeah. trying to then contact off the ball on the spot and you get play. safe on that ball so that ball is split but minimum of two rails Minimum of two rails, cue ball after contact with the ball in the spot. Yes. Okay. And uh, if you do it five times, um, you take one ball away. So you only play safety behind one ball. If you do it five times in a row? In a row. Okay. And uh, how many times have you done it in a row once you've gotten down to one ball? Um, I think my record is somewhere 18. Good Lord. And... Well, sometimes I cannot make seven. Sure, sure. <laughs> but um, that's but yeah. pool, baby. That is pool. Yeah, I think it's a it's a huge part of the game. Honestly, I think uh, in pool, in my opinion, pool is top three toughest sports in the world, especially on a pro level. Yes, it um, has to be because the level is just incredible, and I think it. it gets better and better every year you have so many new players that come and have like a breakthrough like like Masio. out yeah. of nowhere he has been i don't know in every second tournament he was in quarterfinal whatever he's playing so th smooth easy fast also great yeah shooter. i had no idea the way he approaches the ball he looks like one of the slower more deliberate players yeah but when he's feeling good he's got a rhythm that is like and there are so many players that uh that enter the, the the top players, you know, every yeah. year, like five or Cledi Okachi, all of a sudden he beat everyone at the Spanish Open. Yeah. The Spanish Open was one of the toughest tournament I played because of the humidity and yeah. the conditions and everything. Um, so I think there are probably 50 players that can play on the same level. Yeah. But in the end, it's only either defensive game jump obviously the break or just a mentality and i don't think if that there are so many sports where you can say that there are really 50 players almost on the same level yeah where just very small things depend who's gonna win well but the that's the difference of the game and the thing that i was talking about i, I don't know if it was with you or with mike but just the fact that it's played on such a small surface right hmm. and there's so many variables that it even i mean there has to be such a small difference between hmm. what separates the players yeah. you know what i mean it's not like golf where I, this is the the analogy that i always bring up you're never going to be playing a par five against your opponent hmm. and you just chip it up on the green like three feet from the hole hmm. and it's beautiful and then the next time you come up, you, you go for the putt, you miss it, and the other guy wins Yeah, because of that shot. You know what I mean? They still have to get to the green. It's a very interesting game in that regard, especially with the level of play. So it looks like Shane got it. Yeah, he made an incredible jump. Karam. Did mm. you see that where he yeah. jumped and then Karam the six ball? And perfect touch touch straight not like it's a problem for you guys why don't you just punch it to the rail and create the angle yourself all right we got Shane in the final right Shane in the final all right guys I'm gonna let you guys uh, oh I'm not even gonna bring up a vote actually because if you want to watch the match between Daniel Masial and um, brain fart who he's playing uh, Josh. Oh, Josh Filler. Yeah, if you want to see that match, you got to watch it on Windows Open. It's currently tied at 4-4. Four to four. 
we are going to go slide on over to the uh, Vitali Patsura Billy Thorpe match, which is really interesting, actually, that matchup. And the current score is sitting at 4 to 3 in favor of Billy Thorpe. No, Billy, sorry, Vitali Patsura. My apologies. Boom. Five three, Vitaly. Five three. You got any plans tonight? Oh, oh, I have no clue, honestly. Where are you staying? If you don't mind At me asking. At the Gold Coast. Oh, the Gold Coast. Yeah, there you go. I heard they got good food over there. Like a decent like uh, yeah, it's a selection right. of the yeah. restaurants anyway. It's kind of rough at the Rio, I'm going to be honest. Some of the fast food places are good for fast food, but yeah. it's not like you're going to eat it all the time. You know? Yeah, I mean, the, the new um, food court they built was is quite good. Got a few restaurants now. Yeah. But before that, it was just terrible. Are you going to roll out? Or are you going to you want to hang out for this one? Was it five three? Yeah, five to three. Got nothing Let's to do. do. Let's do it. I'm loving it personally. I just don't want you to feel like you have to hang out. No, no, it's all right. All right. Let me see if I can get a secondary angle on this table too, in case we want more information. Not really. What do you think of uh, Vitaly's game? Yeah, also someone who improved a lot. Obviously, I think he's practicing a lot with Fedor. I uh, think you can clearly see on the break that he kind of um, tries to do the same thing, just like pop break, uh -huh. like like Fedor does. And obviously, I mean, there are so many players that uh, came to the US and improved a lot over the years by playing just different uh, things like one pocket and, and banks and whatever. So yeah, he, he became a, a very, very good actually, player. Actually, you know what? Mike just waved at me. I think it might be good to have the two of you on the mic together. How well do you know Mike, Melina Mike? How well? Yeah. Well, I did a few interviews with him. I think I've been on the podcast few times so yeah yeah i think it might actually be good for the stream to get a little bit of a uh you know give the people at home a, a change in vibe you know <laughs> what i mean see what that's like if you're up if you're up for it yeah sure yeah i'm gonna go see if he's available No. Vitaly probably takes the lead here, the 6 3. Sir, I'm gonna eat my uh, my French dip out there while Mike and, and Alvin get to know each other even better. Pleasure to meet you. Good to see you. Enjoying the uh, hot seat? Um. Or were enjoying the hot seat? Yeah, it was alright. I mean, it was not the the best match I saw from both of them, but um, 
Shane played a little better and won in the end. What's your take on, on Vitaly, Alvin? Because I hadn't heard about him a whole lot until he came over here to the States, and I, I hadn't really seen him play a whole lot. Maybe you might be more familiar. Not really. I mean, he played, I believe, he played youth with Max in the European Championships, and obviously back then he was maybe, I don't know, top 20 or something in youth. Okay. So it, I think you can clearly see it helped him a lot to go to the States, right. practice with Fedor play all those tournaments I think he won the last one right he won against Shane or something in the final Did he? Here? Um, I mean not here but like a few weeks ago I think he won a nine ball tournament yeah so he won the um, I think it was in Texas he won the Texas Open so he's showing some form yeah. lately for sure I think he got third in, in Derby City you know but before then I hadn't seen him yeah, uh, outside of coming over here to the states, you know what I mean. And, yeah. Um, but he seems to be doing pretty good. I think who got that one album was it? Uh, Vitali. Vit yeah. All right, so we got six three. He's been, yeah, he's been playing real good lately. Did y'all talk at all about your match with uh, Josh? Oh, I mean, no, we we didn't really. I mean, yeah. there's not a lot to talk about. Um, maybe afterwards made one I would say maybe safety error where I should have played the bank um, he missed uh, quite an easy four ball that actually brought me back into the game so overall I think it was a good match entertaining match also to watch so um, nothing to complain about really yeah it was a good ending you you, you had some uh, got I think a, f a funny four to the five that you had a shot on and then he breaks gets hooked by the five and then before you know mm. it it's it's eight eight you know I think you were down something like eight five yeah, and yeah then just uh, came with a big shot there at the end but congratulations on a on a great tournament Alvin no I think it was good it was some nice nice practice um, I enjoy being here at Griffs maybe not seven hours every day but uh, <laughs> y'all had uh, some early nights all things considered yeah, you know yeah. No, it was it was nice to be here. What's your schedule like? Are you playing the eight ball at all? Or are you? Yeah, I'm playing the eight ball. Um, then to Boston and then to Connecticut. You're gonna be playing a lot of the Moscone Cup stuff, I'm, I'm guessing. Well, yeah, mostly the the majors. I mean, I'm I'm not a, a guy who would I would not go to Mexico or something. Yeah, well, that's why I was kind of to be honest with you, I was surprised to see your name on the list here because I've never really seen you play. You know, these kind of like full. Room yeah, I events. I actually thought about um, going back home, but then I thought going back home, then I struggled with the jet lag at home, and then come back here for the PLP. Right. And struggle again with the jet lag, and so I thought, well, it's some nice tournament, some good payouts. I stay here, and uh, no. I, uh, I don't regret that decision at all. How are you liking staying in Vegas for this long, though? Be honest with me. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's too long. The, the, it's the, the too the long. Says it all. Uh, I think one week or ten days is more than enough. Yeah. It's exhausting. Yeah, it definitely is. Hopefully you guys have gotten out of the casino at least and gotten some fresh air and enjoy some somewhat a sun because i haven't seen yeah. the sunlight too often over the last couple of weeks I'll i be mean honest with you. when does eight ball start tomorrow Shoot. yeah yeah no kidding tomorrow. Um, i don't know what time though we got to find out all right back to the match try break it looks like three no, five oh he made, made, he made, made one side. oh and he dropped his chalk and in the pocket. There he goes. Sayonara. Oh, no, <laughs> oh he I got, got it. it. He got it. Masio and Filler are playing, I think, on the Windows Open stream. You guys can check that out um, as well. It's live. I don't know what the score is, though. I haven't kept up with it. I was checking out that that Shane and, and Lee Van match. It's getting down to it, man. Oh, we got a double kiss. Might get a scratch. No, it doesn't, but selling out. Yeah. So you're going to PLP. You're going to, uh, I'm guessing, what is there? There's the Boston event yeah. as well. McDermott, yeah. And then going back home on 26, I believe. What's your thoughts on the uh, World Championship Million Dollar Prize Fund? You've had, you probably, yeah, it's, not it's probably, great. you're the most successful, at least in, when it comes to finals and, and titles, you're the most successful 
world nine ball champion i'd say in the last 10 years so and you're obviously still showing quite a bit of form um i'm really looking forward to it i mean i think it's a big step in the right direction um for pool um going to saudi um hope it's how many years you have a contract right 10, Ten? yeah so yeah it's, so it's i think very promising for for pool big future ahead um hopefully i can do good there um got some bad memories from last year but uh what do you mean i don't uh, r refresh the memory i don't even remember how you went I out lost to um i just forgot his name the syrian guy oh sufi sufi he i hadn't seen him since yeah, yeah he again. he flew five balls in six racks <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty chilly um, late in the tournament i'm guessing uh quarterfinals oh yeah 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 so yeah. yeah that was that was heavy that was that took me quite a while to to swallow that loss yeah but uh, even considering you know your success and and accomplishment yeah but still i mean you're you're practicing so hard obviously right. word nine ball the biggest tournament of the year um, you're feeling good. I mean, I didn't play my very, very best in that match, but um, to lose in in that way was just that was really you wear terrible. your. You, I, I said this earlier. You wear your emotions on your sleeve. Yeah. 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 I like I'm, that. I I have to let it out. Yeah. You know, I I cannot swallow it. I mean, I'm also a perfectionist. Yeah. Um, so competitor. Yeah, and if if some things bother me i yeah, have yeah. to just let it out i mean i, I got better I, I was way worse back in the days i heard I've with heard uh, with uh, throwing the cue chalk whatever whatever i found to, to <laughs> throw you know you're human um wow that was a terrible shot up wow um but yeah I, I have to let it out i feel like i don't know if i just swallowed down for one and a half hours i would i don't know just eat at you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. You got to get out some aggression. You look like yeah. a very fit guy. So I imagine you, your and health and exercise yeah. is a part of and, that. And, and all the people think that that kind of, how would you say, like, um, that because of that, I uh, sometimes I don't bring my A game or whatever. Yeah. But I can say that as soon as I get back to the table, I'm 100% focused and I'm I'm done with the mistake from before and I'm focusing on the game again. Give some advice to maybe because we're all human, right? But we, yeah. we never played on on your kind of level. Some advice to someone to kind of help in those moments because we've all dealt with frustration and how you like kind of channel it or or is there breathing techniques? Is there any kind of insight you can give us to that? Um, well, yeah, I actually use some um, breathing techniques that I got from some books from athletes. I got one skier um then uh i read the book of uh what's it called yeah it doesn't matter another athlete so yeah breathing is i would say it's very important actually on on uh, crucial moments in the game especially hill hill whatever you got to find something for you that fits you right. that like uh gets your heartbeat down just a little bit you know uh, because sometimes i'm i'm way too relaxed you know, you gotta just find the perfect thing for you to to play your A game, and uh, obviously in crucial moments, um, for me it works the best with uh, breathing techniques. But um, there are many many different things out there you can you can learn. Well, it's working. Obviously, you've had a ton of success. Yeah, I mean, I mean sometimes it doesn't. I, I remember. I mean, Moscone Cup is something different. You yeah. can you cannot compare, and obviously, if someone hasn't played there, um, it's hard to really tell how you feel. And the worst I had was l no 2022 in Vegas when I walked down. I, I played really, really good. I felt really good. I went down the stairs. Uh, obviously. 1500 people screaming at you and whatever <laughs> welcome to vegas and uh then earl walks down and obviously they're going crazy absolutely crazy i swear the first 10 minutes i didn't know how to play pool you were down three uh, I one if i remember the earl i think two zero three one i, sh I should have lost the match because i played terrible in the first 
I would say like three, four wrecks. Really, yeah. I, I didn't know how to play pool. I was, was so. Was it the Earl effect, or was it just the? Yeah, the... I was like, I felt like I got, I got hit by lightning. <laughs> really? Yeah. It was it was incredible, and then he made that strange mistake where he chose to play the four into the corner instead of the side. The side right for better angle big controversy in that match and it was a big moment in, yeah, the, in, yeah. the, in the cup in general and uh, that actually brought him back to the game then he scratched like twice in a row and I ran I think my two wrecks uh, I think I ran four so um, yeah so sometimes you, you you cannot really handle it um, but as I said Moscone Cup is something different and you cannot really prepare for it we're live from the 2024 U.S. Open 10 Ball Championship. I'm Molina Mike. We got Albin Ocean, multiple-time world champion, in the booth. This is I don't know. This is one loss side action by Tali Batsura, Billy Thorpe, seven three score line. There's another match going on between Daniel Masial and Josh Filler, and then of course uh, I think those two are going to play, and then the win the winner of those two matches are going to play, and then the winner of that is going to play Lee Van Corteza as Shane waits in the hot seat. We're going to be going nonstop until we get a champion. Um, so let's talk about tomorrow, Albin. Eight ball starts. What's your what's your eight ball game like? Because I haven't seen a whole lot of it. Uh, me neither. <laughs> um, You'll tell me tomorrow well, then. I have no expectations to be honest. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of eight ball. I think Why is it's. That? I think it, it became too easy. Yeah. Um, I guess we also play with the uh, with the uh, Tom wreck. Right. It will be. Yes, sir. So um, I think the game. It's just too easy, um, so I don't expect to go deep. I mean, it could go either way. I think it's even worse than maybe nine ball. I think you can eight ball. You can lose to a probably seven hundred yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. I mean, I, I I play it because I'm here already. Right. right. But um, I don't expect a great result. Uh, I, I can play the game. With you that, know, don't, with that don't, said, don't you'll, probably, you'll, you'll probably end up at least getting to a <laughs> final now. After no, that. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand the game. I can play the game. But uh, if you had a choice, let's say for your money, right? You got a chance. You're not gambling, but just for a title. What would, what would the game be in the format? Uh, and, and please don't tell me one on the spot nine ball with a template. No. No, uh, match room, so nine ball, uh, nine on the spot, break box, um, race to five, three sets, or best of five. No, but sets, uh, be best of five sets. Best of five sets? I think sets is the, is the most fair system you can have. Um, because, I mean, how many times you see. Short race? Yeah. B no, sets, because you can always come back yeah yeah you always have a chance it's never over if you lose five games in nine ball or you're six zero down how many times you see a comeback like that yeah it's tough look at that as billy hangs up a two ball tough spot there for billy he's gotten some good wins this this event yeah i saw him playing against max earlier he played great now seems like he got some problems yeah vitaly can and kind of put the the brakes on you a little bit but yeah i think sets are the most fair system how it's like in tennis how about a, a spot shot shootout it's terrible <laughs> no but i think in in many different ways because a spot shot is like a coin flip yeah um you can lose to anyone really actually a better player can lose easier than a worst player like a 700 fargo because it's more pressure for the better one you think like everything maybe you've been through to this point helps you out in those pressure moments or is, is there anything you can do to like do you ever get used to it to like high level pressure like that whenever you're it's it's time yeah i, I think so i mean it comes with experience if you're if you've been in the same situation for 500 times yeah you know how to to take care of yourself how to how your body reacts at uh, certain points and how to control it better so so yeah definitely but shootouts 
it's also the, the, the problem I see if you then look back at matches um, or even for social media. I mean, it's so big, you know. Right. And then if you do highlights of a game and like eight out of 10 matches, it's a shootout. So what crazy thing can happen in a shootout, you know, that people would like to watch. All right, he, he lost in a shootout. One thing, yeah. that's it, just miss. I mean, how yeah. nice is it if there's a hill hill and the guy jumps a shot or kicks a shot in and then runs out or maybe he has some problems with position three times he has to make great shots and whatever to stay in the game you know i think it's just better to see also on the highlight reel than i agree with than, you than seeing the the spot shots yeah you but know? then you get a guy like sufi who shits in a couple balls on you and then it's yeah yeah, yeah. you know part of the luck of the game yeah I, you know I'm, I'm with you. I like the excitement factor. Obviously, things that are easy on the eye and get people, you know, fascinated about the game, whether it's a little gimmicky or otherwise. Mm. You know, I like the jump shot. I like the exciting shots. I like seeing great level play, and I think all fans do, and that's why we're all here. Vitaly's looking to play the nine ball. How are you playing this, Alvin? You thinking the side or you yeah. think the stop shot? Yeah, side. Go up and down. Yeah, he played it way too hard, I believe. I think he could have played it way softer. He's going to be coming off thin than if he's playing in the side, it looks like. It's kind of hard to tell with this angle. Yeah. He might go up, down. Oh, wow. He's, he's checked. Oh, he might play it to the corner. It, might, it looks like he's stopping the ball there, trying to draw back a hair. Oh, he was wow, straight. Wow, that good. That was a good shot. Yeah, he hit that real good. To get on the hill... Winner of this moves on. Loser is out of the tournament. 8-3 in favor of Vitaly. How did you like hanging out with, out with uh, Collins? It was nice. Yeah? yeah. I've never met him before. Nice to talk about certain things. He was real pumped when I told him, man. Yes. Yeah, he was. Genuinely. He was. He was super excited. So he's got, he, got a lot, he has a lot of passion for doing this and has a unique uh, uh, delivery for all you pool fans out there. So... Um, anytime he can kind of get some fresh, fresh people in the box, he's more than willing to do it. He ha he's he's taking a break right now. You guys, uh, he's been at it and will continue to be as the evening progresses. We're gonna be here all night with you guys till we get a champion. I think we're down to let's see, two, four, five, six players now. I think. Altogether. Um, still six. Yeah, I think after this match and the filler Masial match, four left. We'll be down to four. Yeah. Maybe you guys in the chat can let me know uh, what the score is. Digitalpool.com for the live scoring. Tough break there for Billy. Did you get to see that um, that incident last night with the uh, Josh? Yeah, Billy we guy? actually talked about it. Did you? Um, I don't really see a mistake by Josh. Yeah. Um, I think and you know him. You played with no, him. No, I, I know him. I think he's a very honest guy. Yeah, yeah. And I think there was no need for him to to do such things. Um, and he still lost the match, but he was right. He was quite fuming because he got uh, several messages from people that called him a cheater and and so on. You see that stuff, Albin? Like, are you following social media at all? Like during? Yeah, yeah, I I do. But I'm 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 not a big fan of it, um, because um, it's it's just crazy. What what people write on Facebook or something. I mean, they they clearly don't give. <laughs> they don't know you, so they're just gonna say whatever yeah, they yeah, whatever yeah. they want. Yeah, well, Whatever they feel in that moment, right. they don't think twice if that's appropriate to to say to someone or say about someone well it's easy when you don't have to look at the guy in the you know yeah a, a, absolutely you know. absolutely look uh social media is such a powerful tool and it's so toxic also right. if you see certain people um and yeah it's it, it's just sad honestly i think you know we we try our best here you know we do our job we do that t 200 days per year um, it's tough being on the road man if you're the best player in the world and miss an easy shot on hill hill or something you're all of a sudden you're the worst for yeah, some, yeah. you know uh, we're still humans and and do mistakes so yeah 
it's it's just sad honestly and that's why i try to stay away as much as i can from social media of course i want to try also to to give uh, details about what i'm doing yeah it seems like you guys have been more active when it comes to yeah uh, but i only where your fans. yeah but i only do it when i'm at tournaments i would never look you cannot imagine how hard it is for myself to do like a selfie or something i swear <laughs> I, you don't I, 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 you don't strike me as the selfie kind of guy i could no. i could throw up you know <laughs> when i have to do a selfie yeah it really oh god um well ha okay let me let me ask you the other side of the coin when fans will go and ask you for autographs and take photos with you is that something you've gotten comfortable or accustomed to now to a certain stage it's it's all right you know if someone asks me in a polite way it's totally okay for me yeah, same yeah. with signatures whatever but if someone just grabs me and uh Has pulls me over before oh in, in especially in vietnam yeah yeah i heard it was crazy man Viet it was look <laughs> i was i was done after the final i mean you probably saw the video of we me did. crying in the back yeah yeah. I mean that also is something, you know. Exactly why, you me. know? What do you mean? Why post the video? Is that what you mean? Why filming me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like in the very back of the arena. Yeah. Um, trying to get time for myself, you know, because I had to go out there for the uh, award ceremony. So, I was like, just why, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, some. Yeah, like it's it's a couple things. One, look, I think it's people will understand what it me what it meant to you mm. you know what i mean like yeah they they will you're human and and you're gonna go through yeah. ups and downs when it comes to the sports aspect of it but like in that moment at least for me watching it right and i don't know how it was for a lot of fans but i'm watching you you know in your emotions and it's not mocking you or making fun of you or any of that it's man that's how bad that you wanted it you know yeah, and yeah so of course it, it kind of it humanizes that and we can you know Oh, Daniel won against Josh. It's over? Mm hmm Wow. So Josh Filler is out. I would say breaking news, but it's been live on a stream. So, yeah. Uh, if I would have lost that final, I don't know, let's say 13-5 or whatever, and I made 10 mistakes, right? then I have no problems with doing whatever right after. Yeah. But the way I lost the match, especially with that scratch on Hill Hill, and then people coming over f right after for pictures and whatever. And I was already crying when I left the arena yeah. um, because I was suffering a lot last year um, in my career. Um, what do you mean? I, I, I actually, I felt good on the table, but the results were all right over the place. Um, I got beat by <laughs> so many players, like very hard. And when I played good, they played better. And when I played perfect, they played like God. Yeah. So it was it was crazy. And then finally played my A game again, grinded super hard in every match. Yeah. And then losing that kind of way was just, that was incredible. Comment in the chat, it says, uh, it shows you're human that you became a much bigger fan after that. And I, and I think that's what, you know, I, I can echo that and resonate that because, you know, it just like i said before it just helps me you know realize man like it's easy to have takes or criticism or or what's what, like just have opinions about a game whatever what's up oh. it's a, no oh. not ju just max, max oh, okay. asked me um um but i love that part of just seeing man that dude really wanted that moment so bad and it was it, it looked Hanoi. i was i wasn't there but it looked real special <laughs> max is over there showing you a pizza buddy um and um yeah it looked like it was quite the experience man not just from online but from people there and um i heard like fetter took i don't even know how many pictures and from other guys who were there that just were non-stop and yeah yeah it's also great seeing the sport grow and see so many fans that are that enthusiastic about watching you guys play pool no know? absolutely I, I mean i cannot really tell the exact number how many people were watching there i would guess have you ever experienced something like that like outside of maybe a Moscone Cup? Uh, I think once at the World Cup of Pool uh, in Manila, there was like, I think my second, where Poland won against Finland. Cannot really say what, what year it was. Could be 12 or something. Um, they uh, We played in a three floor uh, mall. Yeah. 
and they actually stopped the escalator so people could stand on it. Really? Yeah. That's pretty wild, man. And How old were you? Mm, 22, 23. So I played young. with Mario. We actually lost to Rodney and Shane. I think last 16 or something. But that was wild. We played the first round, round against Kuwait and we were already like very late in schedule. And after us was playing Django and Efren. That's pretty amazing. And so they were already there, all the spectators. Uh, it's hard for me to tell, but I would assume like three, four thousand people. But yeah, I mean, it was it was great to see, and even the story behind why so many people are interested in pool now in Vietnam is crazy. You know why? No, I don't know. Because of COVID, really? pool pool was one of the only sports that w that people were allowed to play during COVID. And that's why they had the boom. Yeah, yeah. I heard there's like pool rooms all yeah, over the place, yeah. not just since, like since small pool COVID, rooms, like big pool rooms. They like tripled or even more. And yeah, it's crazy. You looking forward to going back? Yeah, definitely. It was was a nice country. It was a nice city. Uh, was there were some some very nice people. It was it was great to play in there. So yeah, really looking forward to it. Eight five after this ten ball from Billy Thorpe. One lost side action. The winner of this match is going to face Daniel Masial as Masial has defeated Josh Filler. I don't know what the score was, but Filler is out. It's kind of surprised, man. A lot of big names out, you know, early. I mean, obviously you went pretty deep, but like Fran, Fran. Aloysius, I mean. Look, yeah. Fran, Fedor, Victor. Yeah. Uh, yup. Didn't even make prize money. Yeah, that's like tournament. top, what, 10 players? <laughs> but all of them, you know? So... Yeah, it's crazy. Had a question in the chat. Who's your toughest opponent that you've ever faced? It's hard to say. I mean, there are so many, you know, you face so many players. Yeah. Um, I would say must have, Josh must or Shane. Yeah. I mean, I had so many battles with, with Shane. World Championship. Yeah, twice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... And so, that was when Shane, I mean, both y'all are still playing phenomenal, but yeah. Shane very much was well in his prime at that point. Yeah, it was, I mean, that was, if you look back, that was one shot that changed the whole outcome of the match or for, for that moment, or I, I felt like it because I played a safety on like 6-5 or something. And I think afterwards, I think I made one jump shot. See, this is what's wild about you guys. Like, how, how many years ago was that? I was, was it 21? And if I asked you to wait, 2021? Oh, you're talking about that match? I thought you meant earlier. Oh, there was, uh, when I won. Yeah, you 16. So, so you won when you beat Niels, right? And then. No, I lost to Niels. You lost to Niels, and then maybe a year or two then later you go back? Two, then 15, he was in the final with Kobe Nee. Then right. 16, he was in the final again with me. And loses. Loses. He lost twice in a row. It's wild how you guys have the sharpest memory, though, because. Yeah, of course, some, some, I mean, when you're in the final, I can probably tell you everything against <laughs> Niels. I, I played yeah, not really good um, against Shane. I was, I was quite lucky, I would say um, in Qatar, but he also didn't play his A game. But in, t was it 2021? Yeah, I believe so. I won in. Yeah. No, I won 2021, 2022. That's the year that he won. No, wait. Right? Sanchez won 2023. So we're in 24. So it must have been 22. Two. Yeah, yeah, because 2020 was nothing. I won in 2021. So 2022, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it was a good match. But you know, let me ask you, and, and if you don't want to answer, that's fine. In, in a match like that, you lose World Championship Final to Shane. Were you, were, did you have that same kind of emotion that you had, like, let's say, in, in Hanoi? No, absolutely not. And because what, then... Well, that's you're talking about world championship versus yeah, just no. the major, though. What, what was different? Um, well, I lost thirteen six or thirteen seven. Yeah, I think uh, from six five, I I couldn't do anything anymore. Yeah. he played perfect from from then on. He made good decisions. He made every ball, and uh, he just crushed me from there. Right. 
so there is no need to be really upset and in the end i was kind of uh happy for him yeah. because i think he was really struggling a lot to winning this this title it's something that eluded and, his career for a long and time i don't know if you remember because actually when i uh, remember when i was sitting in a chair 12 6 or something and there was the Moscone Cup 2021, or was it 20? No, I think 2020. And Emily asked me, uh, "What's missing in Team USA?" Yeah. And I said, "A world champion." <laughs> <I remember. laughs> At the Moscone Cup press just conference. The, just the dig, yeah. And I then like I that, was man. like, "Talk a little trash." Talk a little and smart. then I was like, "How big is the chance?" That I say that, and then I'm in the final against an American. I never realized that though. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So sports, sports kind of weird like that though. So, I think he played good in the whole tournament. I th he could have lost already to Imonen. Yeah, he was or, down or like probably nine, should nine have lost. One, yeah, I think. Um, he came back against Ko, I believe. Um, so no, in the end, I was sitting in a chair and thought, all right, it's not going well for me, you know. Yeah. Um, he was playing better. So it's it's fair, fair to lose. So that's that's, that's the, that was totally right. So the Jason match maybe just no because the, the ups and downs of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. think I made less errors than he did. Yeah. I was just I think I scratched three times on the break off another ball, and the last one was just freaking incredible, really. Um, and. Uh, so yeah, that that hurt a lot. Um, afterwards, I was looking back on a successful tournament. I, I was proud about my achievement and the way I played. Yeah. That I was finally back in my A game, you know, feeling confidence and everything. But still, and it wasn't just that you you know got to a final in Hanoi. I mean, let's be honest, that probably solidified your Moscone Cup spot. Getting in that. In yeah. That no, definitely. Final. I think otherwise. I don't think I would have made the team. I don't think you would have either, man. Um, I mean, I, I should have lost to Shane in the last 16 or something. Scratching where the he side if he comes out like two rails or something, something kind of fluky. Yeah, that was like to go on the hill, but even before he missed already one or, or two shots yeah. uh, that brought me back into the game. But yeah, it was it, it was a long tournament. It, w it was a good tournament. And uh, to play in front of the people was something, something very special. And of course, yeah, then ended up with me being on, on uh, Team Europe. Um, to have probably <laughs> the unexpected easiest Moscone Cup win ever. Did you think it would be like the way that it was, or you expected it to be? I said to Fran after day, was it day two, day three, if someone would have told me. After two days, you would be up. What was the score? It wasn't competitive. I was like, no freaking way we're up by like yeah. seven or eight points. I mean, no freaking way. But um, yeah, it's crazy. Do you think, what, what What would you, just given your Moscone Cup experience, what would you think is the biggest reason? Because you know what it's like for chemistry. Why, why did it happen? Yeah. Well, I don't want to say Fedor. Um, it, it, it was so much for Fedor. Yeah. I mean, a lot on the shoulders. You mean? Yeah. I mean, there was so much pressure. Um, I, I thought, actually, before the tournament started, all, all right, he might be able to swallow it down. But then when I saw him playing, it's a different animal, though. Yeah. I mean, he's a great player. Yeah. Top three player yeah. in the world easily, but. You know, and I've heard from everyone else who I've talked to that's been in that stage, it's a whole different ball game when you're out there. The no, of course. I mean, you're representing a different continent all of a sudden. Um, you play in London. Honestly, if, if they would have played in Vegas, in? if they would have played in Vegas, I think it could have been a different story. But obviously, two, two and a half thousand people against him. Um, call him Snake and whatever. Obviously, Jason with his uh, well, Jason's just good at little that, things. You know, yeah, yeah. He he just wanted to get under his skin, yeah. you know. Um, but that that's a Moscone Cup, you know. For that, sure. that, that's once once every year. And uh, but yeah, I, I don't judge Federer for doing mistakes and everything. It was so much for him to take. And uh, but um, awesome. And you guys got. You guys got a strong team of monsters, but you bring up Manila 
I talked with Emily before. We played on Moscone Cup many, many times. Um, Reyes Cup. You're gonna get. You're gonna get. A, uh, if you're on that team, you're gonna get a chance to play against five strong Asian players, probably Taiwanese, Filipino, and and mm. you know Asian players. You know, have you given it any thought? And how much more does that inspire you or motivate you to make that European team to face that that a first year inaugural? Um, Honestly, I think it was about time that yeah. they. Yeah, of course. I mean, everyone was was looking forward to that uh, i mean they could probably do even more teams than europe can yeah do. yeah so uh, no it's it's something that should have happened already probably five years ago um but um, no i'm really looking forward to it it's hard to even imagine who could be in the team um pff, hard to say i mean i would definitely pick carlo and probably cannot even say if it's both co-brothers because you More got so many Filipinos, so. I don't yeah. know what about Vu. Yeah. Um. So it's it's hard, really, really hard. Also depends probably where it is about wild cards. If it's in Vietnam, you probably know. have to. I think it's got to be in in the Philippines. You know, first yeah. year, first year Reyes Cup. Yeah. You know, it being anywhere other than the Philippines, I think would be a little bit sacrilegious for me. But yeah. I'd love. To, I want to see the the competitiveness. You know, I want to see. I, like, look. Americans, it was great on paper. I think they they can still give you guys a run for your money, but not like the Asian players can. No, you know, but it's a whole different game because then you bring up chemistry because they got five individual great players, but all of you guys have been through battles together in the trenches. Mm -hmm. And as Vitaly makes a great shot on the one and the two ball, looks like he's in good shape here to run out this last game. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to it, man. I don't know when the dates, if when they're gonna get announced, but I'm hoping. At some point in the next few months, we'll we'll get some more news on it. Yeah, it would be awesome if they just say that the winner of Moscone Cup plays <laughs> the the Reyes Cup. Well, that's what I thought originally. Yeah, uh, actually, that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. But I uh, haven't heard anything since. So as as it gets further along in the year, then it makes me think that won't be the case. Mm. Only because. You know, then it's like, okay, well, they won six months ago or whatever, you know? So bringing back that same team, but then it's like, you know, how are you guys going to get there? And that's why it makes, you know, playing and ranking events that much more crucial. And even a guy like you who's won, who's very decorated, you know, you're still going out there and, and making sure that you're stamp your stamping your name on there based off of uh, performances and not just your legacy, you know? Four balls away for a chance to get to the final four at this year's U.S. Open 10-ball championship. Again, you guys can check out uh, digitalpool.com, search U.S. Open 10-ball for the live score, and hit that little thick. Um, we're going to continue to go live. I think the next match is going to be Vitaly versus Daniel Maciel then, right? So that'll be on the TV table. Um yeah, and the winner of that match faces Levin. Levin, yeah. Give me a prediction on the Masial Basura match. I would say it's 50 50, honestly. Um, I think. Pff, Something I you bet on, Alvin. I oh, know they play I, on the TV table. Yeah. All right. That's a different story. Why do you say that? I because I say because, the same because thing it's all new time. new cloth. Yeah. Um. I think. That's it. I think Daniel nine seven. You heard it here. All right, we're gonna let you go. You heard it here first. There you go, Alvin. <laughs> we're gonna bet dinner on it. All right. Yeah. Uh, good take, luck. Take care, guys. See ya. I'm gonna stop by the the little boys' room real quick, but I I saw a super chat in there. Yeah. Someone was asking something about how they're a left-handed person. Well, let me read. Yeah. Go ahead. Albin, I need a favor. I'm your biggest fan, but I shoot left, left-handed. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming it just means left-handed. Can we get Predator to make that happen? Good luck this year, my guy. I don't know if that means a left-handed glove or a left-handed branded glove. Oh, or yeah, I got many messages about uh, the glove that came out that they didn't <laughs> bring in any gloves out for left-handed players. Oh. Um, I will definitely talk uh, to Predator about it, about yeah. that issue and... Uh, they have left-handed gloves in general, right? Oh, of course, of yeah. course they have. Okay. 
Um, but yeah, I will. I will take care of it. Okay. I need one of your gloves too, by the way, buddy. So yeah. Make, yeah. Make it happen. I'll be back. <laughs> no in, problem. In literally, let's stick them on the overhead real quick. Yeah, yeah. I'll be back in like make two minutes. <sighs> right here. Back in a flash, guys. Alrighty, guys, it looks like we're going to have Vitaly Patsura versus Daniel Masyal. Have they lagged yet? No. Vitaly just coming to the table. You guys get a look at my little cable right there. Ooh, pictures. Picture time. All right. Mike, the man, Melina Mike. Okay, let's get the scoreboard right. Daniel Masyal. Let me confirm that. This is for fourth place. For fourth place. And a shot to play Lee Van Corteza in the semifinal. Guys, keep in mind as we get towards the end of this tournament. The final will be streamed exclusively on Griff's TV from Griff's Bar and Billiards. Pardon me. The... Uh, Link should be in the video description below the video. Yes, it is. So make sure you go subscribe so it's easy for you to find. Score going to change. All right. <clears throat> While Daniel's getting warmed up, I'd like to go over to our other overlay here. Show off the Cosmic Crunchies. Shout out to Laura Bird for sending these to the to the stream. But uh, And also give a shout out to the sponsors. Fast and Loose Designs, Chris Santana, thank you so much for all the stellar, beautiful promotional material for the events. Um, Taum of Taum Chalk, Taum Tips. Town Gloves and Town, now the Town Max Rack template. The folks here, the, the guys playing, seem to like the rack a lot. So we're using that in the 10-ball the tournament and the 8-ball tournament. They've got a different one for the 8-ball. Uh, Diamond Billiard Products, thank you for being so good to the industry for so long. Uh, one PKT. And uh, Premier Billiards, Premier Billiards, the sponsor of the All Around. Uh, if you need anything billiard equipment wise, go check them out. And uh, Michelle Griffin, realtor, thank you for the the support. If you have any questions or, or need any help with some real estate uh, transactions, check her out online. Check her out. Check out her Facebook. 
Chuck or a follow. And then, uh, of course, our title sponsor, Q-Tech, a Goliath of the industry. You know, really one of the one of the standards in, in production Q making. Thank you so much for the support for the event. And, of course, Griff's Bar and Billiards for putting on such a fantastic event with incredible, incredible equipment. What's going on, chat? What is going on? Could you get some player in your booth? Possibly. Probably. Probably for the final. Don't want to keep them, too, uh, keep them all too locked up or put too much pressure on them. But if somebody's willing and able, that'll happen. Collins, give me a scoop on these Cosmic Crunchies. These are freeze-dried Skittles. Freeze-dried Skittles. I'm only going to do this once. I'm not going to make it nasty. But they're crunchy. Really good. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. And I'm not watching the pool. If you guys are reacting to Daniel warming up, I'm not even watching. <laughs> Get Shane in the booth. He's got a long time to wait. I'm pretty sure Shane Van Boning hates microphones. <clears throat> uh, the booth is a little snug, John Ames. We can only get one guy in here really comfortably. I'm pretty sure Vitaly Patsura is taking a little break, guys. Daniel's going to stay loose. Hunt him down. Which camera? That one. What's Mike doing on his phone? When is the finals? Probably, uh, we got two more matches before the finals. Two more races to nine. I'd say on average they take about an hour and a half apiece. So maybe three hours? Three to four hours, I'd say. Start maybe 9 or 10 p.m. Pacific. Trail, you want to see some Zoom? I'll show you some Zoom. Oh, that's it? I guess that's all I got. Beautiful room here at Griff's. Billy in the booth would be fun. He's an outgoing guy. Not afraid to say what's on his mind. <laughs> uh, 
I believe they've got uh, 12, 12 9 foot diamonds and somewhere between 12 and 16 7 foot diamonds here at Griff's. <clears throat> Buy Billy a couple shots before he gets in the booth. Hey, if anybody in the chat actually knows him, you ask him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. I just feel feel a little uh, like I don't want to impose. You know what I mean? Is Sky confirmed for eight ball tomorrow? As far as I know, he's playing. How does someone get into covering events like this? How many cameras are you running? I've got six PTZs here. I've got seven overall. One backup. Uh, <clears throat> Honestly, if you like pool, just start trying. You know what I mean? And then every time you go live, just make it a little better. Learn something about Photoshop. Learn something, learn something about vi video editing. Learn something about how OBS works every time you go live. And eventually you just get to the point where it's like a second language. And uh, if you get lucky enough, um, you might get to do it while watching some pros play. I've been just beyond lucky <laughs> in the people that I've met and and uh, in doing this. I mean, huge shout out to Oscar Dominguez. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be in this position. Not even close. Shout out to Melina Mike for getting me in touch with Brandon Birch. You know, do you even shoot, bruh? I'm like a circa 600 Fargo. Uh, over the last year, my Fargo has been as high as 612, as low as right now it's 589. But I haven't owned cues for the last three months because I've been focusing on uh, improving the stream and, and trying to get better at my craft. Well, it's not my craft. It's my craft on the side. <laughs> I do windows and siding, but hopefully, um, hopefully I just keep getting better at this. I believe this is a practice break from Vitaly Patsura. Just a practice break. Where to watch the Shane final? It's in the the link is in the video description. Just search Griff, sorry, Griff's TV on YouTube. It's the only place to watch it. So make sure you're subscribed so it's easy for you to find. I don't own cues currently. No, I got rid of them because I know myself. Guys, for a year I would come down to hard times thinking I was going to work on something, and then I'd just end up hitting balls for three or four hours. The game's too addictive. Hey. Yo. Got your buddy. Oh, who do we got? Come on. Uh, hey. Who's this? This, this is... Oh, it's so hot here. This is... Yeah, get the jacket off. You're going to want to lose the extra layer underneath, too. Yeah, I'm good. Victor Zelinski. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're an interesting character for me because I only started following pool closely after I started streaming. Pardon me, I'll stop chewing and then I'll finish talking, but... Um, you were the guy that... I think it was what, like two or three years ago, you just kind of exploded onto the scene, right? You started having some good results. Oh yeah, after the COVID breakdown. Oh, yeah. yeah, pull this in, by the way. It's got to be nice and close for it to have a nice warm sound. Okay. So get nice and close, yeah. Yeah, the COVID shutdown. Tell me about your experience with uh, with your first few big wins. Oof. Tell me about it. It was like unexpected, you know. Uh, I just changed my way of like, you know, training system. Yeah. Throughout the COVID, I mean, I practice much more alone than yeah. playing with friends or some guys. Yeah. So I learned really, really a lot that time, and I think it helped me to understand some games, tactics, and things like this. And so, so how old are you now? You're twenty three. Twenty three. Okay. So you're Feder's age, and you've known him for a while now, uh, right? I think Feder is a year older than me. I think he's, it says, um, I, I don't know his birthday, but anyway. Yeah, he is 2009, 2001. Yeah, yeah. But so I, I already turned 23 this year, but anyway, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. We, but we've known each other for a long, long time, like since juniors. Yeah. We played a lot. Uh, 
uh, at European Championships Youth, I mean. Yeah. A uh, couple of years ago. Yeah, so. Yeah, because I remember hearing from him because I, I met him for the first time a couple years ago uh, and we were talking and uh, you at the time had had a really good year the year before, I think it was. And he said that he like totally saw it coming. And so you're saying that you're saying that even through all the times that you played together as juniors and, and were exposed to those other good players when you were younger, it still took you that little extra drive. Is that what you're saying? It took you that little extra different type of practice to break through. Is that what you're saying? I mean, maybe I become more mature, let's say, when it comes uh -huh. to training, because it was like when I was a kid, I mean, still a kid, still young, but uh, I was just playing pool. Yeah. I didn't really want to practice that much. Yeah, it was tough for me. I just wanted, like you know, come to the club, uh, find someone and play some games. Like yeah. you know, some small stakes. But sure. But you know, there there wasn't much time then to practice for me, and I think yeah. practicing it's also important. So that's what helped me. Now I spent almost all the time. Uh, alone practicing yeah maybe sometimes like playing some top pro polish guys yeah but i'm mainly focused on practicing alone right now yeah because i think that helps me the most okay how long have you so so poland is uh is fairly large right isn't it yeah it's one of the biggest i think it's maybe in top 10 yeah, biggest countries in, in, in Europe. Europe right so it is geographically speaking like you know compared to the other guys that you know that we all know like you know Miesko and and you know Daniel Masial now are these guys that you see regularly at home like when you were oh no but you know we are half year playing tournaments yeah. so we see each other all the time yeah in all the time okay. but yeah we are like spread it like in all parts of the Poland yeah uh, so I'm living in the Poznań it's the same city as Mateusz also lives uh -huh. uh, Babica Rodosov then you have uh, Wrocław where Konrad and Mieszko uh -huh. are living and capital Warsaw Wojciech is living uh -huh. so we are all like in different cities but yeah 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 quite spread out yeah interesting very interesting um, so yeah, you just started traveling. You started doing the whole circuit, yeah, two to three years ago. Now, how are you enjoying it? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, sometimes it's really exhausting, uh, but I really love playing pool. Yeah, and I just love what I'm doing, and every time when there is a big tournament, I just want to go there and play. Yeah, and see what's gonna happen. Try yeah. to win it. You know, yeah. that's myself. I just love competing. This is a close one. I think the one ball got it. Yeah, probably the one ball. Yeah. Yeah, so just so you know, Victor, uh, this the way that I stream, we basically, I don't say, how do you say it? I want to say it like, uh, we do whatever we want. <laughs> okay. So there's no pressure for you to, to only talk about specific shots, but then at the same time, if we're at some point interacting with the chat and some situation comes up that you'd rather talk about because you find it interesting what's happening on the table, we jump right into that too. So it's like, it's very free form, treated more like an interactive podcast with the chat, you know, and, okay, and, and also whatever curiosities you have too. So, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pick your brain a little bit for sure. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. I've been absolutely like thrilled to follow you as a player like for the last like year and a half as I've been getting more into following the game on a deeper level you know good. like following the pro circuit you know good to hear that thank you yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh the way you play is very entertaining to me you're you're uh it's you know filler-esque right you're like very good at the the shot making and you're very uh, loose on the ball and, and you make decisions quickly and it doesn't seem to affect your execution and stuff and it's like it's so impressive to watch yeah I always was like you know fast player yeah but I think I slowed down a bit 
So you slowed down a bit now. Yeah, a bit. Like you know, sometimes okay. I take more time for some kind of shots, like you know, to just to avoid some stupid mistakes. Sure, sure. Or oversight, or or possibly ignoring another potential. Yeah, because sometimes you get some tricky situations where it's yeah. better to think ten more seconds. Right. Uh, take your time and make sure that you made the right decision. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So Vitaly's been having a heck of a quarter this year. Like the last two, three months, he's been like yeah. going deep in these super tough fields. Yeah, both of the players, I think, actually are in quite good shape. Daniel recently won the Euro Tour. Right. So uh, interesting matchup coming up, I think. Uh, I'm, saying, I'm, rooting, I'm rooting for Daniel. <laughs> yeah, obviously. I know he's not wearing yeah, but he's he's not wearing red and white right now, but he's your uh, he's your boy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think it's gonna be a really close match. Okay. My predictions nine seven for Daniel. Okay. So what we got? I think Vitaly misjudged the safety, but yeah, I don't think he was intending to make the nine ball, so I'm yeah, assuming he probably was probably trying to trying uh, to send the one ball in this direction instead of straight down this way or something like that, or no, maybe maybe off of the other. To ball. miss the nine, the cue ball was good, but he uh, yeah hit the nine. But still, like could be worse for him. Trying to stop the rock, maybe. As he the rail first and stop the rock. Oh, that's a great shot. Yeah. Little overcooked. Little overcooked. Uh, let's see if Daniel can see the right part of the one ball. Uh, that's right. The finals is a single race to 13, guys. Single race to 13. And I've been watching so much pool lately. It's it's tough for me to keep track of all the matches that that I've been, uh, you know, aware of and, and how everybody did in the tournaments. But but how was you played in both of the tournaments at the the Predator event, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, how did you uh, how did you end up faring? Uh, better to forget for me. Better I mean, to like, forget. Don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. It's okay. Uh, I reached last sixteen Vegas Open. Yeah. Lost to Fedor. Uh, didn't play actually that well. Fedor, yeah. okay. Fedor made a couple of nice outs. Lost for zero and for free. Uh, but that's all right. You, you can't win them all. Of Still, course. I got good run in Vegas Open, winning two in a row. Uh, but World Tumble, actually. Oh, that's right. At one point, you were undefeated. Did you see the list? of matches yeah i think someone sent me this that uh, i got straight like 21 matches or 20 something like this <laughs> so absurd. yeah it's, Victor, it's, that, it's that's so quite absurd. good <laughs> play good run good yeah. knock off their heads man yeah and then war temple i think like there was something wrong with my tape from the very first match with capito but then after the second match what, what do you mean wrong with your I mean, the sound was weird. I made like a couple of sick mistakes where I couldn't find, like you know, the reason yeah. making them. And then after a match with, uh, are you thinking that you're, it's just like some type of uh, alignment thing or like some type of mental overlook? I something? don't know. I mean, like I've never really cared that much about tip and things like this because never got problems with tip. Right. So after the match with uh, Tyler, Conrad, and Mieszko uh came to me and they told me that check your tip because the sound is really weird yeah uh so i just looked into my tip and there was some problems with the layers wow so yeah and then i went to q repair booth and one guy told me that the layers were separating yeah 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 so i had to change right tip uh, and you think with the new tip it was just kind of I mean, I started playing bear with, with Mustafa like until free run in the second set, which I was leading. Uh. It was everything going all right, but then I missed the eight and the following crack. 
I got miscue on match ball, yeah. and it was a big turn around. Yeah, and lost in the end that match, but couldn't regroup my mind after this. Right, because like you know, it's not easy when you got three easy balls. Like you know, just make one draw shot and you're miscuing the kibble. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, so brutal. brutal. Uh, yeah, let's come back to the match because right now, interesting. Interesting with the seven ball yeah, being traffic ball. going forward. I and mean, then he can. I think he can play with follow. Try to nudge play. the seven towards the corner. Yeah, yeah, uh, and the cue ball of the seven to the left long rail and coming for the six ball to the left low lower pocket. Yeah, exactly. I like, like so. It. Exactly like this. Look at the angle he got. I mean, he's okay. As long as the cue ball is not frozen to the the rail, to the rail, he can do something. Yeah, he was okay. Yeah. Seems. Vitaly gonna win the track. What I usually say is this rack is over. Right. Is that Josh? No, this is. Does it even look like? Oh, you don't see him anymore. <laughs> it's Victor Zelinsky. <laughs> How does your mother pronounce your name? Victor. Victor, like a hard V. Yeah, yeah, I guess, like, you know. But I know the, the Polish alphabet language is slightly different e phonetically, right? Yeah, it's because we don't have the letter V. Right. And our alphabet, we have W, and we pronounce W as uh, V in states. So. The just the and also the K we pronounce a C here, so yeah, that's why, like, you know, my name the good pronunciation is Victor, not when, like, you know, usually I hear it's Victor, yeah, yeah Victor, yeah, yeah, or yeah, something yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, no, 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 <laughs> but, okay, but I understand it's not like you know, your fault or all Americans, sure, sure. You said the W is pronounced differently based on the situation? No, no. It's always a V sound. It's always a V. So you don't use the W sound at all in the Polish language? Or is it pronounced no, with a different letter? I mean, we don't have... Uh, I mean, we have the special letter. It's similar to... I mean, you write the L with some kind of line. Yeah, okay. It's... Uh, it's the letter W here. Gotcha. We, get, we get like good stuff to explain gotcha. it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it the makes Polish yeah, 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 alphabet yeah. and pronunciation. No, no, no. I'm just curious. Sometimes I just go, when I can't I show you the letter right here. <laughs> I can see it kind of. I think with the way you were describing it, but yeah, it's uh, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> no, don't even start to ask about the other guys' names that have like 30 consonants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Americans get fascinated by that obviously oh yeah someone yeah. Uh, wrote in the comment like which yeah it's exactly this uh, this letter which I was telling you about yep. a couple seconds before it's like this L with this line line through it yeah it's good break by Daniel yeah when Daniel breaks like that and the, the r layout is like this, especially because he's been practicing on this table for the last 10 to 20 minutes or so. Yeah, I he's saw. He's got a rhythm. Yeah, yeah, I saw his break with uh, Josh. He was breaking really, really soft, just trying to draw the cue ball. Yeah. Uh, but it works pretty well, and then, like, layouts are usually quite easy. Yeah. No clusters, nothing. Getting a decent spread, trying yeah. to control the speed on the one ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now people are talking about Conrad's la last name. Look at that. Look how they spelled it. <laughs> it's <all> nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. It's 
Konrad Justusen. Justusen. Justusen, yeah. yeah. Yeah, always people got crazy with his surname. Yeah. Get problems how to pronounce it, but you know, it's funny. Polish language is so funny with all these kind of words when you have a lot of like C, Z. Mm -hmm. It's really tough to pronounce it for foreigners. Yeah. So, does this mean that the loser of this match in finishes in fourth, fourth place and the loser of the Levan match finishes in third place? Correct. Ergo, loser of SVB match finishes runner up. Correct. Oh. That's the final. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, the, the cloth on the bed of this table was replaced <coughs> this morning, actually. Oh, really? So there was a. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually missed it, ball. Yeah. There's some damage to the cloth, so this is brand, brand, brand new. Balls like that don't typically tend to go unworn in cloth. 1-1, one, one, good break and run, good break and run by Daniel. Just doing some good work. How do you say Ma Ma How do you say his last name? Macho. 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 Because also, it's uh, instead of L, you got this W. Our Paul, your American W gotcha. letter, because macho. Yeah, it's macho. It's almost like macho. The yeah. word macho, like a macho man. Yeah. <laughs> the same, but not. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you know, just Paul, Polish special letter. I also got one in my surname. Actually, it's like special N. Yeah. You, you got just also the line above the N. It's like Zieliński, it's like more like soft N in Polish. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, it's not that big difference in pronunciation. Sure, sure, sure. Look at this break. Yeah. An unlucky kiss on the one becomes a lucky kiss on the one. Is it going to tie up with the seven? Oh. No tie I up on the seven, but the three balls on the other side of the table kind of covered yeah, by the nine and ten. Yeah, he's okay with one, but really tough layout. I mean... And the four doesn't pass the eight into the yeah, top yeah, right. Yeah, that's the problem. I think, but there might be a combination to the side pocket three mm. ten. I'm not sure, but looks oh, like close. Oh, looks pretty juicy to me. Even if it doesn't go, look at the gap between the three and the ten. Might just be enough. Yeah, that might be the best decision. Playing a draw, long, long, short rail. It's a pretty sizable gap, actually, too. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's, it's all right. you've got options. It's not easy to make position for the free ball to the bottom right. Yeah, bottom right. But this is pretty natural if, if you slug it. He didn't uh, slug it. Uh, I thought he would have hit it a little harder than that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think he played for the combination. I think he's on the bad side of it though, because the ten three, the three ten is, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, already pointed about like right here, maybe here. No, he can't play from from below the ball. I don't think it goes. Well, probably he would try right now to play free ball into the nine and try to hide the cue ball behind the ten. I don't know if it's on, but seems yeah. it's like. Oh, actually, yeah, look. There's plenty of room between the ten, the 3 and the 10 to, to play the 3 off the 9 and cinch him behind the 10, I think. Yeah, yeah but it's still tricky. Yes, 5 ball, it's on the way, I think, when... When trying to clear it out. Yeah. He's calling it in the side in case it goes off the 9 in the side, I believe. Is he going... No, oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, just... He's like checking the, ta the tangent line. Also, I don't know. He can play... Stop the free ball on the ten ball and try to go the cue ball on the upside table. Look at this. Oh. He called the pocket. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, easy kick, but not going to be getting any type of reward for it. Yeah, probably just roll the cue ball, then maybe play the carom. Or 
with the eight ball. Yeah, for the carom to lay good though, I think you need to be coming almost out here, right? I'm not sure. So this would be a pretty not not a slow roll here, if he does intend to play the carom. Uh, he gonna play it down. Just trying to create an opportunity. I kind of yeah. like that actually. Yeah, yeah, great shot. Because you're kind of gambling either way, you know. Yeah. And yeah. he got down for the combo. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he landed perfect with the cue ball. I think. Yeah. For this combination, yeah. God, he just hits it like it's a hanger. Sorry, someone. Someone who's a fan of the stream, or like a friend of the stream, just called me. <laughs> and I'm live in front of 6,000 people. It's like, why, why, wait, why are you calling me? That's so funny. Come on, guys. <clears throat> Ooh, baby. Oh. Does he get past the seven or get buried right up on it? Oof. Oh, he's okay. Little jelly roll. Yeah, he went for easier putt, but tougher. Speed control? Uh, yeah, tougher speed control. I mean, like, probably I would play this to the corner pocket because then it's just the pot. You yeah. don't have to care about the cue ball. It's just, he's alright. Oh. Ooh, baby. So Vitaly with a chance, good chance to make it to one for him. Dogging it, Dom nice comes in. <laughs> Wrong guy. Wrong guy. Molina Mike is not <laughs> in here. <laughs> it is so interesting to be so like I've mentioned a few times already, I before I started streaming two and a half years ago, I didn't follow pool extremely closely. Like I followed a few of the majors. Yeah. And I didn't watch like I watched a couple of the matches for each of the majors, you know? But since I started streaming, I've been following a lot more closely. And this is in Vitali's case, pardon me. <clears throat> in Vitali's case, this is the first time that I've been watching almost all the matches in almost all the majors and watching the guy that's kind of having a breakout moment, you know? Yeah, maybe. I think he improved a lot. Like Compared uh, to... Compared, like, you know, to the time before the COVID. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, even different player. Never, even and if he never gets there and or, or, you know, even for a couple years doesn't get there and, like, actually snap off a few really big tournaments. Just the fact that he's showing the grit and heart and getting to... You know the final three, the final four of these these uh, big tournaments with, with tough fields. Yeah, yeah. Really good work by him. I mean, incredible year so far. I think he finished fourth or top three, and I think it was third derby. in the nine ball in the derby. Yeah, I think that's what uh, Filler said. Yeah, I mean Fetter, sorry. Yeah, he won the Texas Open, skinny bubs. Yep. Right. And right. the mini derby. Right? Didn't he get the mini derby? I know it's not as big of a tournament. There were still some uh, solid uh, names. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, yeah. Didn't follow that one actually. Oh. And also here making pretty good run. Up two to zero. I mean two to one. Pardon me. If I could count yeah. and read numbers. That is a good looking break. The one ball went nowhere though. That was kind of odd. Did he put a bunch of draw on the cue ball? Yeah, yeah, because the more draw you put into the cue ball. The more follow it puts on the one ball, right? Yeah, yeah, so that's why the cue ball is barely moves from the rack. 
and it's all good if the cubo like you know comes to the middle of the table it's quite all right but many times it can happen like this that some of the balls will kick the cue ball and the cue ball will stay somewhere up table so not shot on the one not easy safety oh look what he's doing he's playing the one off of the four yeah and leaving the cue ball behind the three not easy one actually Played it well. Here's that break we were just talking about, guys. See how the cue ball draws away, the one ball slowly comes off the rack. Look how symmetrical that break is. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as long as it works, it's really a uh, good weapon, but one or two breaks uh, can, let's say, uh, you can lose your confidence sure. with this break, yeah. and then everything can start going that way. But yeah, it seems like Daniel is really good at in the soft break. With Filler, I heard that he made five break and run outs. I heard that Filler got a few kisses as well. Yeah, also that. Like three different breaks, getting kisses and scratches and... Look at this. Oh. Little hard, little thin. No stop on the six ball. Is he going to get behind the eight? E Yikes. I think he can see the one. Played the cue ball behind the nine and ten. Yeah, it looks like it from here. It's really nice kick by Vitali. He swerved it a little to try to slow it down. He swerved it a little to get more, uh, take more of the juice out of the cue ball yeah. and send the one. That was an interesting, that was that was a good shot. Yeah, yeah. Wow, and all the easy escape options are, are uh, covered. I think he can play two rails, the cue ball close to the, the cue ball close to the two ball, short rail, long rail, exactly this line. Try to hit it left side of the one ball. There is quite good chances that he can hide the cue ball behind 9, 10, maybe 3 ball, exactly like this. Also if he hits it full, he can hide the 1 ball behind the 4 or 10. got full access to the one ball yeah I don't know if it passes to the, the, the five ball to the corner pocket oh boy this is tough yeah it seems like he has to play it to the side pocket <coughs> it is so tough to yes, hit this. Soft, it's really soft. Yeah. And try to get the cue ball to kill a little bit off the short rail. Yeah. Came out Played a little uh, fortunate there, I think, but but really, really nice. Uh, no, he speed. actually wanted to. He wanted to hit the two. Yeah. So there was no option, I think, to miss the two ball. <coughs> Interesting what he's gonna play right now. Just try to kill the cue ball. Almost found the window. Yeah, quite unlucky with this hit. <coughs> you 
No, that shot is used so commonly amongst pros where you just thin the ball to leave it there and then yeah. just send the cue ball yeah, cause with distance behind other balls. I mean, I would also play probably the same way because if you hide the cue ball behind the 9 and 10, he can't play he can't play the jump shot and you know these days most of the players are really good with the jump shots right so always you just try to search for the options to not leave the jump shot and here also playing two rails could be a little bit tricky because with free ball is close to the side pocket i think anyway he's, he can see the free ball Play two rails, put it somewhere near the six ball. Okay, yeah. Nice shot. Pogo stick. <laughs> I like the pogo stick here. And he calls the bank in the corner. Nothing wrong with hitting this a little bit uh, thin, actually. Oh my god, Dominic wants to bet on Daniel. That's not a good sign. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, snap. Yeah, I was going to say, there's nothing wrong with hitting this a little thinner and, and just sending it this way. You know, if you even get in between there a little bit and run into the eight, you know, the three's yeah. like drifted down this way. A lot of good things can happen. Yeah. Still, it's quite all right. He hit it well. Not easy shot. <laughs> Look at Dom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because it was so funny, because after the match with Aloysius, mm -hmm. I just found the post on his group that he wanted to bet on the app and then everything was funny because I won the 9-1 and like mm -hmm. you know it's Dominic curse <laughs> <laughs> I bet on you and your tip broke <laughs> no, that's what I'm telling everything is going bad way when Dominic bets on you <laughs> If only. <laughs> if only. I got a feeling that Dominic plays it up a little bit more than than reality, so he can keep getting the good bets. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's good. Good, <laughs> good. Dom, your your cameras are coming. <laughs> Your cameras are coming. I'll send out your cameras in the morning. I should have time tomorrow. So Vitaly missed the free ball. Left Daniel a good chance to finish this one. Do you ever, play this? Do you ever play this off the 8 to get the 8 out of that position? Or you just no, don't, no, you no. just don't care? No, no. I mean, the 8 was, I think, too far mm. from the side pocket. Whenever the uh, one of the balls late in the rack for me, because I know my limitations. <laughs> Whenever it's sitting in that spot, I just like. Yeah, I mean, like I also always try to uh, try to move out the ball, which is like close to the mm -hmm. side to pocket. The point. Yeah, and you cannot make it to the side. Yeah, because it's a really awful position to play yeah. this ball. Because you, when you usually go for this ball, it's really easy to throw it into the point or yeah to, to, to the jaw of the side pocket miss yeah. it right there got a nice healthy angle here to draw the cue ball out two rails uh, the eight ball is actually a lot further to this side of the pocket than I thought it was you yeah can, you can access this rail and this point with the cue ball if yeah you there's no chance of scratching the cue ball yeah it's possible to get a funny bounce off the point that might come this way but no, I got no, a no. feeling he's gonna get straight enough that that's not gonna be a problem it's all right. Perfect position. Yeah. What? Oh, you played it with follow. 
He played it with follow. Did you see how it bounced off the point and wanted to come this way? And then he like... You know, it's it? always tricky with this... Uh, and the point of the jaw of the yeah. side pocket. It's tough to predict what exactly is going to happen with the cue ball. Right. But I here, think he did a great job with it. I think he just like... But it was okay because the nine ball was in position where he didn't have yeah. to care about the cue ball that much. Just focus on making the eight. Do they have a senior tour for pool? Uh, check back in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a really weird interact or cool, interesting interaction with the realm. I'm actually going to watch it back in slow motion. did that on purpose yeah maybe he will he wanted to make sure that the the cue ball will go up table just to just guarantee that there's no issues with uh, the, the like nine. clearing the rail you know and yeah and, yeah because yeah. he can if he played like you know with the stun then maybe he would have not a nice angle on the nine yeah so 2-2, two, two. Vitaly about to break. Good hit. A bit unfortunate. With the eight ball. Yeah, I can't <coughs> get to the one. What about the jump bake on the one? Don't be scared. Well, no, it's too risky. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta live a little. I'm just kidding. Not in the, uh, not yeah. in the final four of a U.S. Open title. Same shot. What's next for you guys? Are you guys doing all the, the WNT stuff, or are you guys... Uh, are you going to Boston, or are you guys just taking off after Vegas? Or? I'm just going to the Boston. Um, Daniel and Shimon Kual uh, going back to the Poland. Mm -hmm. Mateusz Wyszynowski already is on his way to the home. Mm -hmm. uh, because they didn't know what would be the outcome if they play uh the wnt events with all these bands and like, you know it's still a bit tricky and we all don't know what will be mm. in the future with all these bands yeah so daniel and shimon and mateus didn't sign with metrum so this right they couldn't sign up for this one because otherwise they can be banned from playing wpa events oh wow look at this nice little uh Nice little hit here. With yeah. No love. There's no love. There's not really much of an escape here either. I think you can play. How about this? Wait, let me guess. Let me guess. This is a silly shot. Thin the two, just thin enough where the cue ball comes this way. No, no, no. I got different. What do you got? Uh, two ball to the short rail and try to send it like to the middle of the short ray on the upside table and the cue ball behind the 10 or 7 ball of the long rail. So just follow the cue ball? No, 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 no. Just the side of the 8? No. no, no, no. I meant just to play it from the left side, the, the 2 ball. Yeah, I mean follow off of the left side yeah, of the 2 yeah, ball with the cue exactly ball down like here. Yeah, exactly like this. But there was a chance of double kiss. And then the 2 ball goes up this way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little two ten combo here, maybe. Can he get enough of the two ball? Yeah, I think it's on. He should go for it. It's like kind of a two way shot. 
if he misses he can still put the kill wall behind the 8 I think he needs to... Did Wojciech, Wojciech sign with the WNT? Uh, no. 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 <coughs> the Dun curse is alive and well. Dumb, it's tied, and he got one little jelly roll here with the 10. <laughs> Relax. Did you do anything fun out here in Vegas? Anything uh, outside of pool, or were you just all business? Not really. There was... Um, maybe spend a few time in the casino, but yeah. just to have fun, but... Not anything else. There is not so much to do in Vegas, to be honest. Just about playing pool. And that's it for me. There's not that much to do in Vegas, guys. I mean, when you're a professional <laughs> pool player. You sure, know. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get you. <coughs> yeah, so same problem this. again. The cubo got kicked by some balls. And the one ball didn't move much. Yeah. I think he cannot make the one ball. <laughs> Again, it's not easy. No. Nope. Not easy. see Brandon Birch finally got a rail over here to keep the guys on their uh, their motor scooters out of the <laughs> arena. Yeah, I saw the post yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so glad I caught that, like, framed up on, on stream. That was an uh, interesting moment. Apparently, someone in the chat earlier said that the same guy did the same thing at the predator event said that really? some said that they're claiming that the same guy tried to go up to the what a shot here oh yeah it's... what a creative shot that was yeah I mean, nice vision by daniel yeah a bit unlucky to be honest it was really close yeah to make a really great safety um but yeah, they said that he even tried to wheel into the Predator Arena, like got up to the, to the side of it when somebody stopped him. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I've heard it. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised after what we saw. Is Beato in the final today? No. No, it's uh, Shane Van Boning waiting for the winner of this match to play Lee Van Corteza, and the winner of that match plays Shane. Yeah, this isn't going to... Seems like luck. Maybe a little luck here, yeah. Wave of the hand. I don't know what he was trying to do. Make the one of the tubo. Some kind of Ben Karam shot. Yeah. When will the eight ball draw be posted? Tomorrow. They're doing side pots in all of the events. And so they're waiting until everybody's confirmed if they're in any side pots before the draw. I like this shot. Yeah, good speed. I don't. You were playing the eight ball? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. playing the eight ball and then going. Do you like the game, eight ball? On the tough table, yeah, but these tables are a bit too easy for the sure, sure. because it's a break and run fest. Yeah, like especially with the fest. template, it's yeah. gonna be quite easy to make the ball. I think we'll see tomorrow, but 
with the template it's much more easier to make the mm -hmm. ball than with the wooden rack so I expect a lot of break and runouts tomorrow more variance in the outcome but you say you would like oh he thought he was he was almost certain he was gonna make that ball it looks like um, <clears throat> But you, you say that you would probably enjoy 8-Ball more if it was on a matchrooms type type table like that? I mean, yeah, because with the 8-Ball, you know, there are no tough shots. Mm -hmm. So you don't have usually long pots or whatever, just about controlling the cue ball. And pattern, yeah. pattern selection. Yeah, exactly. And with the template also, when you break, it's a good spread of the balls mm -hmm. after the breaks. And I would I would probably say actually that it's easier to judge the speed that you need to make a good spread, right? Because it's possible to hit them too hard, right? Where the balls start to cluster up again. Yeah, but I think uh, like I'm the fan of the hard breaking and the eight ball because mm -hmm. there you have more chances to make the ball. Mm -hmm. Because in able, that's the most important thing, actually. I mean, every game is really important to make the ball, but in able, if you got the dry break, there will, be all, there, will, there will be always the game for your opponent, right? In Tanbul, you can be sometimes lucky, not leave the one. But they're always going to have the opening shot to control the table. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. A lot of these these matches now that we get towards the end of the tournament with this alternate break format are going the distance yeah yeah it's funny how that happens even if people aren't necessarily doing you know breaking and running right or even holding serve they're not always holding serve either but for some reason <laughs> they still go even almost the whole way most of the matches that we've watched. I mean, you mean uh, with the alternate break, right? Yeah, with alternate break, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, with the template, I think 80% of the guys are uh, breaking really well here. So, when you got the break, you got the choice after the break. Good. You can run out, make some good safety, and you always usually have an advantage. Mm -hmm. So, there is not that much you no know, breaking uh, it's a lot of holds of your break Jackie Tucker asks what time will the 8 ball start tomorrow Collins around the same time that the 10 ball started sometime between 10 and 11 Maybe a player break here? Yeah, I think so. Take a look around the venue. Yeah, I think Daniel took the timeout. Look at this beautiful room. All the artwork on the walls. Yeah, really nice crap. Really love that one. Let's see if we can see the. I don't normally do this. You're going to see a lot of uh, cables, guys. But let's show you guys the bar top, if we can see it. Oh, barely can. Can't see the handles. Nah, too dark. All right. Well, I won't try that again. Just trying to show off the room here. It's a beautiful room. Nice staff. Action table. Tommy Medina getting down. Who's this? Is that Ian Costello still? They're still playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think on this table the pockets are a yes. bit more tight. Just yeah? a hair over four inches. Okay, yes. Table for one pocket, I think. Yes, it's the action table. <laughs> Daniel.
No, 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 Sean. I will not be streaming the event in Boston, no. I would love to stream any any uh, big events if we can, you know, make it make sense for all parties involved. I would love to. I love doing this. It's fun. But I'm sure they've got something organized already, and uh, so do many events. But. Mike says his back hurts. He can't come in. Sit down. He keeps pointing at me. You good? Of course I'm good, man. <laughs> okay. So literally taking some risk of calling the bang shot. I think it lays really good with the way the cloth is playing right now. Yeah. Just stop the rock. I think he's playing with the follow. Yeah, oh, close. Yeah. He used high karate to stop the cue ball there. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. The overspin? Yeah, it was a smart shot. Because the cue ball just tried to stick to the, the rail. To the rail with all the spin. Could try, but seems like he's gonna lose the rack right now if Daniel makes the one. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, Dang Dong asks, is that a money game or a local league? Are you talking about with Tommy Medina? It's probably a local league. He's just playing AP. He's playing his APA match for the week. Okay. <sighs> Interesting shot coming up. I think if he gonna play just the Drew shot, the cue ball is going towards the free. Yeah, it's gonna, it wants to spit off the rail. Yes. Yeah, so because it doesn't really have I time to draw play. before it hits the rail. Did uh, he hit that rail first? No. Oh. What? No, he, he played with a bit like stun draw. Yeah. It still had like a funny interaction. Yeah, because it's like stun draw makes the draw shot, the draw spin a bit delayed. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think you can see the free ball. Oh, that's a nice shot. Yeah. I heard Tommy is a real strong up and coming APA three, maybe a two. Come on. It's an APA one pocket match. <laughs> This temple for the first time lead for Daniel. Now Vitaly says it's my turn. <laughs> my turn to take a break. Shout out to Brandon Birch and Griff's. Getting the, uh, the tablets all set up. Makes the scorekeeping so easy. I think during this break, maybe we'll go uh, for you guys on the chat screen. I wouldn't, w I wouldn't even want to fathom how long an APA one pocket match would take. How do you like the game of one pocket? I mean, since I'm on the fan of like, you know, fast game. Yeah. Sometimes it's kind of boring, but it's, 
in the same time it's interesting because it's like chess and yeah. pool. Yeah. But I don't like watching one pocket and one rack which I can take up to I don't know three one hours, hour, one rack. Three hours sometimes. Oh listen, I I played my first one pocket tournament derby and I played with Vitaly. We played almost four hours. One rack or one set? No, the, one set. Well, yeah, race to three. I won three two, but I was like, I never played that long, one match. <laughs> During that I was like, crazy. Yeah. I uh, ev before I started streaming, I wasn't really much of a fan of the game, but I've watched it a lot. And uh, since since watching it and and also like talking with guys that know the game really well like while i'm live you know it's uh it's so much more interesting and don't get me wrong there's there's plenty of games that i'll be playing and it's like oh great now we get to do this song and dance of like we'll send them all up table we'll fight over the wedge you know it's like yeah, yeah okay great but it's really interesting to me now to like try to pick the game apart in a way where you're like kind of like chess but in chess it's more about finding that key those few key moves where you you like gain positional advantage and then you you make one quick strike you know but in uh in pool it's like the strike is almost like sorry how, how am i going to say this when you set the pieces in place you're setting yourself off up to not just like take the king but you also need to execute four five six seven eight shots in a row you know what i mean yeah and and get all of that set up to where that's even possible and so i find it really interesting almost like you're trying to um you know set up some type of tactical strike on an enemy you yeah know? when it comes to tactics it's like sometimes it's really interesting to see some shots i mean sometimes i can't believe what uh, players like Tony, yeah, uh, Alex, and all top one forget players can like you know play and f some shots which are the for me are like so crazy and I wouldn't even like think about playing some shots in one pocket and they're playing it there so well. Yes. Yeah, so also even beyond that too, the the part of the game that I'm only beginning to understand. There's there's a few guys in my my home room that. Actually, California, Sacramento, it's a hub for one pocket, right? And there's a lot of guys that, that really like the game. And there's a number of them that when I play them, um, and I'm not completely incapable, you know what I mean? Like, I can, I can cue the ball fairly well a decent amount of the time and accomplish what it is that I'm trying to execute at a fairly high percentage, you know what I mean? So it's not like I'm just kind of putzing around the table but like there are games where i'll play against these guys that they're they're three four five moves ahead of me in their mind and it's like i can't even fathom how to even start to try to structure any type of advantage for myself let alone not just sell the game out you know what i mean and that yeah. that type of deep knowledge of the game and like deep understanding of what your opponent is not only capable of but what they're going to try to do and how that's going to hurt you or advantage you you know and then also trying to play the game in a way where yeah but all that works to your advantage i find really interesting yeah but you mentioned that your opponent which is better like knows what to play five mm -hmm. moves ahead uh-huh it's like every game the tempo also we're just sure but i'm yes but yeah. i'm also talking about i'm really talking about like three four moves ahead like they take a shot i take a shot they know what i'm gonna yeah shoot, yeah, so yeah. Then they exactly know what i mean i mean yeah. it's the same chess like you know i think like amateurs in chess only yeah. thinks about next move yeah oh did he call this shot i think he did oh yeah great shot what a kick yeah and he's he got on the, the cue ball to die so he ends up in the window yeah yeah he can right now make the two ball cue ball short Ray? Uh, yeah, I think you can play this keyboard between 8 and 10. Yeah, yeah but coming back to this, uh, also in chess, also I think Magnus Carlsen and Dink and they also they got already 10 moves ahead I even know, in their hand. That's ridiculous. And I can't even, like, you know, f understand how they can think about this because there are so many possibilities uh -huh. also on the pool table. 
what shots you can play. Yeah, you know, it's really. Oh. Wow. So That'll work. It's not, you're not like thrilled, but you're certainly not disappointed <laughs> yeah. with this spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I got also a few questions on the chat. Oh yeah. Uh, the first one was, which I remember, it was like, what made me to start playing pool? Uh, I think 15 years ago, when I was uh, like a small kid, my grandmother bought me, like, I don't know, free food. Okay. Pool table, it's just just for a kid, like you yeah, know, like I think I remember just a toy. Like that. Yeah, just a toy. I think Florian Kohler has probably done some trick shots on that table. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, probably. So I started playing on it and then I saw the snooker on the Eurosport. They wanted to try that game, but snooker is not that popular in Poland and you cannot find so many tables, so many snooker tables in, in Poland. And there was a pool club, five minutes walk from my home with time. so. My parents decided to take me up there, and I really liked the game, so we just started going there every week. Finally, my mom decided to sign me up for some billiard school, and that's how it all started. Which game was it that you first fell in love with? American style pool, nine ball, uh, eight ball? Um, uh, I think any eight, type of Q uh, sports. I, I mean, in Poland, everyone is starting with the eight ball. Yeah, it's like the most popular game over there. So I played a lot of eight ball in the beginning, but then this, started this playing. Is nice, nice speed control. Sorry, yeah, yeah. really nice speed control here. Yeah, beautiful rack by Vitaly. Really nice kick. It seems it's gonna be four four again. Yeah. So eight ball pool is. Is it uh, the reds and yellows like English eight ball, or is it uh, just traditional American? So Traditional, no, we don't yeah. have this English eight ball. I can't yeah. watch this game, to be honest. <laughs> the table is so small. Okay. I mean, it's six foot, right? Yeah, I think it's, yeah. No. And I, I played this game once when I was in Morocco. I was like, what the hell is that game? <laughs> the cube ball is also smaller and yeah. lighter. Yeah. And I couldn't understand. Yeah. You know, I was in, uh, I went to Bali this last year uh, in November, <clears throat> our honeymoon, my wife and I, we go, we go into Singapore and then to Bali. And uh, in Bali, there was a table there that is, they called it Balinese eight ball. Yeah. And it was uh, maybe a seven foot table with the rounded pockets, very tight pockets. And the balls, I'll show you guys at home. The balls were maybe a little bit bigger than this. Very small, but on a seven-foot <laughs> table. And it was on the beach. So the table was covered in sand. <laughs> okay. So if you made a ball, it was pretty much luck anyway, unless you just rifled yeah. it straight into the pocket. Crazy. But yeah. It's amazing all the different variations of pool all over the world. Yeah, so many. Also, I don't know how it's called this game, but I think it's popular in Belgium. It's like... I don't even know how to explain this game it's like you have some things on the table and just the holes that you have to make bumper pool isn't bumper, it maybe played also this game this game yeah something yeah exactly this game it was this game bumper pool that's a small one <laughs> And yeah. then they have different styles of table. Yeah, and they saw this game, it was like, oh my god, I didn't know even <laughs> something like this exists, like, you know. Yeah. 4-4, four, four. Vitaly to break. Oh, he was close uh, to scratch. No balls down. Yeah, and think he got lucky. Or maybe there is a path between the seven and three. There's also a risky jump since the two is really close to the. I mean, to the, the one. The, it's the one ball is just. It's really easy to. Move it off the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little risky, but 
high risk, high reward. Everything lays really nice that if you make the ball, things are going to probably end in your favor. Look at the elevation. He's trying to land just beyond the seven ball. Really nice shot. Unfortunate yeah. kiss. Yeah. I think he will use the jump stick again. I don't know. Oh, he got the kick of the rail. Maybe he can even see the tool. I think he can see through there, through the window. I think, as some might say, the window's open. <laughs> <laughs> can play the bank. I think it's covered by the six, the pocket. Nice shot. Nice and close to the three ball, taking the jump out. I think I'm kicking off the long rail, the right hand long rail here. Yeah, there is some chance to make the two ball to side pocket, playing off the short rail. Oh, oh, off the six. Yeah, I didn't even see that. Yeah, yeah. Vitaly strength to play off the short rail. But playing off the long rail, there is, I think, better chance to uh, have some kind of tricky situation for your opponent after this. Yeah, because this kind of thing can happen. Sorry, the lines are terrible. Yeah. Or the two ball can end up near the five. And here... Not much can happen, I think. Except of where, if you're kicking this way, though, if you're kicking this way and you don't make the two, there's a lot of sellouts. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of sellouts both ways. Wow. Oh my god. Kick better, Vitali. Kick him better. That's you know, a um, nice contact. It's crazy. Make one shot. Make one shot, and the rack is for y is yours for the taking. Not an easy shot, but I swear to God, I put you, I put you or filler out there. You're already on the four ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so there is not much to think about here. Just make the ball. Yeah, just about making the ball. Maybe play with a little bit of left English to avoid scratching to the side pocket. Make sure you pull this in if you're okay. over there. Pull it with you. It, you can put it anywhere you want. Okay. Just so they can hear you. And there we have it. Uh, great shot. I mean, I also got the question. I mean, how how often do I run the hundred? I think it's uh, regarding to the straight pull, right? Yeah, that'd be a fourteen and one question. I yeah. Mean, I don't play any more straight pull. No uh, tournaments. Sometimes uh, maybe when I want to get in the stroke. Didn't you play the 14-1 uh, and one thing that happened a couple years ago? I think it was a world championship. Yeah, I played American Championships. I finished second. I was to Dimitri Youngo. That's right. It was you. Yeah, I finals. played Yeah, I played really nice. I think I made three times break over 100. It's pretty good. Yeah. You don't care for the game, though? I mean, sometimes it's good for the practice, but there's only one big tournament throughout the year, and it's American yeah. Red Bull Championships right, and right. Q Masters. So why Virginia. work on the discipline if uh, you're trying to go from country to country and make a living? Yeah. yeah. That's the other thing that's so beautiful about this game is there are so many disciplines that that can be and are played at such a high level yeah. so uh yeah i mean let's focus right now on the six ball it's interesting if he's gonna play two rails with follow or just i would think just draw and take your medicine a... he's been hitting the ball so clean yeah i don't know what's the angle if he's straight on the six i just think he's pretty much straight yeah, the, the cue ball is going to peel out this way a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's all right. Probably. Oh, oh to the other side of the seven. Yowza. And too much power. Oh. Yeah. Hi, who is the pole in the booth? He can, <laughs> they can tell just from your accent. Just a guy named uh, <laughs> Victor. You ever heard of him? So 
So yeah, that's why I would would love to play this four auto rares, but probably the eight m could be on that path. Right now, he misjudged the six ball with the draw shot, and not easy on the seven. Mm. No jelly roll. This is gonna sell out. Maybe. Oh, I think he's. Does it get to the long rail? I think he's real lucky. Wow. I think there is no chance. Do you play the two rail kick here or do you play the swerve? Don't know. <laughs> it's tough to I don't say if you are not on. Here's the deal with the table conditions right now. The, the table wants to kick long, right? Because it's so slippery. And so you, c I think you can get there from this point, and so the seven or the nine and ten are not. Yeah, in maybe. Play, you know what I mean? But are you gonna gamble? I think the swerve is better. Yeah, I think I will also play the swerve. I don't know if it's on with the eight ball. He's looking at the kick. I He's mean, taking the kick. Yeah, if he makes it guaranteed position for the eight ball, but he missed it. Yeah, so a two too tough short. racks for Daniel actually. Yeah, I mean Vitaly made good two kicks after Daniel's safeties, and right now I'm a bit lucky. That was a pretty fortunate result. Yeah, to say the least. Missing the seven off of two points in the side pocket and leaving you hooked on one ball across the table. Nathan Ilsley, I've heard that Ultimate Pool USA is going to be played on seven foot tables with the traditional American balls. Stripes and solids. Because in Ultimate Pool in the UK, they actually play with the smaller balls too. But American Ultimate Pool, we played with with a set of balls this size, as far as I understand. Interesting, he didn't stun run through a little bit more right there. He's got kind of a steep angle moving towards uh, the 10 yeah, ball. Yeah, right now it's a bit tricky. Some Something bad can happen. Yeah, funny collision. No, going into the ball always can go wrong. Yeah. Although, if you hit it at a good speed, it might just sit right over the side pocket. Or the corner. Oh, he's all right. That's a nice shot. I think he judged that. Oh, Daniel is from Poland. Jakey. You see what Lenny Robinson's saying right there? He says, out of all the pros... I think he makes the game look effortless. You. You make the game look easy. Maybe. I don't <laughs> know. I'm trying, like, trying my best. That's a really cool uh, billiard ball on the sleeve there for the poles. The 11 ball color. I mean, it's the logo of Polish Federation. Actually, I think the idea of it is it's like Polish flag on the on the yeah. ball. Yeah. And when you see the balls on the pattern of the Polish country. Yeah. So it's like Polish flag. And yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. I think it's a cool idea. It's almost like a, in America we call when you make a, a game with words. Do you call it a pun? Like a play on words, you know, you've heard the phrase? Have you heard of what a pun is? No. A pun would be like, and of course I'm going to struggle to, to think of one. Chat, give me a, throw a few puns my way. Because I'm having a brain fart while I'm trying to do the, I'm like on demand. Something like, uh, I'm, I'm spacing right now. I've been talking too much, guys. I can't think of one. Give me a common pun. Oh yeah. Meanwhile, I get the question. That's pretty punny. 
that's pretty punny like it's okay. funny okay so you take the words and you make like a little fun game with them to make it sound like something else but we all know what it really means right so same idea it's almost like a pun okay of the the polish flag with the billiard ball okay yeah that's kind of how i see it i got the question about do i got any favorite drills uh, mostly i got some from the internet but i don't remember the names of the, of those drills but sure. i also practice a lot with alex Reilly. he yeah. taught me a lot yeah he's great one of the best coaches in the world i also learned a lot from him uh, here's here's another good pun why can you not trust adams you know adams uh, the the particle oh yeah adams why can you not trust them Don't know. because they make up everything because okay. everything's made up of, by atoms. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's a pun. Okay. Yeah, it's like a. You're using the word atom and you're using the, the phrase make up everything to okay. mean two different things. Yeah. So, poor safety by Vitaly. For the record, guys, he was smiling and actually laughing at that, at the atom <laughs> joke, okay? I know it was kind of quiet. <laughs> if you have to explain it, Collins, <laughs> it's not funny is what he's trying to say. Okay, guys, take it easy. easy there is a stark contrast between the styles and rhythms of these two players here Vitali kind of has more of a fetter type style and rhythm and feel you know where it's like very deliberate deliberate you can tell he's working hard at his craft where D Daniel's a little bit closer to you he just kind of gets up and hits the ball and it looks really good yeah I mean I'm a fan of the play. I, I like to watch the players who are playing, you know, fast, don't think too much, have natural attacking. Yeah. As well. Real nice cue ball, nice line, good speed. <laughs> <coughs> don't ever trust stairs because they're always up to something. That's a good one. I met a Polish girl once. It was at a nail salon. <laughs> like nail polish. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I okay, brutal. Conrad is not playing at the Open, only me, Daniel, Shimon and Mateusz play the 10 ball and Mateusz just left, three of us will still play the 8 ball. I'm sorry about that, that happened okay. when somebody edits a comment and they change it all of them, reload. Okay. Oh, 5-5, five, five. nothing can separate these guys again. Did I already ask you how you like the uh, the template here? That max rack template? I mean, it seems it's pretty good. Didn't have many problems to stick all the balls with each other. Yeah, no gaps here today. Oh. 
uh, every time I think also players and none of the players have problem of sticking the balls with this rack so it's quite nice rack There's one problem here. The three, and three, nine. three and nine. Maybe he can play Karam. Depending on where he gets on the two ball, he might be able to get above it. He's trying to get above the three ball, I think. Yeah, if he... he just slides up the rail. Uh, yeah. Oops, there, sorry. The, there's a nice chance of having the game. Yeah, he is he plays exactly in between nine and three. It moves the three to the short rail below the five, right? Yeah, or, or yeah, yeah, exactly. Just yeah. To try to hit the free ball either full or maybe from the left side. It should be all right. Yeah, exactly. Nicely Yaza. done. Yes. Yeah, so from this point, quite easy one. You know, this is one of the few spots where I'm really okay with being straight in and having to play the draw shot because it's going to offer you a really nice angle on the seven. As long yeah. as you get anywhere close to center table. Yeah. I mean, Unless he has an angle and he goes forward with it, but yeah, this isn't a bad spot. So right. Right there. Play it right now with stun. Yeah, maybe just follow for the side pocket. Like dead center cue ball. Yeah. Like that stun run through, kind of punch it to the rail. Mm -hmm. Boom, just like that. A great shot. Yes, yeah, so two stop shots for a 6 5 lead. I'll be damned if we aren't playing all 17 games here. <laughs> Someone's saying it's going to go hill hill. I don't think it's 17 games though. Mm. Who is the toughest is opponent 17. I played against? That's the interesting question. I think there are so many players which are pretty good at almost everything. One of them for sure, recent 10 ball champion, Carlo. Carlo Viado. I mean, he has the ability of making anything he wants, kicking the balls perfectly. Josh, also a great player. When he is in his best, it's really tough to beat him. Just do it. What does that say? The back of his shirt. Uh, what well, he stands Daniel's up. Daniel's shirt? Yeah, Daniel's shirt. Let me see. Here, I'm going to stay here for the break, guys, so we can see it. Oh, you mean the below his yeah, uh, name? Yeah, below his name. It's his team. Just his team name? Yeah. It's okay. There's no translation for it. No, no, no. It's oh, okay. just the sponsors of the team and name of the club and the city. Look what we have here. Oh. Cue ball ended up a lot far for farther forward than it normally does. Um, yeah, I, I think Dion maybe should consider changing the break. Because I think it's like fifth time in a row when he's got no game after the break. So instead of playing that softer low yeah, cue ball break, you're thinking the pop I'm, break? Yeah, I'm always fun. I mean, I like the way the Vitali is breaking. Not like you know, soft break, yeah. pop the cue ball, but with medium speed. What, why are you, wait, what's this? Can you play a 
110 combo for free and send the cue ball somewhere re relatively safe here? Mm, don't know, but I think he can make the one actually to the bottom right corner. But. Okay, he does call the one. What is he looking at here? Probably stop the cue ball on the five ball. Have continuation on the two ball. Man, I actually kind of like the. I mean, it's a good idea. Stop the cue ball on the five ball. If he hits the five ball full, then makes the one. It's pretty good situation for him. God, he hits the ball good. Yeah. Great putt. Probably Daniel misjudged a bit the push out. Yeah. He wanted to stick the cue ball to the short rail. Which would make the pot a bit more tougher. Adam Stickles, calm down with the, the bracket link question. <laughs> He's trolling me. He's a friend of mine. At least I think we're friends, Adam. We're friends, right? Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. That's really unexpected mistake from Vitaly. Scratch to the side pocket. I was going to say, all he had to do was make that two ball and the game's over. All the balls are right in front of the holes. And, and Yeah, probably he was a bit afraid of touching the eight from the right side and maybe losing the cue ball up table. Don't know. Yeah, it was a good chance for him to have, for the first time, two game lead in this game. Thanks for keeping a leash on the chat, Sean. Sean Wedlake, I appreciate the uh, the support. We've got to stay nice in the chat. We're we're not we're not the chat where you go and hang out and just prove how much cooler you are than the rest of everybody else. <laughs> we're here to hang out together and have fun. Don't be selfish. That's right, the chat police are giving yellow cards. <laughs> Thank you. Six, six. Weren't there different colored cards out there for different things out there? At, the, at the Predator events when they were different penalties for different actions? Oh, I mean... Uh, you know, it's really tough. Well, really my question tough. is about, like, what are the different types of penalties that they could possibly give? Because I thought it was funny that the bathroom break penalty was a yellow card. I mean, I can't understand this. It was surprising to me because there should be bathroom break at least, I mean, from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, between sets, I mean, no limited yeah. Timeouts between the sets. Uh, so, also, first time it was that you can only take the timeout between the sets, right? Yeah. So, many players got the problem. They wanted to take the timeout throughout the set because it, one set can take up to one hour easily or yeah. maybe even more. So, yeah, so of course. Sometimes you just need Especially to go if to you're the. You're staying hydrated. Yeah. If you, and it's important to stay hydrated so that your brain function is at top level. And so, it's just funny. Green is warning, yellow is one game, red is one match. Oh, or one set. Got it. 
Okay, so great break by Vitali, by the way. I mean, wow. wow, what? Oh my god, he doesn't even have to play pool and he just wins the game. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can't imagine missing the ball here to be honest. Yeah, but uh, it was tricky. Uh, I thought that the refs from CSI were not that good. Uh -huh. um, this year it was even worse. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't want to. We don't need to go too off of the deep end of it, but it's it's uh, at least enlightening to hear your your mild opinion. That I think you've given so they're far. that they are good people. They just had to follow the rules, right? Yeah, of course. But uh, of course. I don't know who was responsible for creating those rules, but it was strange with some of them. Yeah, a little bit on the unreasonable side or getting close to unbearably unreasonable <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion just watching as a spectator but I do since we're talking about it we're not going to go too far into it but I do think it's important to have structure at the professional level and have boundaries and rules so that think everybody's on the same page it's just my opinion from what I noticed as a spectator that maybe some of the players weren't so properly informed about how things were going to be enforced and how strict they were and so they weren't able to then uh act accordingly so hopefully in future year future years and future events uh all that's going to be rectified and everyone's going to be on the same page yeah and hopefully we'll have good tournaments they will learn from their mistakes yeah sure this year yeah that's what they should do we are all humans in the yeah, end you of know course. yeah yeah But yeah, so many mistakes. So yeah. yeah. I'm surprised to see Vitaly so far from the six ball here. Not that it matters because you guys stroke so straight. But he's having to move the cue ball a little bit more. Along paths that are not quite so natural. I think he's out. straight right now on the seven. Dead straight, so. Oh, dead straight is. I think he's got just a cheatable. No, yeah. you. Yeah, yeah it's cheat cheatable. It. Yeah, yeah, I would cheat a bit the pocket, play to rails. Yeah, play to the thin side. Yeah. Because it's much more easier, I think, to judge. Oh, he's playing he's with the true shot. Pulling the draw shot. It pretty well, pretty but good. I think most of the players would play two rails if there's a possibility to possibility to cheat to cheat a bit the pockets because yeah. it's much more easier to control the cue ball. Yeah, so night break and run by Vitaly. Probably it was the best break so far probably, in this match. Probably the best break that I think we've seen on stream. Now, yeah, like I said, the 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 runouts have looked easier for like the ones that Shane. When Shane breaks like a monster, he just runs them out like it's as if the balls are gonna make themselves. But that break was clean. You know what else is clean? Yeah. <laughs> This guy's hair. Uh, I like to tell you a lot. Fun guy. Good attitude. Hard worker. I think Daniel is switching right now with the break. Looks like he's winding up. Yeah. No. Still the low cue ball. Wow. Talk about a good result finally for Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> finally gets a, a good result. It's almost like he should intentionally try to draw back to play the one ball mm. inside. That's an interesting break, actually. Yeah, I mean, the, the only way to play, to break like this is when you can rock your own. 
because you, because you can make sure you can trust yourself that the balls will spread evenly. No, that the, there are no gaps in the rack. Right. Because when there is just one small gap, uh, you know, it's easy sell out. Yeah. As long as you can trust yourself and the, this brake works, it's a good weapon. Is that considered a soft break? No, he 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 uh, accomplished the three-point rule at the very minimum. There's no three-point rule in ten ball. No, I know. No, uh -huh, but but I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it would generally be considered like a soft soft break, you know. Oh. Right now. Uh, he didn't play it with right speed. Not the best angle. He will going towards the eight nine. Yeah. That's not easy part, I think. Definitely, Adam. At least a six or a seven in APA, these guys. Vitali versus Tyler Steyer in a fencing match? What do you t what do you mean, like actual fencing? Sometimes they make jokes and I just don't understand. <laughs> I can't understand neither. Yeah. Tie game again. Yeah, 7-7. Seven, seven. I think if you bet Two. on this match going hill-hill from this point, you'd probably get even money. I mean, I I told you it's it's going to be 9-7 for Daniel. It is interesting to see the contrasting breaking styles like in action, one after the other. And also interesting to see, now obviously the last break from Vitaly was stellar, but in general, both players haven't really had much to do or much to work with after the break, regardless of their opposing styles. Yeah. Ball kissed by the one. Two ball around the table. Three actually finds gravity. Two near the corner. One ball potable down the rail. But the two ball just sneaking yeah. far enough from the corner that it makes things a little interesting here. Yeah. I mean, it's a good break. But unlucky kiss. It's not easy right now, I think. Gosh, if the two ball was four inches to the left, this is, like, way easier. There is some, I think she should play safety from here. Where do you... I mean, it's not easy because there is no safety, really. I mean, yeah, all the going for the one, there is, like, not easy to make good 
position for the two with the four, eight, nine, where the cue ball will go towards that line. Well, a valiant effort, unfortunately. Yeah, he was close. Unfortunately, it don't count for Bubkiss. Let's see if Diane can play the bank shot here. Yeah, he's calling the bank. Kind of a two-way shot. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, just like kind of nice, smooth, soft draw, maybe three inches, four inches. Yeah, stick the cue ball to and the... Whoa! He went after it. I mean, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. He went for the, the double back and forth to get the one ball to the safe spot instead of... I would have played that like a one-pocket player, you know what I mean? Yeah, Where yeah. the bank, if it doesn't go, it, like the one ball ends up like out here and the cue ball just soft drew like kind of closer to the 10. Yeah, but it's easier, easier to make the one playing with, with a little more stun. speed. Yeah, yeah. Like, with like, you know, soft playing, it's soft, it's tough to predict how the rail will interact. Yeah, the slide of the one ball in the right, rail. Right, right. Good outcome. Anyway, still right now big favorite to win this track. Do I know when the eight ball bracket will be posted tomorrow morning? They're, they're doing side pots and they want to give everybody an opportunity to enter the side pots before the draw. So Daniel, pretty good chance to to, to finish this rack. Yeah, and, and then breaking break. for the match. Yeah. There's nothing tough in this rack, actually. Adam Stickle says Collins takes his glove off when he pockets the final ball to feel the hit. No, 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 no. I look you dead in your eyes when I pocket the final ball. While I'm stroking through the cue ball, Adam, I'm talking to you. He got options right now. Playing one rail, just kill the cue ball. Okay. I think a little straighter here would have been. Oh, it's okay. Deal. I mean, he can play it. The longer shot. No, I mean, soft draw. Try to cheat the pocket also as well. Okay, yes, yeah, hit it mm -hmm. thick. Yeah. Interesting wood now. Also options just to play the nine ball to the same pocket. Maybe a bit stop shot, play it to the side. Kind of got the tweener angle, a little bit of the 50 yard line. Yeah, I mean, it's missable. And the cue ball wants to move. Oh. Yeah, might be going to the other side of the 10, huh? Yeah, probably. Lee Wang asks, when is Lee Van versus the winner of this? Excellent question. Um, idea probably after this match. Ooh. Again. Nukov helped him a bit.
hill and breaking. Here we go. Shane is in the finals. Lee Van Corteza is currently waiting in the semifinals. Oh, I like that the rail has moved a little closer here. That's fun. Dry, lucky. Oh, that's really a lucky one. <laughs> Whoops, sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. Clicking buttons. I mean, I wouldn't expect this question. Would you rather play constantly in the loser's bracket as we've seen in the host seat? I think it's always better to have a chance to lose the match. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> to be well, on the what winner's about side. In, what about in... Uh, oh, you're saying... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, the question that they're asking is, would you rather come into the match for the finals fresh and having been competing oh. recently or having been sitting and waiting? Depends, I think. Doesn't matter. Yeah. What the heck is MySpace? It's just a little shout out to the post up rigs, those OGs from the uh, Brendan Crockett Memorial two and a half years ago. <laughs> that was Joey Tate. So, Daniel. Gave away immediately the option. Hmm. Vitaly, I think he put himself in a pretty bad spot. He cannot do actually much with the cue ball with four and two. The cue ball will always hit the either four or two unless he hits it full. What do you think he's gonna play here? It's a big moment for Vit uh, Vitaly. I mean, it's like I mean, you want to hit it real full, I think, and try to bank it past the two and get the the cue ball like to go between the ten and four. This is good too. Stop it off the four. Look at this. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, I'm talking about a perfect world. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, great shot. Tough one. But executed really well. So, two rail kick by Daniel, coming up. Look at this. Great kick. Oh it's a great my kick. god, that, that's probably... That kick should be worth the match, given the timing. Yeah. If, if Vitaly can get over the six ball, though. I mean, yeah, he can jump over the six. Still not easy jump. Not easy to make the one. If you do, it's likely the cue ball is going to have a little draw on it. 
and maybe brush the two. Yeah. He needs to make spot. it. He needs to make it. If he misses, there is no good chance of getting lucky. Dress up near the side, probably. Yeah. Yeah. He can make it to the side. Seven ball <laughs> covers the opposite side. Yeah. Two for the for the cinch draw shot. Uh, I think he's got an angle so he can play for the bottom left corner. Oh, like he was looking at the follow point. Yeah, off follow the rail. Stop, yeah. stop the kill ball on the six ball. Gotta get past the ball to get cue comfortably. So right. So the key shot will be from the four to five. Okay, just play two rails. Try to... You, mi you miss the five and nine? No, no, just play in between seven and nine. And try to leave the angle. Maybe even not angle. Oh. Yeah, this is what I was concerned about. Oh my god. It looked like the line wanted to wanted to go through the five and nine, but it was a narrow window. I mean, I thought that he would use a bit of uh, or just pure right high ball, like no, or maybe even like you know, just play it with the uh, right English. Yeah, yeah, little check side. Yeesh. With the inside spin, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, the problem here is even if you make this shot, you're you're gambling of getting out of the frying pan and into the fire behind the eight ball oh, he can reach he can barely reach the shot as well oh and uh oh, uh -oh. La he's lucky a bit is he yeah, yeah yeah he is no combination darling is to play safety Also, not an easy safety right here. Uh, Terry Mayo's out of here. Later. Really curious what he's gonna play from yeah, he, here. Yeah, he's thinking about this for quite some time here. <coughs> Think he's thinking about playing the cubo behind the eight, the four, the four traveling three rails, short, long one. Yeah, coming right behind the six ball. Try maybe use some nine ball or five ball. Oh, I see the shot. Okay.
Oh, that, that way. Oh, cue ball. Yeah. yeah, he just focused on the cue ball, yeah. You know what I was thinking there also is since he needed to cut the ball a bit and the 10 ball was real close to the 4, it wouldn't have been a terrible mm. thing if he thinly hit the, the 10 with the 4 as well because the 4 is still going to go yeah. up that way. So really uh, good odds to get behind the 8. <laughs> yeah, it was like to just focus on the cue ball yeah. mainly. No dice. Oh. What did what did we say the odds were that it was gonna go hill hill? <laughs> I mean I was close. I think I was close. I predicted nine seven for Daniel. He was close to finishing this match, but unfortunately for him hooked himself so Vitaly doesn't need to do anything special with the cue ball right now I don't know the question who is on your empty rush room of Rushmore of pool? Mount Rushmore? It's Ah, uh, uh, okay, it's uh, it's like Do you know about Mount Rushmore? I'm not sure. Here I'll show you a picture. You yeah, never, I, I think with the all those four presidents. Yeah, 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 yeah okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. There is supposedly, you know, the four greatest presidents of all time is okay, yeah, decided yeah. by the people. Yeah, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure of the name in, uh, in English of this mountain. I don't know what I have to say. Four best players. For you. Your For favorite. Me. Of all time. Of all time. Hmm. I think when it comes to the best game and like you know when player is playing his A game it's for sure Carlo filler I think also I really love to see Albin play a couple of years ago still when he is into his A game it's really tough to beat him then the fourth one Tough call, probably. All time, any time. Probably Copini. I mean, like I um, would like to focus right now, cause sure, sure. Cause I don't really. Uh, I've never seen Efren in his sure. prime. Sure, with sure, other sure, guys sure. and yeah. billiard. We is moving forward. Uh, like, you know, twenty years ago there was no jump shots. Yeah. The tables were different, no templates. Different uh, cloth, bigger pockets. Yeah, so I I really would love to see like, you know, Efren in his pri prime playing right now with Josh. Yeah, it'd be very uh, interesting Shane. to see. If only we could ever see that, you know what I mean? That'd yeah. It'd be very interesting. Do you know what Oh never mind, I thought this was some type of red drink in, inside the water bottle, it's mm. actually just a cup. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe he had brought something to add to the water or something. Yeah, I mean, I just don't want to say that I don't appreciate what uh, Strickland, Efren, Bustamante, and all those players did in the past. But like you know, I, uh, you have no uh, way to gauge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like it, I was t too young. Yeah. And I didn't see them playing, to be honest. So hill hill, Vitaly to break.
There wasn't so many break and rounds in no. this match, so I I always love to see some kind of the chess in the final rack to have some, you know, some emotions. Back and forth, yeah. Or like it's just like, you know six easy stop shots for the match. Good break, but eight ball not in oh. the way. And the oh, two ball in the pocket. Uh, that's interesting. I mean, yeah, the bank the bank shot is right now quite easy, but the two balls and really the other side of the table, tricky no clear paths. Yeah, little wave of the hand, little wave of frustration. Also, he has to play with some speed. This one. Because if he just rolled the uh, one ball, he can hook himself behind the eight ball or five ball. Well, he was just gesturing over here with his... Yeah, but it's playing like with more of the speed. Yeah. Using maybe some insight also spin. Yeah, and it might be smarter because if he rolls the one and he can also make the one and then be hooked on the two ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah there are many options though. If you make this shot, regardless of how you get on the two, there's many options to keep things under control. If you get on the one. Oh. Probably he would be. He would love to make also the one ball right now because he's perfect on the two. On ball. the two, imagine. Yeah. yeah, imagine if the one followed it in. That'd be sick. I don't. I'm still not sure if the two ball passes actually. If if, if, if it's makeable. They think it is. Yeah. It's real close. Right now, safety. Try to put the one ball two three rails behind the ten eight six. And two, there is like a good wall to hide the one wall. He's looking also on overcutting the one, playing cue ball two, or either two or three rails behind the two and six. Also, the eight ball might help. Oh, yeah, you could cut the one into the eight. No, not into the eight. Just you mean off of the rail, it might help. Uh, like yeah, if the one goes this way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, playing into the first diamond. I mean, just miss the eight. Leave the one ball on the short rail. I think that's he's playing this one. Oh no. First option. Windows open. Yeah. yeah, that was the risk of this shot. So now good chance for Daniel to make good safety. That's that's beautiful shot, right there. All right, Vitaly, you've done this once already. Here probably he doesn't want to make this one. <laughs> so he'll be hooked on the two ball, most likely. Just play it with the stun one rail. Try to. What about? Well, try to kick the uh, me, the the one ball on the right side. I mean, lower side from the camera. And go the cue ball on the bottom part of the table. 
I mean, but still, the most important is just to hit the one. That's probably what he wanted to do, hit the one the ball, side, yeah, yeah, the bottom side of the one ball, but right now it's just all about, I mean, always here, here it's a tricky, but here's the key shot. Actually, it's a smart choice to play the two ball to the left upper corner. Because if he misjudged a bit position to the two ball, he can still play the easy safety behind the six. You stick him right there. Oh. Maybe. Ooh. Nervy spot <coughs> here. I think he the should go for it. You go for the safe. I, mean, I think he's gonna go for it. There is no easy safety right now. He should go for it, but as there is a new cloth, he can still try to hit the rail first. Play on the pocket speed. Yeah, but oh my god. That hill hill pressure, man. Yeah, I, I know. The, that's what I told like in the beginning it's all about making the good position for the tool but then I tried to uh, correct myself and you know here here it's always different game but the worst thing what he c could do and he did it was like playing with too much speed the cue ball from the one ball because if he would play it a bit m if he would play with less speed if he came short he would still be able to play easy really easy good safety but wait wait could be better Already once he scratched the side pocket, this kind of shot. So what I would play here is just using outside spin and two rails and six ball to the upper corner. <laughs> I can't win a, a bet to save my life. Dude had ball in hand and made one ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but 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 I told you it's like it's all because of Dominic. Oh my god, <laughs> that's ridiculous! Wow, this. Uh... I mean, I'm sorry, Dominic, but <laughs> it seems like your curse is on. <laughs> That's crazy. Just I got one wish, never bet on me. Yeah, exactly. I love <laughs> how much I love how much Victor loves the fact that you lose all your bets, Tom. <laughs> oh, I, I mean it's funny because I'm in, in his group and there is always so much fun yeah. under his balls. Yeah. Obviously, we're not calling this match already. Obviously, there's there's drama to be had probably, but uh, it's still funny in the moment. Man. I mean, all, all, all joking, of course, but... <laughs> uh, Victor, you're a bad friend. <laughs> oh, that <don't really. laughs> <laughs> That was so funny. Oh. Okay, a little 
little short. Just a hair. You can get to the short rail from here, though, for free. No, no worries about the scratch. Just got to make the ball. That's interesting. That's really missable shot. Yeah, it's he, that hill hill pressure. But, I mean, I was surprised that probably he was trying to play position for the, uh, I mean, left corner instead of right one. Let's see what now. Probably I'm a fan of just playing with the low left, two rails and left a bit more tough shot on the 10 ball. Oh, he went for this one. Tougher aye one. Aye, aye. What a match this has been. <laughs> Dominic wants to take it even. In the next match. <laughs> he wants more free money. <laughs> Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. There you go. Oh yeah. Dion missed both chances. Yeah. Vitali Look took advantage. Sitting. Look at him sitting down and just taking a quick breath. The stress ain't over yet, buddy. X probably know that it was over. But it's never over until the last ball. Yes. It's made. So yeah. But, yeah, interesting match. Definitely an interesting match. It's like interesting because they were head to head almost the whole match. I think there was no yeah. two game lead in the entire match. Oh, they are playing. Oh yeah. We're moving right through. Well, uh, Victor, it's been a pleasure. I think me and Mike, we're going to do the semifinals yeah. together, okay. and then we're going to um, end up doing the finals. Oh, yeah. Thank this you very much for having me. Oh, it's yeah. Fun. Yeah, definitely a pleasure to get to know you a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it'll be fun to watch you play some eight ball. But oh, yeah. uh, everyone who's still here right now, make sure you know that the finals, so this is the semifinals coming up. The finals is going to be streamed only on Griff's TV on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook, or you're watching on Post Up on uh, YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to Griff's TV if you want to see that final. Yeah, yeah that was cool, man. Yeah. Good to get inside your, your mind a little bit. Yeah. See, see what makes you tick. Hope I did well. Yeah. They haven't struggled that much with my English. Uh, you know, you did actually the English was great. So. I mean, I was never like talented to learning languages, even in Paul in my you know, national language. Yeah. Some still have the problems of the grammar sometimes because our language is so tough, even for me sometimes. Yeah. You know, because we got a lot of. Uh, tenses i mean time tenses sure we got like past tenses like we got like 30 or even more mm. for past tense you have 30 of them yeah, yeah what are you using for subtle differences yeah i mean like i can't explain it right now because it's tough yeah, for yeah, me yeah, to yeah, explain yeah. it in english but you can maybe if you're interested in it just google like you know tenses in polish yeah. and you can maybe there's a explain yeah some yeah, yeah, way yeah, yeah. but we got I'll so many out. tenses and sometimes, like, you know, I don't know which tense I have to use in English. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right, cool. I'm going to my well, we'll go yeah, go Thank have some much. fun. See you later. Enjoy a little bit of Las Vegas. Don't don't win too much in the casino. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah back behind the curtain. Victor Solinsky, JD, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's pop over here real quick. We'll let you guys watch Lee Van Corteza get warmed up. As he's about to play Vitaly Patsura in the semifinal of the 2024 U.S. Open at Griff's Bar and Billiards in Las Vegas, Nevada. 
Shout out to our sponsors, Diamond Billiard Products, Fast and Loose Designs, Michelle Griffin Realtor, 1PKT. QTech, our title sponsor, of course, and Premier Billiards. What's up, Mike? Hey, Kyle. How's it going out there? You doing okay? It's a little warm in here. A little bit. Might be ready to change into those shorts. You, you got the shortest, like, Reno 911 shorts I've ever seen they in my life. They are not short. No, they are. They're pretty short, pal. They're pretty short. Good match, Will Hill Hill. When Hill Hill went all the, all the way. All mm -hmm. the way. Lovely. And Vitaly wins it. Gonna play some Lee yeah. Corteza. Probably gonna see some post break moving. Rematch. That's right. This match just happened. About how long did that match take? I'm just curious. Seems like eternity ago, okay. but yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems like a long time. It was yeah. literally last round. Okay. Seems like a while. <laughs> Collins got on his Daisy Dukes. No. No, bro. Officer Dangle. I love that show. Me too. That's one of the Me greatest. too, buddy. That is one of the greatest shows of all time. You should listen. He grabbed those shorts. I'm gonna go put them on from the room. He grabbed the shorts from the room. We're walking out of the hotel, and he acts like nothing's going on. And the elephant in the room is the lack of fabric in these shorts. More like the elephant trunk. Yeah. The room. <laughs> yeah. Easy cowboy. <laughs> it's not that kind of show. Yeah, so, anyway. We're down to three players left. SVB is at the bar. Seems like waiting a long time. Lee Van versus uh, Vitaly. Rematch from earlier. Lee Van got the first round. Let's see if he can get the next one. So, anyway. Yeah. If I'm loud, sorry. I'm, I'll, I'll back it off a little bit. <sighs> anyway, hope you guys are enjoying the rest of the coverage. It's been a, a fun event. We're starting bright and early, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. And, uh, yeah, on with some eight ball. Twenty-five percent done. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there slowly but surely. One event down, two to go. Who do I like in this round? I'm, I'm voting on. I'm betting on Lee Van. So he's been sent down for a while, for a while. Let me know in the chat who you guys like in this match. You've been seeing both of them play quite a bit over the last couple days. See who the chat thinks is uh, is going to win. I see Vitaly. Van versus Van in the final. What y'all think? Um, yeah, I'm agreeing. Let's see, Lee Van. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think Mike's ever seen Reno 911. No, no. Listen, you're pulling those things down, buddy. They're the 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 top part is starting around your knees. 
Those things look a lot shorter earlier. They were folded in half, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, when I back when I went to school, we had this rule, okay? If they don't cover your knees. If they were a dollar widths above your knee, you got sent home. And I'd be sending you home right about now, buddy. Yeah, right. for maybe the 13-year-old right. girls. Yeah. Is that what you considered yourself? Okay. Are we starting this, this mic's a little loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had to turn it up for sitting back. Oh, okay. Okay. That was fun. Yeah, it's a good time. Good time did you see Dom in the chat? No. You didn't see him? Mm -mm. Oh my gosh, he's apparently put a little wager on Masyal. Machow? Yeah, yeah. And, uh. Didn't go to plan, huh? No, he says in the last rack, he says, this guy gets ball in hand and makes one ball. I can't, I can't win a bet to save my life. <laughs> Yeah, it's been an interesting turn of events. Yeah, that was wild. I did not expect him to. I think get, he, I, it's the hill hill pressure well, for sure. For me, he lost it in the rack before. Okay. He lost it in the rack before when, you know, you you leave yourself a jump and then you get, you know, rolled it to the back of of the eight ball, and that's where Vitaly. When I saw that, I'm like, oh, he's done. Yeah. He's done. So. Yo, is the Levan Corteza match tonight? Yeah. He's warming up right now. That would be him on the TV. That's Lee Van Corteza. Yeah. That guy up there. He's been sitting down the entire, like, two-thirds of the match right now. I don't know if you're able to see them on the on the uh, no. camera. But he's been waiting right there for a while. Not hitting balls. So. Okay. Someone put Scott Branson in timeout. We got to keep the language to a. I don't know what you're talking about there, Scott. Take it easy. Ten minutes. <laughs> Chad just took a turn. Yeah, I thought you guys liked me. Corde Corteza is due for a big win. Well. He's played one tournament since being out here in Vegas, and he won it. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much more. He's due, man. It's yeah, only. I mean, it's yeah. been a week and a half. Yeah. It's been a week and a half. The guy's due for another big right. one. Right. Yeah, definitely going past midnight on the East Coast for sure. Because it's almost midnight there now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> yeah. He's been sitting there all night. So. Yeah. Shane's out there hitting balls right now, staying loose. Is he? He's getting ready. Yeah. We got a while to go. Lovely. By Tali taking a break? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. There he is. Welcome. Ooh, I'm going to get a bottle of water. You want something? That looks... Yeah, an IV. Delicious. I tried ordering some... Starbucks or something. No, everything's closed. Oh, I thought he was here. He's leaving. 
Take your time. It's all good. We're good. <laughs> no worries. Don't worry about it. Mike isn't salty. No, nah, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Ooh, did you see that? He just cocked the the. He did the old uh, Superman thing where he, he's ready to fight and he just went like this. Yeah. You know, like you cock go. the guns. There you go. There you go. You gotta like, gotta do whatever you can to stay loose. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna get that water bottle. I'll be right back. Good luck on your on your own. Make it too, buddy. Okay. Um. Have SVB in the booth. SVB is not a wanting to do commentary kind of guy. Plus the fact that he's got he's got some company here, so I doubt I doubt he want to come in. Here. Just my guess. Collins has a couple of cameras set up here in the booth, and uh, a ton more out in the room. I think they're ready to go. I hope they're ready to go. Not sure. This is, yeah, it's good. All right, semifinals. U.S. Open 10 ball championship. A rematch from earlier this today. I think Lee Van won. Maybe you guys in the chat can tell me. You can check it out at digitalpool.com. I think he won 9, nine 6, if I'm not mistaken. think any of the players have side bets on the matches none that are in none that are in the uh, yeah I think Colin, Collins adjusted the mic um, none of the players that are in the tournament have a side bet that's for sure so yeah I did hurt, hurt my wrist it's just been a little right before I left town so it gets a little better than back and forth so Anyway, first rack, Lee Van wins, wins the lag.
Hey, Mike, how many cameras? I believe it's only two. Uh, the one overhead, which is super close, and the PTZ that can zoom all around the event. Uh, Sh Shannon, all of the cameras can look around. There's six cameras on this event. Who knocked out Josh Filler? Daniel Matchall. Matchall got him. jump here for Lee Van Corteza. Tough jump. Ooh. That's not something you see every day, folks. Someone in the chat, Dreed. Dreed 2121 says Vitaly ain't beaten Shane. Vitaly's done it once already in a big tournament, late in a big tournament. Who is covering the one pocket? Trent asks. Uh, post up. We'll be streaming all four events. Oh my gosh, that side pocket is just wrecking Vitaly's world. Sorry about that camera work there, but Lee Van Corteza going to take the first game. Mike is going to come in and ask them a little question. Well, 
Sounds like it's a, an agreement on all parties. Uh, we were just discussing so that you guys that are on the East Coast don't miss it live if you get too tired. Uh, but we're making sure that all three players are in agreement, if that's okay. One second. Okay, yeah, so sorry, we were just confirming everything amongst us. So uh, all the players are in agreement to uh, uh, play the finals tomorrow, regardless of the outcome of this match. Uh, and it sounds like we will do one round of the eight ball on all three streams, the Post Up YouTube and Facebook and the Griff's Live TV um, stream to make sure that everybody's up and know that the stream is running and where to find it and everything. And then we'll move to Griff's TV to do the final for the 10 ball. And then we'll boot back everything back up to finish the eight ball for the day. So we want to make sure that as many people can as possible can see the final of the 10 ball live. And we know it's getting a little late tonight. So hopefully that works for you guys. All right. Makes sense to me. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff G. Is that Jeff Gregory? Says it's only 9 p.m. there. Griff's is open till 4 a.m. Why wait? <laughs> Even if it's not Jeff Gregory, that's a great joke. Great joke. And D. Rita says these guys don't work. Who's that? Play it out. I don't think that's Francis Rita Rita. But it would be a good name if it was D. Rita. So the finals for the 10 ball will be r roughly around noontime tomorrow. Yeah, so they'll come in and play and play a round of uh, of 10 ball of eight, eight, ball. eight ball, excuse me, and then we'll do the finals after that. So make sure and go like the Griff's page, right? Yeah, make sure you, you're subscribed to Griff's TV on YouTube. On YouTube, yeah. Griff's TV from Gr Griff's Bar and Billiards. The link is in the video description on YouTube and Facebook. The finals will be exclusively on there, so. Yes. You know, scoreboard. Oh, thank you. 1-0. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. Nope, Vitaly did not get the first game. Sorry, I, I, I knew Lee Van got the first game. I just clicked the wrong button. commentary on the finals yeah we'll see um i know i talked to max lechner he said he was interested in coming in or he'd be open to coming in so oh max i kind of chatted with him at the bar top for a second seems like a really really great guy really interesting yeah, guy he's yeah. kind of he's he's quick yeah with, without a doubt yeah. he is yeah so that would be cool either that or maybe like an oliver you know so oliver ruger maybe if he's yeah. around yeah yeah so We'll try to get one of the players that aren't playing in here, and uh, there'll be plenty hanging out. So we'll have some options for you guys, and yeah, it's gonna be a good final. 
SVB versus one of these two gentlemen. Single race to 13? Or is it true double elimination? Single race to 13 in the finals. Okay. Okay. Thorpe said he'd sit in tomorrow. Is that right? Uh, someone in the chat said that Thorpe said he would as well. So, uh, you know, if Thorpe wants to talk eight ball at some point. Well, I haven't talked to Billy, so I don't know. If, if that's he, true. If, if, I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah, if he's yeah. willing to do it, we'll do it. Yeah. So. I think this is mine. You haven't opened yours? Yeah. Yeah, I'll ask Billy. He's full of personality, tons of knowledge, great delivery. He'd be awesome in here. So, late night action. There's some. There, there's some. Uh, there's definitely there's some action some in the room. By I reckon, the game action going on. I recognize on. some faces that would probably yeah. bet it up, but obviously yeah. we don't get into the details here. Right. <clears throat> Maybe stream some late night action now. We got to get some sleep, guys. We're only three days into twelve more. Or no, no, nine more. Nine more days. We got to stay, uh, stay loose. Stay with it, dude. Vitaly Patsura is doing a fantastic job of just making sure that every time someone else wins a game, he wins one too. Well, he should have been up, you know, two zero if it wasn't for that uncharacteristic scratch in the side. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank God we have Tap Ovlock in the chat to remind me to change the score. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank God. I would be in trouble. Trouble. Discernment is key. Thank you for the compliment, man. What round are we at? This is the semifinal. Ooh, let's let's uh, put that in the title. Did you restart? No. Oh. Who's in the other semifinal? They just played the fourth place match. Daniel Maciel lost Hill Hill to Vitaly Patsura. Wow, Lee Van Corteza cutting the table in half. Getting Look perfect on the yeah, two ball. No kidding. Yeah, what a great shot there. Shannon, can you take care of V Austin X2? That would be lovely. Uh. Omid Vatan, uh, my name is Collins New. He post up his my stream. Uh, Melina Mike is with me on the second mic uh, and Brian I am sorry the more you type it doesn't change anything <laughs> I can see that the volume is right where it needs to be nice shot there from Levan got a little he's good he's good Griff's TV is on YouTube only. What's up, Andrew H? Nice to see you, buddy. 
Yeah, you guys can. Whoa. You guys can Jammed expect it. the same quality stream as you got right now, except on Griff's TV. Yeah, it'll it's be the, the same difference. exact stream, just exclusive to one place. Yeah, I want to watch that one in slow motion. Uh, v Austin at least six. V Austin X2 at least six. Maybe eight. We were all thinking. Oh, yeah. Wondering. Uh, Robert Barnes, yeah, honest question. How is it that you can play music on the stream but, it, but get in trouble if it picks up the background music from the bar? I pay a service fee for the music that I'm playing. So I have the rights to it. Yes, we are really waiting till tomorrow to do the final. Yes. Oh, I was going to watch this shot in slow motion. That's what I was going to do. Vitaly Patsura taking his first lead of the match. This shot is what let him out. Ooh, slow motion. Slow it down, baby. Whoa. Try to draw out of it. That is wild. Ernest Anton, you should be able to order the track jacket. Send me a PM and I'll see if I can uh, help you out. He's been breaking phenomenal. Look at the two balls about to go in. The four ball is going to get in the game though. Six is going to be tied up kind of with the ten and the seven. play safe but I wonder how he's gonna play it you're sending me he's been playing oh, this shot all day real touchy okay. he's been playing that shot all day leaves a kick and stick on the one to maybe send the one uh, towards the cluster yeah one rail towards the cr cluster right so kick and then one Lee Van is also good at like deciding which way to make the cue ball drift he might even be able to make the cue ball drift towards the four but the one go something like this even if you don't leave it tied up, leaving it at the cluster. Can he see the ball? He can see the ball. That's what it looked like from whenever Vitaly got down. He wow, can see the ball. And he went after it. And he went after it, yeah. Okay. 
mean, I like it, but just didn't execute. He's a very deliberate kind of player. Oh, yeah. Looks at everything. Everything. Takes in all the information. Mm -hmm. Hit that one pretty great. He must be straight here. Looking to see how he wants to play the seven. Wow. Wow. Why did he call the side? What do you mean? Did he just call the side? I don't know. It's interesting to call a shot when you're straight in. Yeah, I mean, he can go all the way down if he wanted to. It's really wow. nice. Okay. Hit that one well. He's playing good. The benefit of playing back-to-back -back matches on the same table, you can yeah. stay in rhythm. Yeah. Good shot by Vitali. Nice out. Three to one lead. Things are looking good for the uh, the young Ukrainian. Facing some adversity already in this set. Hmm. And you're really just hoping here to play speed on the one ball to not leave, you know, an easy safe, easy return. Oh, obviously he's looking for a place to push out. I forgot this is right off the break. Plenty of options to push out here. If you don't like the kick and stick, you might, you might kick. He's looking from this corner pocket here. Yeah. Maybe tie the four ball up with the rest of these other balls. No, just send the, sends it straight through. Focuses all cue ball. Tally's had a pretty good safety game. Yeah, 
Both these guys have been moving quite good the whole yeah. tournament. Uh, yeah, Lee Van is using his Q, Lee's Q already, I believe. Looks like some nice Coca Bolo. Whoa. Whoa. Maybe Bacotti. Tough to tell. Gives it back. Finals at noon Pacific tomorrow, guys. Yeah, Lee noon did Pacific. did not waste any time. Jacked up over the two ball, though. Not wasting any time. Yes, dang dong, I'm gonna upload I'm gonna upload videos starting tonight. I finally got my thumbnail format finished for the uh, for the video uploads. It's gonna look something like this for each video. Nice picture of Shane, buddy. Yeah, it came up pretty good. I like it. I got more pictures, I think. Oh, I should have taken a picture of those two before they started. Yeah. Awesome. SBB is no longer in the building. He is probably getting some dinner and on his way to the hotel. Hit and run, I'm, I'm sorry if this isn't the answer you're hoping for, but Hit and Run asks, since the finals will be held on Griff's TV, will they have different commentary too? Not sure what answer you're looking for, but you're stuck with us. Or at least me. Congratulations. At least me and maybe another... another personality. It's the exact same production, exact same stream, just Griff's TV... Exclusive. That guy's just happy with life. Nice shot there from Lee Van. Well, that was a quick rack. You didn't waste any time. Yep, the uh, finals will be exclusive on Griff's TV. YouTube.
Popping a little gum over there? I like it. Get some energy any way you can. What kind of gum is it? Juicy fruit, huh? Juicy fruit. There you go. Good stuff. Uh, I guess we're short a ball here. He's pointing out the pocket that he made that ball in. Let's help him find it, boys. The mysterious missing ball of the U.S. Open 10 ball. What is the difference between draw left and draw right when shooting a ball down the rail? <clears throat> Funny you might ask. Well, since you asked. If you're shooting the ball down a rail on the left side rail, draw left does something like this. As compared to center ball, draw left. So this is bottom outside. Here's bottom inside. This is an interesting interaction with the rail. Watch this. Because the ball draws in the first place, and then it hits the rail with the inside spin, and it kills the cue ball. I hit that at the same speed as the other shot. But it kills the cue ball. I think we're missing a ball. Brandon Birch to the rescue. Got to pull out the flashlights, boys. Use Vitaly's cue. Why not? Shove it on in there. Don't even ask. Just grab just, it. Just Come on, Brandon. <laughs> butt, butt end in there. Never mind the finish in the paint, buddy. Just in the Vitaly. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Give me that thing back. <laughs> Lee Van's like, yeah, use his cue. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm back with energy now after that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Usually you throw sh the carbon fiber in, you know, harder to damage part in there. Well... I not the not the butt end. I would have grabbed a house cube personally, but For sure. Yeah, well, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Brent, uh, guys, Brandon Birch is a great guy, but he's not he, really a pool he player. He is awesome. He is great. Actually, he's the reason why we're here. Exactly. That was hilarious. Yeah, squat at the cue ball. One ball's going to dress up perfectly. Nice break there by Vitaly. Great angle on the two. And everything lays pretty good. Not a whole lot of work to do. Checking the line. He's not making very many mistakes. And breaking good. It's a pretty solid combination. Picking up a little bit of pace in the game, you know? Yeah, it is actually interesting. Look at how he hit that ball, too. Like, the perfect stun draw at speed. Is he straight, though? 
Don't matter. He doesn't look too happy. Whoop. That's that's a Culey's Q, guys. Let me put you guys right here. And I'll put you up here. I'll put you right there. I think he's got a cheatable angle here to just slide to the seven. We're about to find out. There you go. Easy peasy. Ah, uh, lemon squeezy. Can't show it on stream, guys. Sorry. It's a it's a funny joke. But. Funny. I love that girl. Talking about a cheatable shot. Can cheat this. To the thin side of the pocket, lay on the short rail real easy. I'm doing it. What's that? <laughs> Did it. Changing the score? I already changed the score. Way to go out on a limb, buddy. On to the next one, guys. I had a feeling he was going to make that 10 ball. Man, you're a gambler. <laughs> you have no idea, man. And I, I used after, after, after last night, I know, buddy. I used me. to be a nit. After last. <laughs> Yeah, I remember the casino, buddy. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Things were so good until they weren't. Until like 15 minutes later. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. you seen that like meme from Pulp Fiction, right? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what is it? No, I don't know the one you're talking about. They're on the way, to, And they use it in pool where it's like on the way to the tournament, on the way back from the tournament. Right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. last night. That's classic. Yeah. I <laughs> try not to be a nit, Clayton. No ball down. And does not look like the one passes the eight, but even still, he'll be able to have control. Short here gives all kinds of two rail options, maybe even a one rail option. Probably just two. Call the side pocket. Whoa. No hesitation here. Is he trying to put the cue ball on the eight? He was. Scratched. He was trying to put the cue ball on the eight right there. What a sh what an ambitious and yeah, look. That's just pure kicking confidence right there. Knowing what side of the ball you're going to hit, you know? And getting unlucky. I mean, he got unlucky that he hit it so thin. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. He had a plan in place. New cloth. Yeah. Misjudged a little bit. Derek, no, we're going to have the finals tomorrow. Just had a change of plans.
Vitaly's gonna be uh Vitaly's looking real strong, man. I'm starting to think that Dom might have gotten a actually gotten a bet place on Lee Van. Yeah. Dom, are you here? been a long uh yeah a long day so far but this is the last match of the evening Vitaly's showing a bit of rhythm gonna hit the six ball with some inside to come off the rail finals gonna be at around noon here in vegas three o'clock on the east coast just doing a bit of adjusting just because it's been a long day and it's not going to affect the eight ball too much. So, oh, more straight than I thought. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think the players, we're still going to come in at 10 a.m. We're going to do a one round of the eight ball and then we will go to the uh, finals of the 10 ball on Griff's YouTube. So, then we'll switch on back over to the stream as you guys know it. Yeah, Andrew, for me, it's another, like, what's today, the third? Fifth, sorry. I got another 16 days out here in Vegas before I go back, roughly. I go back on the 21st or 22nd, so. And I've been here since the 27th, I think, so. Longest stretch in Vegas by a mile, but well worth it. It's great. All these guys, you know, only get to see them a few times a year. And um, I love seeing different types of games and, and see different types of skill sets on display. So I'm loving this. Guess he's got he's real flat. Certainly does not like the cue ball on the rail. I mean, he looks at most of the shots, but he's really looking at this one especially. So, do I work? I guess that's a relative question. Not, it's not a lot of work when you're getting up at 6 a.m. and work until midnight every day, I guess. <laughs> Funny shot here, but he's been playing real well. Plays it up top, makes it, 5-2 lead, and the break. Wow-wow-wee-wa, wow that was fast. I racked up like three minutes. 
We're breaking records over here. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's that's accurate, Pax. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a free roll, basically. <laughs> so, with some billionaire uncle. Yeah, no, listen, it's um, we've been fortunate enough to get a lot of support within the industry and uh, get opportunities like this. And we come out here and we do whatever it takes. It's basically just, basically just three of us um, doing this whole gig. So yeah, um, Brandon, myself, and Collins. And so um, yeah, it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Um, on top of Collins' awesome stream, good break here by by Vitaly. One ball is gonna dress up again. Um, and yeah, we just we coordinate, we pivot whenever we have to, and I, we enjoy great pool. I wonder if he plays this, like tries to float it with a high inside ball here, or if he actually airs on the outside of the ball, come back to rail, and goes back and forth. I like that better. Yeah. I like that a little better. Because you you can really get the ball to the cue ball to straighten out with minimal outside spin needed i think with this english or with this angle sorry that's yeah what that's what he's looking at, at he's right looking now at right yeah yeah this guy is out breaking everyone except shane i'd say he's breaking pretty good well, right he, now consistent even, even after shane had been sitting down for mm, maybe four hours when i saw him practicing a little bit ago he was still just crushing it I mean, just crushing the break. Overcut oh. it. Overcut it. The outside spin with a low deflection cue means <clears throat> means uh, he probably. What does it mean? Like tip steer to the outside is what ah, I mean. Oh, okay. Especially near the rail, it's tough to judge well, just how far from the middle you are sometimes. Lee Van's not going to have the same issue that Vitaly had. Yeah, Darren's obviously right. The break is far more consistent, getting a good cue ball, where Shane's just more muscling it. Um, a lot of spin, a lot of follow at times. One ball getting kicked around, cue ball getting kicked around. But you know, when you're when you're playing six ball, it's still tough to fade. Yeah, no, you made a great point, Darren, for sure. <clears throat> Absolutely spot on. And surprised because, you know, I had only really thought of Vitaly as like a rack your own nine ball player. That's really the only place where I've seen him have success out in Austin at Skinny Bobs or Round Rock, I should say, and then the Derby, you know. So in that kind of format is the only place that I've seen him, um, you know, sh go deep. And so to be playing um, 10 ball, uh, it's great, you know, it just shows that he's more of an all-around player than uh, maybe I gave him credit for. So, um, he's he's been playing super solid lately. And, um, yeah, if, like, at the beginning of the tournament, there's a lot more players that I, that I think me and a lot of other fans may have, you know, picked to go farther. But if you think about just how he's been playing lately, in hindsight, it's kind of, it's not that big of a surprise to see him here this evening. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't know what his travel ability is like, but I would like to see him play more international stuff, you know? Play more matchroom stuff. Play more shot clock stuff, you know? So... Meanwhile, Lee Van ain't done yet. And he's not wasting any time. A little long on the seven ball. Just has to make it. She does. 
you're gonna have to just really capitalize on any little mistakes that, Vi that Vitaly makes because you know you're breaking the ball so well and you're executing at a really high clip. So um, absolutely important just to make sure and get the win whenever you're ooh, when you're. Uh, what was the ooh? For? When you got a window, the he, stroke. He, he just kind of has a little snatch sometimes. Yeah. No, it's his entire. That's what his stroke is. No, yeah, I know, but it still doesn't make it any more or less. Surprising when you see it, especially in a big in a big spot, you know, the eight ball. Yeah. So he's got it dialed in. So can we revisit the conversation that we had back in December about up and coming players for 2024? Yeah, I mean, listen, look, it's it's uh, there's certain things that are conversations year round, right? And I think you can be, you know, great. Um, a great player touring the U.S., but it's a whole different ball game when you start, you know, playing international. Um, and that's why I said I'd love to see him go and, and, and play more, you know, in some bigger events and, and see how he does. So I'd, I'd be excited to see him play. Uh, what's the next? Oh, scratch the side. It's not going to work. How many balls is he going to make, too? Three, six, one. Mid one ball. It looked like a lot more than that. <laughs> it's all right, buddy. <laughs> man that worked out pretty good um but yeah for sure i mean talk about guys starting the year strong you know filler right yeah vitaly <laughs> you know he's in that conversation And just when he picks up a rack on Vitaly's break, scratching in the side there, coming across the ball, wide open table. You all right, pal? No. No? Okay. We'll give you some we'll give you some time. No, I'm fine. end up pretty straight here looks like straight straight's okay on this shot because of the traffic to the left right it's like better to have to manage speed when you have the option of either the side pocket or the, co the corner up table instead of flirting with the uh coming back and forth the traffic thing. yeah yeah i could see that i mean it worked it good right yeah yeah he's, he doesn't yeah. have to do much here right and i think you can still get a lot out of the cue ball because you're so close to it and it's close to the pocket. Yeah. You know, so if you want it to kind of cheat it a little bit, you can. I'd try to play the four on the side, and then if I come up short, I can still follow to the three by playing the four. Well, in the he's corner. not afraid of taking I mean, a long shot sixth. in the corner. You know, I've seen that at least a few times when he beat Josh. I saw it when he beat or early, earlier in this match. So he can come with a long, tough shot in the corner. Yeah, I mean, saying the guy has no chance against SVB is a, is kind of disres disrespectful. He did he did just beat Shane in a nine ball tournament yeah, out, just beat out, out in Round Rock not even a month ago. So, you know, if if you've been under, under a rock, you can say that. But the guy's breaking well. He's running balls good, and he's showing consistency in form. So, he's showing that the pressure. He's showing a, a, an ability to deal with the pressure too as he gets towards the end and, of the tournament. And, and well, I mean, on that note. That that tournament that he beat Shane at was Hill Hill in the second set, so it doesn't get much more pressure than that, you yeah. know. <clears throat> but he's got no chance. Apparently, I mean, <laughs> someone in the chat said it, so <laughs> yeah, must be true. Right, the internet never lies. I saw that somewhere. It's something on a Wikipedia somewhere. You know, the internet's always right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play some pool, man. We got time. Yeah. Nice little touchy shot there. I like the way he held it. Got pretty good on it. 
Yeah, I was going to say I like dragging it across here. If you can get clean of the eight, if you can get clear of the eight, I mean. That way you can really let out the stroke and then and drag to the right-hand long rail. <clears throat> Most of the angles that you end up on the eight, you can either just roll the ball to the nine or go to the left-hand long rail if you kind of overdo it, you know what I mean? This is a tweener angle. I think he's rolling right at the nine and probably doesn't want the cue ball to move very much. Kind of like just drawing two rails. What? Yeah. What? I'm a, I mean, I'm a fish, but if you don't like the follow. To the nine? Yeah. I think he's thick enough where he can just roll it and, and uh, you know, slide like right up here without running into the nine. I think he's just coming out one rail. Well, you could just go to the short rail if it misses the nine. Yeah, yeah one rail. it does miss the nine. Yeah. I thought he was going right at it. Yeah, the overhead sh looked like he was able to fade it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think SVB is watching the stream? Well, I can tell you that <laughs> there was, there's a lot of TVs in the pool room, right? In the, in the bar. And he's at the bar. And what do you think he's watching? They got sports. They got all kinds of things on. Yeah, I was going to say, they watch, he's watching baseball clips or something, right? He was right? watching the semifinal. Oh, was he really? Yeah, he was. Yep. Is he one of those guys? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I mean, listen, that. listen, you got to be a, a pool junkie, like, in your veins, in your heart, you yeah. know, to, to be doing what he does, you know? I, I didn't expect that. Oh, honestly. 100%. You'll, yeah. like, you'll see him. You'll see, like, you know how, how on Facebook, if you go in there, it'll show, like, some common friends are watching? Yeah. Right? You'll see the S SVB is watching in a lot of pull streams. Interesting. Sure. Yeah. Cuz I and by the way, I cuz I've, I've gotten messages from him. Oh, I appreciate what you said about me on this or that, you know. And so he pays attention to a lot of things. Really? Yeah, he does. For That's sure. interesting. Okay. And you know it's it's what's especially Nerd. No, sorry. Especially <laughs> interesting because guys like that and I and it's not just with Shane, but I found that a lot of these top players will try to figure out ways to get a chip on the shoulder for extra motivation oh that's jo good josh is like that too oh that's really cool yeah. by the way the nerd thing was a joke i don't really the nerd thing is more of like a joke compliment thing we love your sarcasm buddy. because <clears throat> uh guess what nerd if you couldn't tell that guy's not a nerd we can tell Speaking of cool players in the chat, Fetter Gorson there saying, let's go V, rooting on his guy. He's the ghost in the chat? Hey, the guy's just breaking phenomenal. Yeah. Fetter, where are you at right now? Where yeah. are you today, son? What part of the world? The last two matches, though, it looked like Masial was really breaking him soft. I don't know he if you covered that at all, like in the... We talked about it constantly. Did you? Yeah. He was playing a draw break. He was, yeah. He was playing a soft draw yeah. break. I wasn't in love with it. No, and he yeah. got no results on it six breaks in a row. Right. Finally got results on his final break. What well, Vitaly's like, you know, he's got a couple of different breaks, it looks like. Sure. You know? But he's doing great. But I'll oh. tell you what he's not doing is getting that cue ball kicked around a whole lot. You know? KS asks Collins, what program were you using to show the path of the balls around the table? Are you talking about these videos over here? Uh, like, are we? Is the score right? Did I update the score? I think I did. I wasn't paying attention. Not a surprise. Yeah, six three. Six three. Okay. Are you talking about uh, these? Just right in front of the table, Collins. Good job, buddy. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Timing is everything. This thing right here. Yeah, we want to see that instead of the ball going in. Well, you saw a ball going in. You actually saw two. I mean, that's the kind of service we get out here at Post Up. That's right. Yes, those. Yeah, so I edited those videos in Premiere Pro, in, in Adobe Premiere Pro. He really put some emphasis on that backstroke. Did you see that? Like a little bit more than the normal. The normal, yeah. Is this five ball cut past the eight? No, no chance. I think he was trying to get position on the combo. Okay. So I think so he was trying to punch the hell out of that ball. What are you doing here? You still playing the combo? The one pocket shot? No, it doesn't lay good. You mean try to 
roll up on the, behind roll the eight. Roll up on the eight. I like yeah. that. Yeah, but how but do I you... like one pocket, so. Yeah, but it doesn't lay very good for it. You have to no, like play if, a perfect if, stun. If you were over, if you were over more on the, the right, right yeah. yeah. Do we both just say to the right? Yeah. Mike, tell him we want him in the booth. Want who in the booth? Yeah, I mean, look, call me crazy, but I might, I might bank this ball. I don't think he will, but I really don't like the combo at that angle. Just, just me. I mean, you got to hit it really, really perfect, you know? Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Nothing. Yeah. He hit it good. And he held it with the six ball real nice. Beautiful shot there. A lot of moving parts. Gotta win him the game. <laughs> nice shot. Mm. Little high here. Mm. Mm. Little high. You coming around three rails? A little high -de 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 -de. Sorry, I'm getting a little loopy, guys. I've been in this chair for <laughs> for 12 hours or whatever it is. Man, I was looking at the cut in the side. Okay. Yeah, the the punching the cue ball around the table, three rails around the ten is no good because of the seven's in the middle of the short rail, you know. But he's playing it. He's playing it. I like it. this shot a lot better. He hit it great. Wow. Absolutely great. That's a bit of a gamble shot. I mean, it's just tough for most players. Is I mean, straight? obviously, he hit it fantastic. Straight? Tell me can he's show, straight. Can you show his face? Show his body language a little bit if you can. He's walking away from the table. He's straight. And on the rail yeah. or close to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unluggy. I wasn't even going to mention this because I wasn't thinking of it, but... You know, I say for most players, that's a bit of a gamble because of where the seven is specifically on the short rail. If you come up short here, all of a sudden from this spot, this seven's real tough. Well, got to come with it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. How would you like to be shooting this in the semifinals of the U.S. Open? No stress. No stress at all. Whole room watching. The whole room and a few people more. It's fine. There's only like 6,000 people watching. It's fine. Ah, okay. You think there's any chance he's thinking about that? Oh, oh my God. And he's not going to sell out either. Tell me he gets away oh, with it. I don't know. Lee Van's got a thin, uh, thin, thin cut he, that you got to go. He can dice it. You got to go. I mean, look, he hit it pretty good. He hit it pretty good. Just didn't make it. And this is why we put the booth way over here, because they would have totally heard that for sure. <sighs> yeah. Actually, with the noise in the room, I'm dead serious. If this booth was right next to the table, they would have heard it. It would have sounded like this. How? Yeah. I couldn't hear you. What was that? Mm, okay. Now I understand. Wow. Did he miss the whole ball? He missed the whole ball. No way. And he's going to give him the rack. That was thin. Yowza. You know what they say sometimes. What do they say? Thin to win. I don't think that's applicable in this uh, situation. Hmm. Got some gems. Yeah, I'm feeling saucy right now, and I, ha I haven't even had a beer yet. 
seven to three. <laughs> Youch. I can't believe it. What, the miss? Yeah. It was thin. The whole ball. Yes, it was real thin. Vitaly hit it great. I mean, you missed the shot, you missed the shot, but he hit it really well. You know, cue yeah. ball being where it was at. Oof. Came across the ball, ball again. The Is he going to get kicked again? He's going to get kicked into perfect position. The two wow. ball has no pocket wow. down in the corner. Wow, wow, wow. He likes some. He's not doing a whole lot here. Is he playing for the sign? Yeah. Nice shot, Lee Van. Man, he's got such a mean cue ball, dude. That's that's such a mean cue ball, what he did, just, just did right there. What's a nice cue ball? Like, like accurate like that, but not into aggressive positions like mm. he just took. Okay. Like that position was super, it was... Mean. Very... Oh, he's going with the rounders impersonation Agreed. again. There you go. There you go. Don't splash the pot, buddy. All right? <laughs> Don't splash the pot, big guy. Uh, oh, snap. Wow, look at this shot, man. It's got a look great cue ball. Look at this shot, man. Like it's nothing, too. Look at him yeah. just like, just another day. No big deal. He's like, what? It may as well have been a straight-in yeah. stun shot. Beautiful position. Yoink. <laughs> the event's like, I'm done sitting in my chair, man. Man, his cue action is so... Unique. It works. Unique New York. How now, brown cow? Hmm? If you know, you know, okay? I don't know. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. There's a little word in the streets that Oliver might come in. It's called a mango cart. Mango cart? Yeah. I'd love to see a comeback, too. I mean, I've had a, a ton of fun watching Lee Van Corteza play some real tough matches against uh, against Fetter Gorst on his stream, you know, through the different events that I've been doing the collaborative stuff with him over the last few months. And uh, he's a hell of a player, man. I mean, obviously, he's here now in the final three of the U.S. Open. Um, he won the Las Vegas Open. So I know it goes without saying that he's a hell of a player, but damn it, I'm going to say it. He's a hell of a player, and he's fun to watch. Oh, cue ball gets saved by the nine. Cue ball saved by the nine. Does he have a shot on the one? I can't tell. I don't think he can see the ball. I don't think he can see the ball. Yeah.
Fedor Gorst just coming in with the 999 super chat to say, I will just send a super chat so Collins isn't ignoring me. Okay, dude. My bad. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I'm so not ignoring you, man. I'm in the match, dude. I'm sweating it. I don't got time to read. The chat moves so fast, dude. I caught the super chat, though. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, SVB plays the winner of this for the finals tomorrow around noon. <laughs> Post up. Stop ignoring Fetter. Earth to Collins. <laughs> Fetter, what are you talking about, dude? Collins, what was my finals prediction? I don't know. What was it? Stop it. Was it really SVB and Vitaly? Better stop it. Like, seriously? Did you... <laughs> Michelle Griffin's looking right in the booth right now, nodding her head. Yes, that's what he said. <laughs> no, dude. Lee Van. Now I really need Lee Van to win. No way. Bruh. Oh my god. Shannon Ask you coming in with the $49.99. What are you doing? Put down your wallet, Shannon. Put down your wallet. Put down your cues. What a shot by by Lee Van Corteza to play that rail first at a billion miles an hour to get across the table. That was sick. Wow. Shannon, you busted me. <laughs> Dude, she'll do that quick, Fetter. She don't mess around. She don't mess around. I'll bring the instant replay right after the shot on the two guys. That was a hell of a thing to do. By the way, that was off of a push-out, guys. That was off of a push-out. Uh oh. Off the push-out, Lee Van Corteza says... Lee Van Corteza says, are you going to push right here? Are you going to push right here? Check this out. Wonk. Nice shot. Nice shot. KevTech IT support says, thank you for uploading this live for free. I know it costs money to watch pool games like this. I'm hoping someday we can move the needle and get enough attention on this game that you never have to pay to watch a stream again. I'm hoping someday. Yeah, yeah, I know. Cart. I wonder what Vitaly was. He's just really fine in the hit spot. Must must be shooting into a small pocket here. Ooh, he was shooting into a small pocket, and let's see how things are going to turn out. If this three ball hits the brakes on the short rail, Vitaly is not only playing good, breaking good, but he's also getting the rolls when he makes a minor mistake. Little Hawaiian sweet roll right there for you. Lee Van, wasting no time to play the the drag, draw, kick, and stick. 
off the short rail to try to send the three ball to the opposite short rail. Leaves Vitali in a real tough spot here. He, played, he called the pocket just in case, which is really, this is really a, a good result for Vitaly here. There's a lot of times here where Levan sells out because even if he gets behind the three, the three doesn't want to move very far from the pocket. He just swerved at it. I mean, that's not the end of the world to not hit the ball unless you hang up the 10. Unless you hang up the 10. What's going to happen here? We're playing early 10s, boys and girls. You stop the rock. Get the three near the 10, but not close enough that it's kickable in any sense. So that you can play the 3-10 combo immediately after this shot if you get ball in hand. You really got to lock them up. My man. So obviously he calls the 10 here. Lee Van calls the 10 just in case something happens. Cue ball might come off the three thick. Oh my God, if he hits the three thick and he knows it. He's going behind the back just absolutely. Look at this guy. Did he, did he even touch the three? Just checking to make sure he really couldn't reach it. Youch. He does get ball in hand. I mean, you got to just shoot the 10 here, right? Yeah, you just got to shoot the 10. It's impossible to miss. Like Grubbs, I don't know if I'd call it disrespect. I mean, Grubbs, if I do that to you, it's definitely disrespectful. If I do that behind the back stuff to you, Grubbs, it's certainly disrespectful, but I don't think it was meaning any type of disrespect in this game. <laughs> if I shoot this ball like this, I lose a stake horse. Are you talking about the 10 ball, Fetter? You lose a stake horse if you shoot the 10? I'm surprised he didn't shoot the 10. Oh, the behind the back. Okay. <laughs> Fetter says if I shoot a ball behind the back like that, I lose a stay course. I mean, I mean, here's how good Vitaly feels about his game right now, guys. He felt that his odds were higher to win the game if he runs them out than if he shoots the combo with the 10 in the hole. Okay? Lee Van is like pretty confident in Vitaly's game as well, apparently. Vitaly's on the hill.
Eight ball misses the side pocket. One ball dresses up in front of the one. The three ball does find a hole. Is the six in the way of the one ball to the corner pocket? I think it is. I think the six is covering the corner. It definitely is. What is your boy Lee Van Cortese going to do to stay alive in this set? Cool. Real nice shot, Lee Van Corteza. There's a lot of really good matches on the eight ball. Nice. So in the morning... How many players total? I don't know. Oh. In the morning, um, we'll, we're, we're going to do Sergio Rivas versus FSR. Nice. On the TV table. Start off 10 a.m. Nice. After that, we got the finals. Race to 13. Winner of this match and SVB. Yep. Our windows open in the morning. It'll be um, Shane and Tyrell Blowers on Windows Open. Okay. And then the second match on that one will be Sky Woodward and John Mora. Oh, nice. Yeah. On, uh, on, on the TV table? No, on Windows Open. Windows Open, okay. you're going to be streaming. Yeah, yeah that match is going to take a while. Yeah. Well, the finals the finals, take a while. Yeah. Yeah. So, pretty good matchups, man. I'm looking forward to it. I just posted the bracket on um, Windows Open, so you guys can check it out. A lot of really solid matchups. He's spinning away from the six here. I think Lee Van is going in full autopilot mode right now. You, he's I mean, when your autopilot is like that. Yeah. I mean, he's one stroke in everything. Cortez staves off defeat for one more rack. Let's see if Vitali can put together the break he needs. One set race to 13. That is correct in the final. So make sure, like we mentioned plenty of times, go check out the Griff's TV YouTube page. We're going to be exclusive for there on the finals only. And that's not just for tomorrow. That's for every discipline. We're going to be live on the finals on the Griff's uh, YouTube TV. You, yeah. Same stream, same everything, just only on Griff's YouTube TV. So make sure and go hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification so that way you can, jeez, Christ. So that way you can get notified as soon as we go live for the finals. What, an, what a great break, dude. It's crazy. Holy crap, he made four balls I again. I mean, just, just crushing it. Um, Holy crap. We will be live at 10 a.m. local time tomorrow morning. We are starting the eight ball as well. As soon as the finals is done, guess what? Nothing but eight ball matches, which I love watching eight ball. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be another epic day. Definitely. 
Shout out to all the 5,000 people in total watching on YouTube between the two channels. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button before you uh, call it a night here tonight. Be short. No, it's good. One good draw stroke. One shot is all it takes. Possibilities. Just what everybody came for. Karaoke. Mm -hmm. That's why I play the music, actually. Stroke did not work out, and the four ball is going to set up. Lee Van hang, with hang, chances, hang, chances, hang chances. Hang on a second, okay? Pressure starts to mount after a mistake like that. Yeah, it's especially, eight five. especially if Lee Van gets out here. Remember Filler and Alvin? It was 8 5. Oh, I remember Filler and Alvin. A couple funny things happened. Good lord, how much water do you need? We're about to go ask him to take a UA. Like the WPA. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, what a nice shot that he did there. <laughs> Those bottles are full of vodka, not water. Yeah, whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here to judge. It's technically I'm not in the rules. I love the chat, dude. I love the chat. All right. Eight to six and, and breaking. breaking. It's almost like I knew what he was going to say. Woohoo! Drinking game alert. It's because we live together. Mike and I live together. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just remembered. <laughs> Are we going to play some pool tonight? I would love to play some pool. Kind of tired, though. You're tired? But I'm in. I'm not going to say no. We're finishing early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally the latest night so yeah. far. Okay. <laughs> Alejandro Rendon says stream it. Uh, I don't think you guys want to watch that. <laughs> Just after this. Yeah, when we got the booth stroke on us. Come on. <laughs> that is not entertaining. Oh, he did not take any time on that. He got a ball down. Uh, does not have a shot on the one down. Bad spot. He's looking at that break you like it did something funny. Everybody in the chat's like, no, we want to watch. <laughs> no, you did. no. Hard pass on that one, guys. <laughs> oh, Holy, how short. Hey, that really how short on new cloth. out there. Wow. Holy moly. How unlucky is that? No, 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 guys, 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 relax. We're here. We're here for the U.S. Open. We don't have to talk about this. Really? Quick, someone get Dom to bet that it won't go hill hill. I think they want it to go hill hill. Nice. Just 
kind of settling into the shot. Some deep breaths there. Settling in. It's a big moment here. If you get real good on this three ball, the game's sitting pretty, you know? A lot of traffic in between. Yeah, let's just take as much time as we can. As needed. That's what we do. Obviously, in this situation, this is as similar as it gets to, you know, like talking about how long something's taking in a poker decision when it's for all the chips, you know? Yeah, of course. It's hill. He's on the hill. Take all the time you need. Look at this. Beautiful shot there. Oh, yeah. Hit that. Very good. Oh, yeah. Are you going to be right over there? Oh, that was nice. Okay. I want to get over the 10. He's good. Don't feel good about it. Don't feel good about it. Stand up. Take a look again. Someone keep calling some fresh air. <laughs> it was a nice shot, guys. I Relax, guys. We're not. We're not going to stream me and Mike playing. We're gonna. Mm. We're gonna watch Vitaly finish this rack. And then we're getting the hell out of here. No, 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 no. That's no. I mean, out of the booth. Out of the booth. Out of this box. Yeah. Collins, you should stream you versus Fetter race to 11. I get the seven out. Dude, he's going to stomp me. <laughs> I need like the four out and two games for three. No, he's he's perfect. Yeah. He's sitting absolutely perfect. Come out one rail, right? No, it's just follow to the ball. Mm. Just roll it. Maybe it's a bit deceiving. Just roll it, baby. Just like that. Yeah. One ten ball separates Vitaly Petsura from the final of... The U.S. Open 10 ball championship of 2024. And he puts it down. A little fist pump from Vitaly. Much respected. Good tournament. Grinding it out. Getting it done. Shout out to Lee Van Corteza. Shout out to... Shout out to our sponsors, Michelle Griffin, Diamond Billiard Products, 1PKT, Fast and Loose Designs, Premier Billiards, and our, and our uh, 
title sponsor, Q-Tech. Thank you guys for... Uh, just listening to Brandon right now. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very much thank you to everybody uh, for hanging out in the chat, everyone at home. Uh, we're going to see you guys in just a short while tomorrow morning around 10 a.m. So Mike and I are going to go hit some balls, get some relaxation, recharge the batteries, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. It's always fun, guys. Let's go.